Well, happy Friday, everyone. Welcome to another Friday night, which means another live lawn care Q&A. My name is Ron Henry, and I'm here to help answer your lawn care questions. If this is the first time you have graced us with your presence, welcome, super happy to have you here. The way this works is really simple. On your screen, you will see a chat box. In that chat box, you can enter your question, concern, comment of the day, and I work through them in the order they come in. Sometimes the answer, sometimes I don't, but either way, we have a great time talking about lawn care. Guys, Mother Nature is playing games with this, man. The weather here in Northeast Georgia is decent. You know, the plan is still to get the pre-emergent down this weekend, but if you were in Texas, man, it's uh, you guys got hit with some uh, some freezing rain there and and uh, yeah, so it's it's uh, it's it's funny how how the we are not quite done uh, with winter yet uh, by a long shot, but at least here in Georgia southeast uh, where uh, you know the weather's a lot more mild, so uh, very, very happy about that. So I'm um, coming tonight over YouTube. Uh, we got the issue with uh, Twitter worked out. So YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and then also we are on Instagram Live. So those of you that are on Instagram Live, uh, thanks for coming to hang out as well. Welcome. Saying hi to all you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to participate as well. Drop your uh, your question down in the chat and I'll work them into the show as well. All right. So let's see who we have in uh, in the live stream tonight. First up, we got Mr. Uh, Michael Carroll saying, hey, Ron, uh, from Frigid Martha's Vineyard tonight. Uh, happy Friday. Happy Friday, uh, uh, Michael. Thanks for coming to check in. I'm sure you guys are still doing a lot of freezing weather up there. I mean, if if Texas is uh, is frozen, I'm sure Martha's Vineyard is probably isn't doing a whole lot better. Uh, you know, one of the one of my colleagues, I think he's in, in the Boston area, and he was telling me it's going to be well into the negatives. I think he's doing like negative 20 or so, or even colder than that. Uh, this weekend, so it's supposed to be really, really cold in the uh, in the northern part of the country, which is uh, makes me even more happy that I do not live there. So, all right, next up we got um, Patrick Schultz saying, uh, for sure, what's going on, Patrick? And then next up we got BMH, Mr. Captain Crabgrass, no more. What's going on, BMH? Hope you're doing well, man. I know you're in Texas. Hopefully, all is going well with you. And then uh, Jason Harrison is up talking about pre-emergence. It's a great topic for uh, tonight. And uh, we got uh, Hardfoot Fashion here on Instagram. Granger saying, first time checking you out on Instagram. What's going on, Granger? Thanks for coming to hang out, sir. I appreciate you as always. And Jason is up. He says, waiting for my lawn to dry out a little before dropping the pre-emergent. Luckily, no rain on the forecast for a week or so. It's not a bad plan. Yeah, we got some rain yesterday. My plan is to do pre-emergent on Sunday, Sunday morning. That's what, that's what I'm shooting for. I thought about doing it tomorrow, but by the time I got back from karate and everything, it might be a little late in the afternoon uh, based on like where the sun is and like how shaded the, the back patio is. So I'm thinking Sunday morning is what I'm, I'm planning for. Between 10 to 11 a.m. Eastern is what, I am, uh, what I'm planning to do my pre-emergent. And the, the plan is to live stream it, right? The plan is to live stream just uh, talking about it mixing it up. You guys have seen it done before if you watch any of my content, but if you guys want to see it live, ask any questions, just have a great grand old time while we mix up some pre-emergent and uh, and get ready to spray a couple of lawns, my lawn, uh, neighbor's lawns, just have a, you know, keep the lawn weed free this year. Uh, feel, feel free to check that out. So it'll be Sunday morning between 10 and 11 a.m. I will get a, um, I'll get it registered. I'll get it like a schedule. So you guys will be able to see that in the feed as well. If you want to come check that out, should be a lot of fun. So yeah, definitely. Pre it's time for pre-emergent. We are, you know, again, if you're in the southeast, you're in Texas. If you got you're down in Texas already, good job. Uh, you, this weekend is probably not going to be the weekend to do it, given how cold it is. But uh, but you know, the the weather's going to warm up here in a little bit, and by next weekend, if you're in Texas, you'll be able to put your pre-emergent down. Like you guys know how I feel. Always a little bit early, better than a little bit late. All right, so uh, Gr Granger Hobo Fashion from on Instagram is in the house. He says, hey, Ron, first time checking you out. He says, how about all this rain? I thought it would never stop. Got me behind on my lawn care. Yeah, I hear you, man. It did rain. I'm not sure. You probably got more rain in North Carolina than we did in Georgia because it rained pretty much all day yesterday, but it, it didn't rain today at all. And the lawn's all dried out, looking good. It's going to be dry tomorrow. So then Sunday, get to drop some preem, some prodiamine on it. Be good to go. Be good to go. I'm I'm ready to get started, guys. I'm I'm looking forward to the season. Getting ready to go back, get out there, uh, and uh, and just start working the lawn. Get the season kicked off, right? And no better way than preventing weeds from being a problem uh, later on this year, right? By getting your pre-emergent down. All right. Next up, we got uh, Andrew Phillips in the house. He says, "Good evening, Ron." At L, 
Just thawing out after three to four days of straight ice here in Texas. Got my pre-emergent in early in the in the week before the ice storm, so it's nice and soaked in. That's definitely one way to look at it. It's definitely watered in as far as it uh, you know, as far as it getting watered in. You definitely got that done with all the uh, the weather you got. I'll show I got a picture I'll show you. A viewer sent a picture to me a couple days ago showing what they were dealing with there in Texas. So I will show you guys that here shortly. And uh, he's not kidding. Andrew is not kidding when he says that it is uh, it's, it's freezing rain. It's uh, the picture is actually pretty cool. It, it's nice to, to see something that's happening that's not around here. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up is Jim. He says uh, weather update from Massachusetts: minus ten degrees, the wind chill of minus thirty overnight. Spring can't come soon enough. I'm sorry, I do, bro. I, I I can't I can't do it. I couldn't do it. I can't do it. Anywhere in the country where like negative temperatures are a common thing. Like it's not like a, a freak thing. It could happen in Georgia, right? Where it's like a once in every, I don't know, five, 10 year kind of thing where we have like one day where it might happen. But if every year you have temperatures that are below zero, I mean, this you have to you know, rethink your life's choices. Time to move, time to consider relocating somewhere where it gets, gets warmer. I, I couldn't do it. All right, next up, we got Corey Guy in the live stream. He says, I got that pre-emergent down just in time last weekend, right before the rain. Yeah, if you put if you got your pre-emergent down last weekend, which is when I wanted to do mine, you got plenty of rain this uh, this, pa this past week to get it watered in, and it's down the soil profile doing its thing. What's funny is um, we have, so we got rain yesterday, and there's no rain in the forecast for the, the upcoming week for what I'm seeing. Granted, that's all subject to change, but uh, you know, if you got your pre-emergent down last week, that would have been last weekend. That would have been a great time to do it if you're in Georgia. This uh, this week, if you put it down, again, we'll eventually we'll get rain again. But if, you know, if you're if you're really really particular, you can run your your irrigation once you uh, once you go ahead and and uh, and apply your preamp. It's probably what I will do. It's probably what I will do. Knowing myself. All right, a core guy says, "Hope everyone had a great productive week. We'll be putting down my humic twelve. Nice, very cool." Very cool. He says, wow, the difference pre-emergence has made in my lawn this winter that I put down in late September. Yeah, I gotta tell you, man, if you, like pre-emergent is something that really doesn't get enough um, enough discussion. Like really, it's a it's a herbicide application you do in the spring and one in the fall. And for any of you guys that are new to the live stream, what pre-emergent is, it's a, it's a specialized herbicide that is designed to interrupt the ability for a plant to develop roots. So for, for if you're trying to, um, for a weed tries to germinate, pre-emergent, um, interrupts that process. It kills. It kills it at a very, very young stage where it's not able to begin growing and make a mess out of your lawn. Really, if you're doing it right, you should only have to really apply pre-emergent. Um, you know, in the in the winter time, and sorry, the winter time in the fall to give you um, protection over the fall and and winter and really into the early spring, and then again in the springtime, and that will get you protection from the spring into summertime. So, um, and now when it comes to pre-emergent strategies, there's a couple different ways of doing it. I like to do a single application at the higher end of the ac application um, spectrum um, if for the springtime. And in the fall, I just do a single app as well. So for my pre-emergent, I do just one app. One, which will be you know, a couple of days from now. And then the next time will be in uh, late August, early September. That's, that's what I've done. I get really good results with that. Um, if you want to do split applications, if you've done that before, by all means, go for it. You know what I mean? I've just not me personally, I have not seen the need to to do that on my lawn. And it's not just a sample of one. Um, it's what I do for my lawn, Alex's lawn, then the project lawn that's between the two of us and then the neighbor next door. Um, also, it's like a single pre-emergent application in the springtime. And that works well. And mind you, we're also not necessarily nice to our lawns throughout the uh, throughout the springtime either, right? So, you you know, a concern that a lot of people have is say, well, you put pre-emergent down and then you know, if you aerate or you do anything to the lawn, you'll, you'll, you know, you'll just, you'll disturb the, the soil and you'll have some breakthrough. I haven't had, I haven't experienced that. I haven't had that kind of, that kind of problem in my lawn, um, with, um, with getting an earlier application of pre-emergent again at, at the higher end of the application rate. And, uh, that's, it's, it's worked well for me. Pretty much the only weeds that I have to deal with every year are, um, are the sedges, right? So like nut sedge, and that it's always in the same spots in the areas where, um, where water, um, drains off the lawn. So the swale area between Alex's lawn and my lawn, like there's like that, the bottom of that right there, where that gets filled with water and lots of water just always passes by there. Um, that is where I have to get out some certainty and, uh, and smack, uh, and smack the sedges a couple times during the growing season. And that's it. That's really the only herbicide that I have to apply to, uh, to my lawn, um, during the, during this, growing season when I use that strategy, right? A, a pre-emergent application 
in early February, and then um, another one in the fall, early fall, to prevent uh, poa and um, and you more cool season weeds. So it's what I do. Doesn't necessarily say it's the only way to to, to um, it's not the only way to do it. There's, there's other ways to get um, to get a good result as well. Again, a lot of people love and swear by split apps, and it can definitely work. But it, for me, it's just more work that I'd, I'd rather not have to do. Right, one app works well for me. All right, next up is uh, Koi Guy. He said he um, pre-emergent did well. He said um, he's in Jonesboro, uh, Georgia. Oh, and he had a question about um, putting down a uh, Humic 12. I'm not sure why that didn't come through here in the software, Koi Guy. Um, you said, yeah, hey, Ron, is it too early to put down, um, uh, I'm sorry, R was it too early to put down RGS? You already, you already did your Humic 12. You're asking about RGS. Um, no, so here's the thing, I'll, I'll tell you, there's no, as long as the ground isn't frozen, if you wanna apply a biostimulant, your RGS, your root growth simulator, you can do that. I don't typically apply the liquid biostimulants, so like, uh, I guess you hear like, like the release, the release product from Miramichi Green, um, like the, the, the biospectrum, so the release zero, um, the Nutri-Kelp and the biospectrum, I tend to begin applying those in March. So whenever the lawn wakes up, that is when I begin applying those. You can absolutely, you can do it now if you want. There's nothing wrong with doing that, but I finally you just get more you get more out of it by waiting until the lawn has has um has has come out of or is beginning to come out of dormancy. The only biostimulant that I apply um, year round is my granular, right? Which in this in this case is essential G. So essential G, I apply that. You know, you can apply that every single month as long as the ground is not frozen where you are. But as far as the liquids. I tend to hold off on those until March timeframe. And I apply them from March all the way into October, November timeframe, depending on how on how the temps are later on in the year. That's what I do. It doesn't mean that it's, again, it's necessarily the only way to do it, but um, for biostimulants, I just wait until uh, until then. So not too early. If you wanna go, if you wanna put, get your RGS down, you get your RGS down, man. I will uh, I will endorse that. By all means, go for it. Not, not gonna hurt anything at all. All right, uh, we have a question here from from Instagram from uh, Jamal Wall says, I'm noticing moss algae in my yard. Is this normal? It can be. If you have an area of your lawn where, I mean, given all the rain we've been getting, and if your lawn doesn't drain well, that is um, that creates conditions where moss and, and algae can uh, can develop, right? So if you have an area of the lawn, if you have an area that's shaded, uh, gets a lot of water, so um, so whenever it rains, it settles. You could run into issues then with um, with moss and algae uh, developing. Uh, something you can do is one thing. One is improve the drain situation so you don't have water just standing in one area for extended periods of time. And you can also, if you want like a like an inexpensive way to um, to get rid of it, get like a a, um, a five gallon bucket of water and put some dish soap in it. Some some dish soap. Um, get that get that mixed around. Get it all you know suspended within that, and then pour that on it. That's a way to um to to knock it back. But but mind you, that is that's really a temporary thing. You really to, to prevent it from happening. Um, you don't want to have an area where water is standing in your lawn for extended periods of time. So that's what you're that's what you're really after. All right. So great question. Thanks for uh, for the question there on the gram. And uh, again, if I can help with anything else, let me know. Appreciate you guys on the gram still participating, man. Even though you could come over to YouTube, but you know it's good that you guys are still here and uh, and hanging out. All right. So Demarcus uh, Demarculus Thompson says, "Hey Ron, thanks for taking the time to respond to my emails. I really appreciate the wisdom you shared. No worries at all, Demarcus. Um, de uh, it's no uh, Demarculus. I gotta say your name right. I'm sorry about that. Uh, yeah, no problem at all. Happy to help. And you know, um, Demarco Kula sent some pictures. I'll show you guys what weather in Texas is looking like. So you know, in Georgia, we've got we had some rain, and you know, sometimes we complain we get too much rain. But hey, guys, at least we didn't have we didn't have this. I mean, this could have been us. This could have been us. You know, this is this is Texas. This is what they're what they're dealing with. This I think it's from a few days ago. And uh, I mean, let's just say that you know you you have to take the wins when you can get them because that is nothing to uh, that's nothing to joke about. You can still see the green poking through a little bit there, but he's got. Freezing rain, a little bit of ice there, so not not great, not 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 a fun time um, uh, for this time of year. But you know, it's it's going to be temporary. And you're very very welcome to uh, to Mark Hewlett. If I can help with anything else, definitely let me know. All right, C Hill saying greetings and salutations, Ron and Lawn Peeps. The weather here in North Florida, so we sh we're seeing both sides of the spectrum, right? You got uh, up and up north where they got in Boston area where they're in like negative twenty, negative thirty. Um, and now, uh, you know, Texas freezing rain and now in Florida, he's saying the weather here in North Florida has been teasing me. I'm so ready to start mowing the lawn three times a week. Let's go. That's right. I hear you, man. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely not anywhere near on mowing three times a week status, but I am on get that pre-emergent down status. So that's going down this weekend. You got to take the small wins where you can get it. And here's the thing, Seahill. 
I know you're ready to get out there and start mowing, but enjoy this time off because, you know, here's the thing. Dominating the neighborhood is not an easy thing. It's, it's, not, it's not something that you should take lightly. So once the grass wakes up and it's like, hey, I need you to mow me, I need you to fertilize me, I need you to feed me, you gotta edge me up, keep that line tight, you gotta rise to the challenge. So in this time where you're on the bench, just relaxing, you know, sipping your lemonade or whatever beverage you happen to be drinking, enjoy this downtime because soon you're gonna have to get out there whether you want to or not, right? So just, just realize that. Don't, don't, uh, don't be careful what you wish for because it's gonna be here before you know it. Patrick Schultz is up next. He says, uh, still trying to find a spreader that isn't trying to assassinate me this year. Huh, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm partial to the Earthways. I like the Earthways. There's lots of great spreaders out there. Um, I like the Earthway for a couple of reasons. One, you got the air fuel tires. I find it to be a good prosumer uh, level spreader. Like if you have a lawn care business, maybe you want something like a little bit, a little head more heavy duty, like what, um, like what Lesco makes, something like that. But for a prosumer spreader, that a, the big, a big bonus to, to the Earthway is that whenever you start getting into like your, your professional grade products, like if you get look, look up any of the fertilizers from Lebanon Turf, like the ones that we carry on the golf course lawn store, or you start looking at your fungicides or insecticides from Syngenta, like you're not gonna find calibrations for Scott spreaders on there, um, but you will find spreader settings for Earthway. So that's another benefit. You don't have to get up, get out like a, a, a conversion chart for it. Okay, well, they said an Earthway is this. So what is that on my scotch? Or what is this on my, you know, whatever um, um, spreader you happen to be using? So I am partial to those. And if you are, um, are looking to get one, Patrick, and you feel like supporting the channel, I'll send you a link here to it. The one that I like is the 2050P, the Earthway 2050P. And this link will take you to Amazon where you can, uh, you can find one. It's a great spreader. I'll tell you, here's how much I like that spreader. I had one that I got in 2017, 2017, 2018, and I used it for a number of years. And I think, was it either last year? Time runs together. Here's the thing, guys. When you get old, time starts to go by faster. And it was either last year, I think it was last year, um, I got another one. I gave my old one, it was still working fine. I gave that one to Alex so he can go out and do his lawn and stuff whenever he wants to. And I bought another one of the exact same spreader. I like it that much because they're that good. You know what I mean? They don't... You know, the, the only thing you have to worry about with an Earthway for the most part is like there's a cotter pin that that um, that goes through the axle that drives the, the gear. And if you replace that once a year, once every, you know, every every couple of years, because eventually it'll, you'll be out there pushing and it'll break. And all you used to do is have a spare cotter pin, stick it in there, and then you're off. That's the, that's the only like part that really fails on that on that spreader. And uh, yeah, it's a great, great unit. So if you want my opinion, the Earthway 2050P, look into it. Great option. Next up is Mr. Robert Rainey saying, good evening all, what's going on Robert? Hopefully all is going well with you in your world, holding that high finish as always. And then who that there says game time? It is, it is guys. It, well, it is if you don't live in Texas. If you're, if you're along the Gulf Coast, you're Southeast United States, you're in Georgia, South Carolina, Florida, uh, you know, you, yeah, it, it's, it's, I think it's, it's definitely go time. And we, the, the, the weather is on a warming trend. Um, it's a great time to get your pre-emergent down. I like to get it down a little bit early, which is, uh, you know, which is why I'm doing mine this weekend. If I could, I would have done it last weekend, but I could not. So this weekend will have to work. Uh, Robert Rainey says, despite the chilly weather, we are seeing more green throughout the yard. This weather has, has it soggy though. Yeah. So hopefully it dries out for you, Robert. If your weather is anything like what we have here in Georgia, it stopped raining yesterday. So you have today for it to dry out tomorrow should be dry as well. And if you want to do your pre-emergent or whatever you want to do in the yard on Sunday, you should be good to go, right? I mean, I wouldn't get out there right after a really heavy rain because you don't want to, you know, cut, you know, carve ruts in the lawn and just and kind of make a mess out of things. So let it dry out a little bit. A couple of days, a day or two is fine. And, you know, given that it stopped raining Thursday and we've got a good two, almost three days um, before I'm, I'm planning to be out there doing pre-emergent, um, yeah, you, you're, you're good to go. You're good to go. Oh, Lon says, hi, mate. Things greening up yet? Not yet. Not yet. If you're in Florida, yes. In some parts of Florida, it never went dormant. But here in Georgia, we, we should start greening up here in the next, I don't know, depending on how, how the weather cooperates. The end of the month is when I would expect to start seeing the green fuzz begin to start, um, you know, appearing on the, on the lawn. We'll see. We'll see. But the big thing for this time of year is, uh, for us in the southeast U.S., is get your pre-emergent down. If you're doing a granular biostimulant, get your essential G down. And that's, and, if, and also the other thing you can be doing this month is your soil test. So soil test, your granular biostimulant and your pre-emergent. And then that's that's for the most part it for 
the month of February. Again, if you're in Georgia, if you're in Florida, you're you're doing your fertilizer, you're doing everything because I mean, the grass stays green there all the time, right? And if you're in the Northeast or Central Texas, as it were, you've you definitely you've got a few more weeks before you can begin doing your um your pre-emergent, right? Because you guys are you guys are uh, I don't say behind us, but the weather is cooler there for longer than it is here. So, so yeah, not greening up quite yet, but soon, it's very very soon, Olans. All right, uh, Robert Rainey is no, uh, sorry. Andrew Phillips up next. He says uh, at Robert Rainey, my yard is soaked about a foot or more down. Wow, that that much. He says no telling how long it'll take to dry up. Uh, it, that's a foot a foot of of um. That's a lot of water. It's a lot of water, Andrew. Um, I mean, it, it still it shouldn't be too bad. I'd, I'd imagine a few days of dry weather. It should begin. I mean, a foot of water. That's a lot. Are you sure it's a foot? That's that's, that's quite a bit. Uh, but yeah, it, it'll dry out here within the next week or so if we're not getting any rain. Uh, DG's is up next. He says, hi, Ron, putting pre-emergent down this weekend. You and me both. We're both going to be down pre-emergent. I'm going to be doing uh, prodiamine. Granted, I have a, this, I don't have it here. It's in the garage. Um, but this, I'll show you guys what I'm going to be doing this weekend. I'll show you. Why not? We will go over to the store. So you go to shop and then weed killer. And then you can use our filter, which uh, will bring up pre-emergent. And I'm going to be doing this, the 65, the Prodiamine 65 WDG, the water dispersal granule. This is what I'm rolling with. If you don't feel like having to mix and get a backpack sprayer out and all this kind of jazz, you can by all means go with the granular. Works well too. So either one of these, you can go with the liquid, go with the granular. This one, really this guy is, is good to go with. If all you, if you have a Bermuda lawn and you have about 6,000 square feet or less and you're applying at the high rate, again, if you're doing a split app or you're going at a lower rate, then it goes even further. But this will do around 6,000 square feet, this one here, um, at the higher rate, at the higher rate. So you, you can, if you want to save a little bit of money and don't buy the, the five pound tub, I mean, this is the best deal, but this is, you know, more economical. If you're just looking to, to take care of a lawn that's, you know, 6,000 square feet or, uh, or less. So that's what I'll be doing this weekend. That's what's going down as far as... Uh, as far as the pre-emergent goes, as far as the pre-emergent goes, I'm trying to decide if I, if I also want to show you guys um, mixing up or, or, or adding some some certainty to the tank because I don't have any I don't have any poet in my lawn. The I don't have any. There's none in, in Alex's lawn either. Um, the neighbor next door um, has a little bit in his. So what I could do is um, we'll see. We'll, we'll see during the live stream, and you guys can vote uh, as far as which way you want to go. What I'll show is I'll, I'll show big. Um, mixing up the pre-emergent, but then um, we can decide whether or not um, adding some certainty to the tank or not is something you guys want to see. It's really it's just adding it to the tank. It's not like it's really special. What, what I might do is just talk to it. Just talk saying, hey, if you're going to do this, this is how I would do it, but not actually do it because I don't, I don't really have a need to do it on my lawn. I don't have any, I don't have any power or anything like that. Olans from Instagram is saying, always green here in the UK, but a lot of thinning from the cold weather. And leather jacket damage. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So always, yeah, always green in uh, in the in the UK, huh? Yeah. You guys have a different way of having to do your lawn care. You don't have access to a lot of the products that we do for preventing weeds. So you have to take a more natural approach, right? You have to do a lot of, um, you know, your your. That's where like a lot of what Alit does with their mowers, like the turf raking, and um, and just and growing a healthy stand of grass to help your lawn outcompete the weeds is is the way that you guys have to do a lot of it. So it's interesting, a different way to do it for sure. All right, next up, we have Mr. Um, we got a super chat. Let me get that really quick here for Mr. Luis uh, Ayarbarreño. I think that's correct. Super chat received. He says, previously used uh, GC Floor Green. My evergreens love it. However, it burned the leaves on my Japanese Katsura. Now that I ordered from Golf Horse Lawn Store, can you share your thoughts on NutriShrub root or foliar application? Thanks. Yeah. So it is a um, it's it's a root root application. So Luis, the the way that um, and I, I believe I have there, I believe I have uh, notes in the product description on how to use it. But um, Miramichi gives a couple different options for applying it. What how most people use that product is in a drench, meaning they'll take it, they'll, they'll take like a five gallon bucket of water. And they will put, they'll add the product to it, and then you'll literally pour it around the base of the tree. That's how that's often used. Let me see if I can find it here in the um, in here because I believe I have, I have, I have notes on uh, on that. Yeah, yeah. So here, so here we go. So, um, so yeah. So let me go over here. So the product that he's talking about, guys, is um, Nutri Tree and Shrub. So this is, you guys know, I always talk about Release Zero 901C. 
um, and the bio um, biospectrum, which is your the microbial food that you can pretty much anytime you're, you're spraying liquids on your lawn other than the fungicides, you can add biospectrum to it. So if you're doing like even like NutriTree and shrub, you can add biospectrum in the tank with this as well. The idea as far as how you mix this, if you scroll down, um, you'll see here that the um, you can dilute one gallon with fifty ga one gallon of the product with fifty gallons of water for a drench. Or for smaller plants, or you know, in your, your case, a tree, you can do five fluid ounces with one gallon of water. So if you're going to take, uh, you know, a five-gallon bucket of water and drench around a tree, you would take five times five. What was that? So 25 with five gallons of water, and take that and literally pour it around the uh, the the around the um, the base of the of the tree. So. So yeah, it's um you're not gonna burn you're not gonna burn the the the, the plant with this and again that's that's plenty of water and it's, it's sufficiently diluted uh, to be able to, to to produce a good result. The NutriTree and Shrub product um, has it's two percent micronized carbon in that one, so um, the pretty much all of the Miramichi Green liquid products have carbon in them. It's just the release zero and the release nine hundred one C. So this guy and this guy. These have 10% micronized carbon, but all the other ones, the kelp product, the tree and shrub, uh, there's 2% micronized carbon. And if, if you're really trying to kick things up a notch and there's, it is, there's only benefits to doing it is get, um, throw biospectrum in the tank. So pretty much anytime you are, like I said before, anytime you're spraying liquids on your lawn, if you're spraying fertilizer, um, if you're spraying uh, fertilizer, you can pre-emergent if you want to. When you're spraying pre-emergent, you're spraying um, herbicides, fungicides, uh, um, insecticides. The only thing I would not use this with is if you're spraying a fungicide. It's the only, it's the only thing product I would not mix this with because you're kind of working against yourself, right? Like fungicides um, are really hard on, on the microbial activity, the beneficial bacteria and fungi in the soil. So mixing this with a fungicide, again, you're, you're not getting the most out of the product, but everything else that is a liquid, you can mix this with it and, and spray it. So if you're gonna be doing your NutriTree and Shrub, uh, by all means, get some biospectrum, throw that in the tank as well. There's only, um, only, good, only good benefits from, uh, from doing that. So hope that helps, uh, Luis. Um, yeah, so great. That answers your question. So check again the product description. Um, in there, they've got, there's different application options for drench, um, you know, depending on how you want to go about, how you want to go about doing it. So, uh, so yeah, yeah, it's a great, it's a great product. Um, there was a plan to make some content on that last year. Um, but I had to, I just never got around to it because I got to find like trees and, and that kind of thing. I mean, I have a Japanese maple out front. I guess I could do it on that. So maybe this year that will be in the cards and I will, I'll, I'll do some content on the NutriTree show because it's, it's one of the few things from Miramichi Green that I don't have content on. Thank you so much for the super chat. I really do appreciate the support. And uh, hopefully that helps answer your question as far as how to use the tree and shrub product. Absolutely use it. Again, use it as a drench. That's how um, Miramichi Green, that's how most people that use that product um, um, use it. Um, and if you want to do something for a foliar, you could go with like release zero, um, the nutri kelp. Those are, those are, are, are good for that. So good stuff. You need anything else? Let me know. And again, thank you so much for the super chat. And based on that, you are now, if I can find this here, you are going to be the show sponsor. LG's not here yet. We may as well enjoy it before he shows up and wrecks the party, right? Like he always does every single weekend. Let's see. A Y A B A R R E N O. All right. Got it. Yay. And spell check did not, um, autocorrect did not get me. All right, so there you go. Your name in lights for whatever that means to you. All right, now the fun part, finding out where I left off. All right, Papa Mo's Low. He says, uh, hey, Ron and everyone, what's going on, Papa Mo's Low? Thanks for coming to hang out, sir. Appreciate you as always. And then who out there says, struggle, Texas weather. Yeah, they, the struggle is real in Texas right now, man. This is what they're dealing with. That's no fun. Uh, better there than Georgia, but you know, it's, it's not going to stick around very long. That's, that's going to go away pretty fairly quickly. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't get too, um, too wrapped around the axle over it. It's going to be just fine. All right. Next up is it's audacity says put my prodiamine down last weekend, Ron, how early should I scalp my lawn in middle Georgia? Focus on soil temperatures to start. So here's the thing. You can scalp your lawn. You can wait all the way until March time frame to scalp if you want. I do a pre-scalp. I do a, um, a, a pre-scalp because, or just keep, mainly, to, mainly to, to, to cut down on the amount of work that I have to do, given that I have 11,000 square feet. So I take a little bit off, um, and then I will do my pre-emergent, do all my other, my other inputs for the month, so like um, my uh, essential G, and then come March time frame, I'll do like the real scalp to say, okay, now, now, is, that's, now is go time, we're ready to get, to, to get rolling in the season, right? 
Uh, this year, with all the turf raking I've been doing, the lawn's really clean now, you know? So if I get out there and I do a mow, there's not a whole lot that's going to come off. As far as scalping, there's not a, a bunch for me to take out because of all the turf raking that you guys have been seeing me doing in the YouTube stories and shorts and that kind of thing. So uh, that is, um, that's is—that's been my strategy over the uh, the winter months. But yes, there is, there's nothing wrong with doing, uh, taking off a little bit, take a taste off, take a small amount off to do a little cleanup cut, get your, uh, your pre-emergent down or, or whatever else you want to do. Again, not strictly necessary, but, but if you're just trying to save yourself a lot of work, if you have a smaller lawn, to put it this way, if your lawn is like 5,000 square feet or less and you've scalped in the past and it's really not that big a deal, like I said, afternoon is worth the work for you, just wait till March. You don't have to do it now if you don't, if you don't want to. If you have a larger lawn, I found it beneficial to break it up into a couple of sessions, mainly because all the debris that comes out of the, out of the lawn or that has come out in years past, like getting rid of it, like getting the trash people to take it has been a problem to get them to take it all at one time, right? So the pre scalp was a way to get around that to where I take a little bit out at, at a time and then I'm able to, you know, to get rid of it in a more, and, and it's a little bit easier for me. And it's just a lot less work, right? So that is my, uh, my, my thoughts on it. It's audacity. So hopefully that helps for you. As soil temperatures, uh, not really. I mean, when the grass starts growing, turning green, start mowing it. You know, that's, it, you, the grass will let you know when it's waking up because it'll, It'll go from that golden brown to a uh, to green, to the green fuzz, and then it'll take off, and then it's going to be go time. All right, Shauna W's up next says, we are, we are thawed out in Texas finally. What a mushy mess. Yeah, so stay off of it. If your lawn looked like this, you know, don't get out there the day afterwards and, and, and be, like, stomping all through that. You don't want to, you don't want to, like, you know, do damage to the lawn and carve, you know, create ruts and uneven areas. Don't, yeah, don't do that. Let it, let it dry out before you get out there if you had dealt with that kind of weather in, uh, in your area in Texas. So just, um, you know, just, just, just be nice to the grass, be nice to your lawn. All right. Uh, let's see here. Um, Olans from the gram is back. This is a question that says thoughts on scarifying in the U S use a lot over here, but I think it's sometimes unnecessary. So I started doing uh, turf raking, which I think was synonymous with what you're talking about for as far as scarifying. I do it. A, I, I started doing it last year during the middle of the season when I got the outlet and loved the results I got with it. Love the results. I mean, I'll even, well, you can't see it, but I mean, it, the, the, the stripes, I mean, granted, I, you know, guys like, you know, I like my stripe action, right? I mean, I got the shirt. I mean, the shirt has stripe action. So I love my, like my stripes. I'm serious about my lawn stripes and, you know, cutting it with the, with the true cut was good. Going, going to a greens mower was a next level up. But when I start putting that outlet on it, especially with the regular turf raking, where you're able to encourage the grass to grow in the directions you want, the stripe action is is insane. I mean, it's off the charts. And I can actually show you here. This is this is the lawn. This is dormant Bermuda. Like, and you guys can't see it, but this is like dormant grass. And look at those stripes. I mean, look how pronounced and, and nice those are. Now, imagine that with green on it, th especially this upcoming year where... You know, they're, the 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 the, more, the the lawn's gonna get the outlet treatment the entire season. I I can't wait. I just I think it's I think it's gonna be um it's gonna be another level, guys. I think it's gonna be another level. That's that's the goal. That is the goal. But yes, oh lawns. Uh, it is it is beginning to become more commonplace here in the U.S. Not not uh, most people don't do it, but the ones that do scarify or turf rake swear by it. They love it. So. Great, uh, great question. Next up is Dwayne's World. He says, happy Friday, Ron, to you and, um, and no, says, happy, I'm reading two comments at the same time. He says, it's happy, uh, happy Friday. Hope you had a great week. I did. I did have a good week. It's, uh, it's a tire, tiring week, but it's a good one. And we have a super chat um, from YouTube Royalty, Mr. Blades of Grass Lawn Care. What's going on, man? I, dude, I, I, like, I like watching your content, um, the stuff that you do on lawns. So, so Blades of Grass uh, Lawn Care, first to me, your super chat. Super chat. He's a, um, what would be the best way to describe you? So so you, he does, he cuts lawns, he takes care of lawns, he maintains lawns for a living. So um, he's like a veteran and always has like really a, like nice camo outfits. I mean, he's, he's you know, it's kind of like how I am with like, the, my, my stripes in the lawn he's like hey listen just because you're mowing grass for a living doesn't mean you can't be stylish and fashionable because his truck's all decked out his gear's all decked out he's like the camo theme and uh yeah he, i like i like his content so check it out if you guys want to if you guys like to watch people mow grass and like do all the things associated with like taking care of a lawn check out his channel he uh he puts out some uh some fun some fun content and he says uh hey ron uh, this year I've been, uh, stop, spot treating POA with T-Nex on Bermuda and I found that it stopped the seeding process and works well. What's your thoughts? It's an, it's an option. So yes, as far as it, as far as, um, reducing the ability of POA to flower, you're right. That is a good strategy. You can use, uh, Trinexapac ethyl. So, um, you're using T-Nex, but it's the active ingredient that's in, that is in Primo. 
That's in primo. That is, that's definitely a strategy. Um, I just get, in lawns that have it, I just spray it with certainty. I just, I just, just kill it off. I get, I get rid of it because yes, you, you're preventing it from flowering and from, from getting worse, but it's not like it's going to get rid of the poa, right? And for most people, um, if you have like a, a, a nice dormant lawn and you've got like patches of greens through it, it looks, it's looks, it's just, it doesn't look that great, right? It's kind of an eyesore as far as just having that, um, in the lawn, but he's from a standpoint of, preventing it from spreading and getting worse. It's a, it's a strategy. Um, but I would, you know, for me, I would just rather get out there with some, some certainty and just, and just get rid of it. You know what I mean? Because like, if I, if I, in other words, if I, if my lawn had POA in it, you know, if I'm, if I were out there looking at this in the, in the morning and enjoying a cup of coffee and I had like patches of green all throughout there and it was POA, yes, using, um, Primo to prevent it from spreading further, would be a thing, but I want it gone. Like I don't want to see when it's when the grass is supposed to be brown, I want it to be brown, and when it's supposed to be green, I want it to be green. And the only thing I want to be green is the Bermuda. So um it's yeah, like I said, it's it's definitely a strategy for preventing it from getting worse, but it's not um it's not what I think most people want um to do as far as keep getting rid of POA in their in their lawn. In other words, you're not gonna kill it. You're just going to um you know prevent from growing seeds and 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 spreading and getting and getting worse. So Hopefully that helps. I really, that's a good question. That's one I've never been asked before. I've never been asked that one before, but yeah. Um, and not, uh, not something that, uh, that I've, I've really done in the winter time. So another thing with, with, uh, with Primo that you can use it for is, you know, whenever, um, let me think when it gets to be like May timeframe, May, June timeframe, when, uh, it starts to get hot and the grass gets stressed and then you start seeing seed heads, uh, do spraying with, uh, with Primo. Like I, I start spraying really my lawn in late April, early May. And I spray every couple of weeks until September timeframe. And using that does really cut down on that, that three week period where Bermuda begins to throw, um, throw up seed has when it starts to get a little bit stressed from the, from the temperature change from like cool temps to hotter temps. That's a benefit of, of Primo. So the same thing you, your same benefits you're getting out of it um, for, for um, seed head suppression in POA, you also get some of that as well on Bermuda uh, as well. So, although it, from a standpoint of like preventing it, Bermuda from spreading, you think about it, like most Bermuda that's in um, in residential lawns, it's it's sterile anyway. So it's really just more of an eyesore. It's more about preventing seed heads from being, just from seeing them because they just, they look kind of, they look kind of ugly, right? Great question, man. Thanks for coming to hang out. I really, really appreciate uh, you, you taking some time out of your evening to come hang out in, uh, in the live stream. And again, guys, if you want to, see um, some mowing done right and done very stylishly. Check, check out uh, Blaze of Grass Lawn Care's channel. He does, a, he does a great job. All right, uh, let's see here. Ben's, um, see if there's anything else. Uh, no, other, no other questions here in the chat on Instagram. All right, next up on, from, uh, from YouTube, we got the Alexander Lee saying, what up Ron Henry and YouTube land? What's going on, Alex? So guys, if you guys ever watched the Fix My Ugly Lawn series, so any of you that watch the content on YouTube, Alex is my neighbor next door and the Fix My Ugly Lawn series, which I think was filmed in 2020, 2020 was done on his lawn. So the, the transformation where we take a lawn from zero to hero in about three months, a little less than 90 days through, um, again, through soil testing, regular mowing, fertilization, biostimulants, it shows like how you could take a lawn from looking, you know, fairly average and average to looking like, an awesome lawn in like in a ver in a relatively short period of time. So if you if you haven't checked it out, check it out. It's worth a watch. Um, do forgive the cinematography because you know I was I was worse at video then than I am now. So you have to kind of look past that. But the story is really good, right? So you can see what's possible. Next up is Eric Draper. Eric, so on, man. Eric Draper's in the house. Uh, he says, "Hey, Ron and friends, going on, Eric? Glad to see you coming to hang out in the live stream, man. Hopefully you are doing well. We got to catch up sometime." I haven't seen you, you or Andrew in a minute, but yeah, man, thanks for thanks for coming to stop in and say hey. Yeah, hopefully again, all is going all is going well well with you in, in your world. All right, we got Gary Kelly Jr. Uh, up next. He says, "Hey, Ron, uh, never thought it's negative zero, and we have snow on the ground in Chicago. Still thinking about uh, this year. What do you think about putting down prodiamine in April and then uh, again in June?" Okay, so. In Chicago, here's the thing, I don't have cool season grass and I don't live in Chicago. So perhaps in Chicago, given that you guys get snow, you're still, it's still getting snow this time of year, right? Given that it's very, very, it's very cold until, um, you know, April, May timeframe, perhaps April is the time for you to do pre-emergent. In the Southeast United States, that would be way too late. I mean, you'd already have crabgrass spurred showing up. You just put your prodiamine down, they'd be laughing at you saying, too late. 
You know, that's what would be happening to you. So I, even in Chicago, I would think that um, I would think that April would be too late. So the 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 most correct answer, Gary, is you want to get your pre-emergent down prior to the average soil temperature. So you should take like any, you know, four or five days, the average soil temps being 55 degrees, because that's about, that's when um, um, weeds like crabgrass begin germinating. So if you want, you want to get it down prior to that. So it's not like whenever, it's not, don't get out there and wait until soil temps are an average of 55 degrees and say, okay, now's the time to put my pre-emergent down. Like you missed the boat. You want to get it down prior to that. Remember it's in the name. It's like, it's prior to the weeds emerging. So April, April to me sounds late. That sounds a bit late. Again, I don't live in Chicago, but that seems, I can't see that uh, Chicago would be that, that far behind us. You know, the people that aren't doing their pre-emergent as early as I do it tend to wait until, uh, mid to late February to do theirs. So I don't, I, I can't see that Chicago would be all the way, you know, over a month behind six weeks behind as far as pre-emergent applications. But again, the way to wait, the way to know is when your average soil temps are at 55 or they're trending to be in the fifties, you want to get your pre-emergent down prior to that. That's that's your thing. And again, a bit early is not going to hurt anything. A bit late, you're going to be spending time and money buying stuff like uh, like sedge hammer, like tenacity. You, you get to spend more money on herbicides if you don't spend a little bit of money on pre-emergent. So get your pre-emergent down. All right, next up is A. Josh Transport. He says, uh, just wondering if I blew it. Uh, I dropped pre-emergent and some other weed killer on Monday before that big freeze down in Texas. Should I drop more pre-emergent once it dries out? No, you do not need to put down more pre-emergent. You, you're fine. If you 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 get your pre-emergent um down, you the the cold weather, the snow, the little little, little, little bit of ice, the freezing grain you got, definitely watered it in. Yeah, so you're good to go. You don't need to you don't need to put more down. This whole thing. So guys, here, here's as far as like pre-emergent becoming ineffective from rainfall or heavy rainfall, that's really that's really overblown. Where, where you would see an issue, right, is an, if you had an area of your lawn, take like my back lawn, right, where um, whenever that back lawn floods and the water drains, so whenever the back lawn looks like uh, like this, let me see if I can show you, if it'll, yeah. So whenever, if my back lawn looks like, like how that is, right? All that water that you're seeing that's on the left side of this picture, all that water, goes through or drains through a channel between Alex and my, my, our, our lawns. That's probably about, uh, three feet wide. So in an, an area like that, where you have, whenever you have a lot of rain, water's always passing through there. That is where you're going to lose effectiveness with pre-emergent sooner than later. But that's a, that's a constant thing. Like every time it rains heavy, that's where water's going through. But as far as the back lawn, it getting, you know, a, a lot of heavy rain, like once, I mean, even if it's, even if it's like once a week, um, you're not, you're not going to lose, um, you're not going, it's not like your pre-emergent effectiveness does not go away just from uh, an instance of, of heavy rainfall. You know what I mean? As long as you apply it at the proper rates, it got watered in, which in your case, it definitely did. You're going to be good to go. The areas where you will are, are, are likely to see some breakthrough, um, sooner are areas where the lawn, where a lot of water passes all the time. So like drainage, drainage paths, swales, those areas are where you're going to have weeds, um, more likely than, um, your, the, your main lawn. So if I say all that to say, no, do not put down more pre-emergent. What you did is fine. You're not gonna, you shouldn't have any, any, uh, issue at all. So good question. And I've been getting emails about that. So it's probably worth a blog post to talk about that. Um, to talk about that, that topic. Cause I've been getting um, emails about that. So yeah, yeah. Something to keep in mind. All right. Next up is, uh, who dot dare says, is it better to spread pre-emergent while it's dry? Um, I mean, I wouldn't, yeah, yeah, it doesn't really matter. The idea is get, apply it and, and water it in. It doesn't, I mean, I wouldn't go out there. Like in other words, if you, the, the, the video that I showed you on my lawn was fl like a flooded, um, there's a small lake out there. I would not go out like an hour after that and, and put, and apply pre-emergent mainly because I don't want to like dig ruts in my lawn. You know what I mean? I don't want to make a big mess of it. So let it, let it dry out and then apply your pre-emergent. It doesn't have to be bone dry, but I also wouldn't let it be waterlogged either. You know what I mean? So, so no, it just, I, I would say if you, if the lawn is dry enough that you'd be out there walking on it, then it's dry enough for you to go out and apply, uh, apply your pre-emergent. Next up is Mr. Greg Lyon. He says, I sent you a picture of the moss and was curious what I could do about it. There are some large evergreens on the south side of this picture. Thanks for all your help. Um, so I can find the picture here, Greg. Uh, yeah, but again, when it comes to, 
Ooh, I got another picture from Kelby. I don't know what this is, but that's sweet. That's nice looking. Um, so when it comes to moss, this it's more common this time of year because we don't have a lot of sunlight. It sounds like you have an area of your lawn where you have shade and um, we get a lot of drainage. So a lot, you do like lack of sun, a lot of rainfall and shade are like, and then also acidic soil are great conditions for moss and algae to develop. What you what you'll find is once we get further into the the, the springtime, you know, late spring where it gets warming up and the days are getting longer, um, and it gets starts getting hotter, you you shouldn't have a lot of issues with with um, with moss in that area. Um, in other words, if in if in May time frame you didn't have problems with moss there, you're unlikely to have it again. Um, this year. So as far as getting rid of it, the like I told the viewer earlier, an inexpensive way, a bucket, a bucket of water and dish soap, that's one way. But I mean, really, it's going to be a thing until um, the the temps start getting warmer, start getting more sunlight, um, and, and, and then it shouldn't be as much of a problem. If it's an issue uh, like year round, so even like during the summer, you still have a problem with moss in that area, that is where I'd really start focusing on the conditions, right? So if, if the if the location is a place where water settles and just hangs around for a long period of time, like it doesn't drain well, fixing that is going to help. You know, fixing that's going to is going to help with um, with with the, the the problem of having um, moss and other algae. Uh, as far as shade, you got evergreens. So there's not a whole lot you can do about that. I mean, if you can raise the canopy, cut back the canopy a little bit to get more sunlight there, that will help. But um, but this time of year. What mo most people have moss and algae problems, especially if it's not a consistent thing throughout the entire year. It's just due to the fact that it's cold, it's wet, and it's there's not a lot of sunlight. And once you know, six weeks from now, when the days start getting longer and it starts warming up, you you shouldn't have um, as much of a problem. So if you really want to do something about it, bucket of water and some soap, by all means. But it's it's um it's a temporary it's a temporary thing. Almost like some of the questions I've been getting from from viewers around um. If you have Bermuda grass, like some of you guys may be getting like some pink, um, like some little pink spots, some discoloration in your lawn, um, you know, like that looks looks a, a bit like pink snow mold. Um, it's nothing to worry about. The as soon as it gets warmer, the grass is gonna, the Bermuda is gonna grow right through. It's not gonna be an issue. So, uh, so yeah. So there, there there are things that you that you you deal with in your lawn when it's cold and wet and the days are shorter that you don't deal with when it gets, when it gets warmer, you know? So it's it, 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 not everything um, requires that you go after it with like chemicals or, or, or products. Some stuff you just, just, just let it ride, just let it roll out because right now you're not out there anyway. You're not mowing the grass. You're not really spending a lot of time in the lawn. Just let, um, let time run its course. And in the springtime, you sh you'll find that it the, the the issue should be a lot less worse than it is than it is now. And again, I'm I'm answering this question under the assumption that you don't have moss and algae in that area year round. So hope that helps. All right, next we have Olan. He says last one from me. You know they always say last one, but it's never really the last one. He says single stripes or double stripes. Twelve forty a.m. here. Good night. Ah, uh, single single stripes or double stripes. So. Depends on the size of your lawn. Depends on the mower you have, like how wide your mower is and the size of your lawn. So if you have like say a, you know, a, a four or 5,000 square foot lawn and you got like a 27 inch true cut or even a 25 inch true cut, then single stripes are fine. It looks good, right? If you have a, a larger lawn, like if you look at how, um, if I can bring this up again, I, should, I don't know why, why I keep, eh, it's right there. Yep, so if you have a lawn that looks like this, right, where it's a bigger lawn, you guys have seen um, videos of my lawn in the past where it's it's been, I've been on that single stripe game for a long time, right? For the most part, my lawn has been uh, single stripes. And double wides, I think, look visually better on a larger on a larger lawn. If you look, if you think about like a football pitch, right? Like a soccer field or a baseball field, like they, they mow wider stripes because it's a bigger area. It just looks, it looks better. It's more impressive. And really, if you, if once you figure out how, um, it, once you learn the pattern of mowing double wides, it's not really any, it doesn't really take any longer than it does to mow singles. You know what I mean? It's not like it's a, it's like you go down and then over and then over and then down. And then it's like, you don't, you're not really overlapping um, when you're doing it. So it's not really any, it doesn't really take uh, that much more time to load, mow doubles than it does singles. The hardest part is if you're going from singles to doubles is, um, is setting up, is setting up the, uh, 
the the like the transition the transition is no fun like if you if you've got like your stripe action burnt in like those like the dark stripes getting them to lay in the other direction like that can take a while and that's where like if you have a turf rake it's a faster process but like transitioning from single stripes especially if they're burnt into doubles is kind of a pain but um i think larger lawn doubles smaller lawn singles if you have especially if you have a wider mower so if you have like a 25 or 27 inch singles on a you know 4,000 5,000 square foot lawn just fine if you have a 20 inch Singles are fine there too, and it just really depends on what what look you like. You know, it depends on what you also what kind of look you uh, you you like to go for. But I I've switched to doubles last year, and I really like how that looks. I'm going to continue uh, with that going uh, forward. And Olan's also is chiming in saying, yeah, iron sulfate for moss as well. Yeah, so this is another option for um, for targeting moss as well. So appreciate you chiming in as well, Olan's. I appreciate the dedication, man. Twelve forty in the morning, I like it. I like it. I like that you're still coming to hang out um, over in the UK despite the uh, despite the time difference. Really, really appreciate the support. All right. Next up is Mr. Luis uh, Abarreno. Do Luis? I don't know why I cannot. Um, Aya Barreno. I think that's how you say it. Sorry. He says yes. Ordered prodiamine and complete fourteen seven fourteen. Just waiting for higher temps to mend all the snow in the Midwest. You're good, man. Nice. Yes. Yeah, so you get your prodiamine. You get your pre-emergent. And you got your fertilizer. And for those of you that are wondering what Luis is showing about, shameless plug here, but got to pay the bills, right? On the golf course lawn store here recently in the past um, two, three weeks, we have now got in stock a full selection, um, you know, play the uh, play the, the QVC music, the a full selection of fertilizer offerings from Lebanon Turf. We even got a filter so you can just see just Lebanon Turf. So you got Humic Max, a 1608, near and dear to my heart. A great option for feeding your lawn and um, just, just throughout the throughout the primary part of the growing season, where you get the um, almost nine percent humic acid in addition to uh, nitrogen and potassium, and then you got your complete, which is and the name implies a complete fertilizer. You got your nitrogen, your phosphorus, and your potassium, uh, along with some um, iron, a little bit of mag magnesium, a little bit of manganese, um, a little bit of kelp a little bit of humic acid. This has got everything in it. And then also the stress. This is a great option for if you're, you know, to, to wake up the season and also to end the season in a, in a soil that does not, that does not need phosphorus. So kind of like the complete, this has got um, some iron in it, some manganese, some magnesium, a little bit of um, humic acid and a little bit of um, magnesium. So it's got a, you know, there, this is a great option. Really, really proud and happy to be able to carry the, the, this, this line of fertilizers to make them available to you guys um, on the Golf Course Lawn Store. And for those of you that are wondering, like, what's the big deal? Yeah, so they got, they've got ingredients there and other products as well. Another really cool thing about these products, especially if you're someone that real mows your lawn or just looking for a fertilizer that will that uh, gets gets past the grass, it gets down in the soil, has a less chance of burning the grass because it's not going to actually sit on the leaf. So this is your, maybe you guys in the gram can see this as well too. This is your, your typical fertilizer pearl size, right? This is like a 200 um, SGN, 210 SGN there about, right? Size guide number, that's what you're normally working with when you go, when you buy fertilizer um, online and also if you go like to Home Depot, this is what you're going to be dealing with. This is the size of the prill in Humic Max. So you see the difference? So this is normal fertilizer. This is Humic Max. This stuff is going to get past, you know, even if you got like, you know, you're real mowing at, at low, low heights of cut. This is going to, or you're not, even if, you're, if you got like fescue grass, this is not going to get hung up in the grass. This is going to go right past the grass, get down in the soil where fertilizer needs to get to work. However, there's more. While this is awesome, and this is what really I'm going to be using on my lawn throughout the growing season, the complete and the stress, the two the the two I was telling you about that are that are like the um the greens grade fertilizers. Look at Humic Max compared to those. So this is Humic Max, pretty awesome. This is the green the the greens grade, even more awesome. So you can look at the you can see the difference in prill size of that. I get the camera to focus, but this is um very small. This is a very very fine prill, and this is almost like powder. So this is a 150 SGN. This is an 80 SGN. So as far as you know, a product that you're going to be able to apply and you're not going to, it, you literally apply it and it disappears. It gets right past the grass, it gets in the soil and it's in the, the package that's in there as far as um, the kelp and the um, the humic acid. It's just a, it's a, just a great product. It's a great all-in-one product, really. If, you, if you're someone that doesn't want to do liquids, either the complete or the stress are great options for feeding your lawn um, throughout this season. So I'm glad you got yours in. Luis, and I uh, can't wait to get pictures from you guys when I see, you know, all the gorgeous lawns, all, all the great results you guys get from uh, from the products. So good, good stuff. All right. Next up is Greg Lyon. He says, do you think the Super Sod Sand Fill Mix will be a good choice 
for covering up my roots and filling in holes from large rocks I have in the yard. Thanks. Yeah, I think it, well, depends on how big of a, how big of a area we're dealing with here. But if you're talking about filling in ruts and like, I'd say anything less than, or le less shallow than, uh, than four inches, then yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, uh, Greg, no, um, no worries with that at all. And on that topic, uh, Supersod is running a sale. They have like an early bird special that if you can, you can order on their website and you get like $30 off right now um, between, and the only thing is you, you have to take delivery of it earlier, right? So you have to, I think they're, if you buy it now, they're delivering it like 15 days later or something along those lines. If you guys want to um, save another $5 and support the channel, I'll give you a, um, a discount code that you can use if you are, again, if you want to get, if you want to save some money and get it now, uh, this this will take an, an additional $5 off the already discounted $30 uh, sale that they are running now. So it's, it's kind of cool. It's a great product. As far as a top dressing, like an all-in-one leveling mix where you have um, sand and um, a compost product, I haven't, like the... Um, the 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 super side level mix is a it's as good for me it's as good as it gets like I've, I've tried a lot of different products i've tried stuff that has peanut shells in it i've tried straight sand i've tried stuff from all different from pretty much, every, pretty much everyone around in this area that delivers um leveling material i've either gotten some from them or i've gotten some from people that have gotten some from from them and i've tried it out and super side by far in my opinion is the best product so what i'm talking about here if you are looking here, let me go here, we can show the screen. So they have an, an early bird special where, yeah, if you order now, you save 30 bucks off of one of the big yellow bags. So you got just the straight compost, and then you've also got the leveling mix. The leveling mix is more expensive because you're getting uh, the USGA sand, I think it's a 70, 30 buzz what they do. So it's 70% sand, very clean material, no trash in it. And then the 30% is their compost. So you're getting 70% of this, or 70% of sand, and then 30% compost. If you want to save like another um, five bucks off the already discounted 30 bucks, you can use this discount code, um, which will save you um, an additional $5 on, um, on, let me see, super, I can't, I can't type and talk at the same time. Discount code. All right. So yeah, so they'll save you an additional $5. You'll get 35 bucks off of one of the big bags, but you have to take delivery of it like in the next 15 days. So if you have a place to store it, um, you know, then you can save quite a bit of money actually, because it's, it's, you know, $30 discount is actually, is, is, is pretty decent. It's pretty good compared to what the stuff normally costs. All right. But yeah, that's, it is a great option, Greg. And yes, if you, if you live in an area, if you live in Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Alabama, uh, Tennessee, then yes, that is what I would use. If, if you, if you can get some, if you live in any one of those States, that is what I would go with. Next up is Eric Draper. He says, at Greg Line, you can, can you cut the roots out? Is that an option? Yeah, I think what he's talking about, Eric, is he's going to remove some of the roots or he's going to, he's got like rocks and roots. And if he's going to remove them, like what's he going to fill all the bare areas with once he's done removing them? I think that's where he's thinking, like, I think. Uh, but the answer to both is yes, you can, uh, you can use the, that product for that. You can absolutely use that product for that. All right, Dwayne's World, part of time, excellent, says, Ron, I did my pre-scalp and used my buddies. True Cut C25, and oh my God, it's a beast. Dare I say my next more? Dwayne, look, man, you know, you know I love you like a play cousin, right? But you know, at, at some point, you know, we're gonna need an intervention. I love mowers, I love lawn equipment like the next person, but you, you've got, um, you're, you're getting up there, man. I mean, you got, you got a greens mower. I know you've got, you're like Mr. McLean. You got, you're like the regular McLeans, and you've got like a, like some specialty McLeans. And now we're talking about a, uh, a, you know, like a, a C25. So I mean, I'm just saying, at some point. We have to, um, you know, we have to ask ourselves, you know, when are we going to you know, cut this off? I mean, unless you're going to start like a, a real more rental business, because you've definitely got enough equipment to be able to do that, you know? So that's something to, to look into as well. But yeah, you're right. The, T, the, the C25, the, the, the True Cut C25 is a beast. I love mine. People have been trying to get me to get rid of it and it's not going to happen. Like people say, hey, I'll buy it from you. I'm like, mm, nope, because I, I love that more. It's my first, my first love, my first real powered real mower and it's a great to your point it's a great 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 mower it's a, it's a bit like a tank man it's a beast it's a chain driven you know you really you can't hurt it. it's running you know if you get one that has the honda engine it's like a big block you're not gonna you know it's just it's loud and just it's built like a tank they are they're they're it's a very very good real mower so i am not surprised that you that you liked it and uh and you say you what do you say here next you followed it up with a pre-scalp and pre-emergent nice good job sir 
I like I like your uh, your process. Now here's the thing. Hopefully you're gonna help your buddy out. You know, you guys are gonna go in on on getting it sharpened up because you know you took your buddy's C25 and used it to scalp your lawn, which we both we you and I both know that's not easy on the mower. So you know, make sure you, you slide him a couple of dollars and and help him out with the the resharpen. Unless he's doing his lawn too, and he just said, hey, you know, my it's gonna get boogered up anyway. Use it on yours before I uh, take it in for a sharpening. In which case you can ignore me. You can ignore me either way. All right, Shauna W is up next. Actually, first, we got a super chat here. Let me get down here and grab this really quick. One from Mr. Travis Winston. Thank you so much, Travis. Super chat received. He says, go time. Happy Friday, Golf Course Lawn Squad. I received my exclusive sticker also. Thanks, Ron. You are very, very welcome. Travis, you're very welcome. I'm glad that, you, that it made it to you safe and sound. I'm trying to see here. I think, yeah, Luis is still the top dog as far as... Um, Super Chats go, so he is still the show sponsor. But what he's talking about, guys, you're saying exclusive sticker. What pray tell? Tell us more, pray tell. What are you talking about? This 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 super this uh, exclusive uh, sticker thing. So what he's talking about, and this is something that I sent out to Golf Course Land Academy members, um, and uh, a couple. Uh, really, it's, it's primarily. I'm trying to think. It's primarily Golf Course Land Academy members, um, and then also LG. Because me, like, can you imagine if I didn't send LG one? Like the amount of belly aching and drama I'd have to deal with. I just couldn't. I couldn't deal with it. So it's just it's better just to just just to do that. But the sticker, what he's talking about is this, guys. Now it's um. I had like a bunch. Uh, not a bunch. Uh, like I don't know a batch of these made up. It's um. Uh, compared to my other my other stickers, these are very limited edition. Like you're not gonna get you're not gonna get these. Like if you order um, like a fertilizer or anything, these are not gonna be included in it because one they're expensive. Um, you will get a sticker, but you're not gonna get one of these. So this is what I'm talking. What he's talking about like one of the nice, cool holographic golf course lawn store stickers by Apply Dominate. Pretty sweet. And those of you on the gram, you can check it out. These are pretty sweet. The cameras will do a great job, but I can tell you, as awesome as it looks on camera, they're even cooler in person. And if someone on the live stream, like and I can do this, if someone on the live stream wants one, if you are ordering, I'll tell you what you have to order. If you're ordering Primo or a Celeprin, so Primo Max or a Celeprin, the SC, not the granule. If you're ordering, let me just show you. If you're ordering either one of these products, then I can ensure that whenever the warehouse is packing it up, you get you get one one gets put in in for you throughout the weekend. So if you order between now and Monday morning, ten o'clock, um, I'll ensure that you get that you get one. So I'll show you here the products I'm talking about. So if you go to shop and then go to um, I have to go to different places. So for the for the um, pre what I'm talking about for the growth regulator primo this guy if you order this you will i'll throw one of these over the weekend so if you're watching this on like tuesday or wednesday don't yell at me for getting a sticker you got to watch it live to be able to or you have to watch it live or get your order it over the weekend to get to be able to get one of these so primo max um or a celeprin so if you go to the insecticide fungicide section uh this guy the celeprin sc so the liquid celeprin or the liquid Primo, either one of those, um, you will, like, actually, I could have just shown you here. I could have just done this. I don't know why I went to the store, but this or this over the weekend, one of these will get you one of these included in it if you order, again, before 10 a.m. on Monday. So if you like, if you like stickers, if you don't like stickers, then you can be like, yeah, whatever. I don't really care. But if you like, you like stickers, if you like exclusive stickers, like ones that not everybody's going to have, because I didn't, I didn't make that many of them, uh, then there's a way to get one. I mean, if you were a county member, you would get one if you wanted one. But uh, but yeah, that's another way for you guys to get one. And another benefit to like being someone that's on the live stream, being here live, supporting the channel live, you get access and get you get some of the cool stuff that people that watch a week or two later don't get. All right, next up is Shauna W. Says two questions. Here we go. Two questions. First time wanting to aerate my lawn. You're in for a workout, but it's a great thing to do. It says home is a year and a half old. Is it okay if I don't top dress just fertilize after? Also, is the best time to do it after it's actively growing? Great question, Shauna. Great, great, great questions. So yes, you don't have to top dress after you aerate. As a matter of fact, most people that aerate their lawns do not top dress their lawns. Like top, like if you talk about like in the on the hierarchy of things that people do, like if you get people to put pre it down, that's like one thing like the next step up would be like regularly fertilizing. And then the next step up would be aeration. Like very few people aerate their lawns and even fewer, like a, like a, like a, a, a percent, a fraction of a percent of people that actually aerate their lawns, top dress their lawns. So it's really folks that are into real mowing that are into trying to get that golf course lawn look that do love that little top dress after aeration. It is not necessary. You don't have to top dress after you aerate your lawn. It's a great time to do it. 
but you don't have to do that. So in your case, as far as um, doing the aeration and then doing the fertilizer afterwards, that's exactly what I would do. As a matter of fact, when I top dress, so my process for top dressing is I will aerate, and then I'll put down a really heavy application of Essential G, my granular biostimulant, and then I'll do my fertilizer, and then I'll top dress. So the, the reason why I do it in that order is when you aerate, you're relieving compaction, you're opening up the soil, you're opening, you're just, you're just making it easier for, for water, for nutrients, for the fertilizer, for the biostimulants to get down in the soil to integrate um, easier. Um, and then I will finish up with that with, with, with top dressing, right? So if you're not going to top dress your lawn, just aerate it and then do your fertilizer app for that month, your biostimulant app for that month. Like I'm not saying wait until you aerate to begin fertilizing your lawn, but let's say the next time you're going to, let's say you're, you're like me and you're fertilizing your lawn the beginning of every month with a granular, right? So every beginning of every month, that's when you're getting your granular down. Plan your aeration like, you know, around the beginning of the month so that you can get your aeration done. And then that month's fertilization do it right after aerating the lawn. That's, that is what I would do. So, so yes. And as far as the best time to do it, as far as it, uh, when it's actively growing, yeah, it will recover faster. So I've tested it both ways. I've aerated my lawn as early as the first part of March and I've done it, uh, into the April, May timeframe doing it really early. There's not a ton of benefits to doing that. And, and the grass, the lawn just looks ugly longer because the lawn is only now starting to wake up and you're in, essentially you're, you're adding a bit of stress to it when it's still trying to come out of dormancy. So the ideal time really is in that that April, May timeframe. Again, I'm answering this as if you're in the Southeast United States. If you're further up North, then it's gonna be different. But whenever it's actively growing is, in my opinion, the best time to do aeration because the lawn's gonna recover faster from it. It's not gonna look ugly as long. Um, doing it early, um, doing it earlier than that. Like again, when I did it one year in March, there's not really any benefit. There's not really a whole lot of, a lot of, there's not much upside, you know, to doing that versus waiting until April, May timeframe. And again, answering it as if you were my neighbor in Georgia. So depending on where you are in the country, you can adjust accordingly. But yeah, good, good, uh, great question. Aeration is something that, granted, it's, it's a ton of work and you do question your life choices whenever you're out there fighting with an aerator and it's dragging you around the lawn because it's, it's a workout, but it's one of the best things you can do. Like if you could, if you could pick like, there's a couple things I could say you could do every year, but if you could pick one thing outside of mowing to do to your lawn every year, aeration would be that thing. You know, and then after that would be uh, like verticutting and turf raking. But that's like, that's another level of commitment. But if you could do like, like once a year outside of regular mowing, if you get out there and you could aerate it, it's going to relieve compaction. It's going to allow air and nutrients to get in the soil. There's just tons of benefits to, uh, to doing it. And you know, it's the commitment for that is not terribly high. Like you can run an aerator for not too much money. Or you can pay a service to come do it for you for again for not uh, not too much money. If you want to see what's involved in aerating a lawn, I shot a video last year on this topic um, where I did um, I did I showed aerating the back lawn. If you're interested in seeing that, I will post that in the chat here now. Aeration video, and that is for well, it's for Shauna, but Shauna, if you're looking now, you just look in there now. You'll see the link. And that'll take you to that to that video. So it's it's a great one of the best things you can do, but it is a workout. It is a workout. And I show a technique for doing it that makes it makes something that is really bad less bad. Or something that can be a lot of work, it's it makes it less bad. It's it's really just just doing overlapping ovals instead of making like a pass back and forth like you do with a mower. Like that will wear yourself out. The the technique that I show in that video that I just posted in the chat um is you know for someone that's done done aeration in some cases, you know, twice in a twice in, in a growing season, you know, I do it. I do it at least once a year. Some years, twice in a year. It, I had to come up with ways of not hating life after doing it. And after a lot of trial and error, this is what I came up with: saying, "Yeah, this this like doing this the overlapping like go fast, turn left is a great way to produce a good result faster, less work." So uh, so check that video out if you are so interested. But you got time. You got time between now and uh, Aprilish time frame when you're going to um, to do that. All right, next up we got Brent Johnson has a question. He says, how, how do you handle pre-emergent if I plan to overseed this spring? If pre-emergent is meant to prevent root germination, would that be counterproductive to overseeding procedure? Thanks. Great question, Brent. Yes, yeah, so if you're planning, so you have a cool season lawn, right? And you cool season guys get a, get um, damage to your lawns from the winter, from the snow, you get some, 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 um, some die off from that. If you're planning to seed your lawn in the spring, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't apply pre-emergent. I wouldn't. So in your case, you're going to be controlling weeds in your lawn with a post-emergent uh, herbicide. 
So something like Tenacity or a three-way or, you know, depending on the weeds you're trying to target, you, you'd just be using a post-emergent herbicide to um, to keep weeds out of your lawn. But if, if, you're, if your thing, you have, to, you have to pick your poison, right? You have to pick what's important to you. If your thing is this, if you say, hey, listen, weeds are, are the thing that I absolutely do not want. I don't want to deal with weeds in my lawn during the spring and summer. Like, I did, they, they irritate me. I don't have to deal with weeds. In that case, you're making the decision to do pre-emergent, and you are going to get worse germination if you try and overseed the lawn you know, in April time frame or whenever you decide you're going to go, you're going to go do that. If you're, if your priority is saying, you know what, I'm willing to deal with a few weeds in my lawn, but I want a nice thick sand of grass. I want to be able to fill the grass to fill in quickly and, you know, recover from areas that I had some damage over the winter months. Then you're making a decision to say, I'm willing to put up with more, a bit more weed pressure. And I'm just going to, you know, use post-emergent herbicides to take care of it. And I'm going to make sure I mow a lot so I can grow a nice thick, healthy sand of grass to outcompete the weeds. You're making a decision to make, to, to make, you know, the, the, a thicker lawn earlier in the season, the priority. So you have to, you have to kind of pick which way you want to go. You, you, um, like most things in life, you can't have it all, unfortunately, right? You can. So yeah, you, you are working against yourself if you apply pre-emergent and your goal to get the best possible result when you are overseeding. So pick which one is more important to you and then decide and apply accordingly or don't apply accordingly. It's a great question. It's good. Good. You're thinking about it now versus trying to, versus doing it and, uh, you know, putting on pre-emergent and then wondering, well, I got really, you know, terrible determination with all the, all my, all the seed I put down. So it's, uh, it's good. I like, I like where your mind is. All right. Next up is, um, Jiz, uh, J Boss. He says, Hey, uh, Hey, my uh, name is Jason. Hey Ron, I have Prodiamine, um, water special granule and pennant magnum in North Florida. How do you like to apply these? I've never applied pennant magnum myself. I, I so as far as pre-emergence that, that I am most familiar with and that I use, I will, I've used um, Dithiopair, Prodiamine, and then Spectacle Flow. Those, those uh, work well for me. Um, and really, Prodiamine and Dithiopair, I use those in the springtime primarily, and then Spectacle in the fall. I don't use Spectacle in the, um, in the spring. Um, Pennant Magnum is, from what I've heard, is an excellent uh, pre-emergent. I've just never used it to tell you, to have direct experience to tell you what to expect. I would pick one or the other, though. I would not do, you know, I've gotten some questions from viewers on previous live streams saying, hey, can I do Prodiamine and Dithiopair? Like, can I do like Prodiamine this week and Dithiopair the next week? Answer is no, you don't need to do that. Like you need to, like one, one pre-emergent um, is enough. You don't need to be applying uh, both of them. It's just not, it's just not necessary. If you apply them at the correct rates, and you water them in, you're going to get a good result. There's no re reason to um, to combine um, multiple in the springtime. Now, now, a case where um, more than one pre-emergent in the fall makes sense. Let's say you are, um, let's say you're not going to go with something like Spectacle Flow because Spectacle you'd apply that by itself, and because it, it stands alone, it doesn't really need anything else. It doesn't need any help to get a great job, a, do a great job against like POA and just preventing cool season weeds. But if your goal is to prevent, say um, POA in the winter months, in the fall and winter, like using uh, Prodiamine along with Princep, which is another uh, pre-emergent, like that can, that has some benefits. Like using the two of those can help you get a better result as far as suppressing POA. But in the springtime, Dithiopyr or Prodiamine is, is all I've ever had to do to get Again, to keep my lawn weed free. And keep it keep in mind, I apply my pre-emergent, like it's gonna go down in two days, right? And that's like figure that's early February. And my lawn will get aerated this year at least one time. And it may or may not get top dressed. I haven't decided yet. I'm I, you guys know I'm probably gonna end up doing it, but I'm I'm, I'm it's probably gonna get top dressed too, right? And I and given given doing those types of things, like two aerations and a top dress and regular turf raking, you would think that I'd have a lot of issues with weeds in my lawn because there's this whole thing that if you apply pre-emergent and you do aerate, you're going to have this huge flush of weeds that are going to break through. And I just, I haven't had that found to be the case. Not on my lawn. It's not, and again, it's not a sample of one, not on my lawn, not on Alex's lawn, not on the neighbor next door's lawn and not the one that's to the project lawn and the one that's right next to me. Like none of them had that problem. You know what I mean? So I, I think just one applied well at the proper rates will will um will will produce a a good result. So if you want to do a split up, that's fine too. But just one, I just pick one and 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 go and and stick with it. I can't speak to Pennant Magnum though, because I've never actually used it though. So I've heard good things, but I've never used it to myself. All right, Blaze Grass Lawn Care. He's up next. He says, oh, so this is the question you asked prior to the super chat. He says, I've been treating Poe with Chinex on Bermuda and found that it stopped the seeding process and works well. What's your thoughts? Yes, I've already covered this one. Um, for stopping the seeding, sure, yes, for suppressing it. But as far as getting rid of the POA, 
not so much, right? And for most people, they want the POA gone out of their warm season grass, not just preventing it from um, from spreading. So, but yeah, you know what? What the, your your the, it, your technique is sound for what you are trying to do, um, which what you're trying to accomplish. It it can be used for that. All right. Next up is Mary J saying reporting for lawn info and thumbs up hopefully you're doing great ron i am i'm doing well i can't complain and yeah guys so we've got 130 people in the live stream and we've only got 88 likes surely surely we can do better than that so if you guys are enjoying the show if you're not learning anything hopefully at least it's entertaining uh if you guys wouldn't mind you know moving the mouse over to that like button hitting that like button ever so gently it costs absolutely nothing and it's a free way to support the channel so if you wouldn't mind doing that, I'd really, really appreciate it. I'll even take a sip of my lemonade. I'll even put some intermission music on for you guys while I, while I uh, take a sip of my drink and look for the next comment. So hit that like button. If you guys are on the Instagram, hit the, the the heart, you know, the thing on Instagram that you do to show that you're appreciating it, if you're appreciating it. Oh, we've got Vince the Longineer in the house. What's going on, Vince? Mmm. Tonight, it, the beverage is a Arnold Palmer. It's um, Milo's, their Arnold Palmer. You know, it's funny. Publix used to carry Milo's lemonade, and I guess because they have their own competing lemonade, they stopped carrying it. So now all you can get there now is, uh, is like their Arnold Palmer. They don't carry the actual lemonade anymore, which is like, come on, guys. I mean, you can carry the Arnold Palmer. You can carry, you can carry the Milo's. All right, next up is Two Trilla. He says, is it okay for me to use Certainty this Sunday to kill off POA and also pre-scalp this Wednesday for my pre-emergent or am i moving too fast for certainty to do its job okay so you're asking is it okay for me to use certainty sunday and then pre-scalp this wednesday okay so yeah so if i'm understanding you right to trilla you want to apply certainty on sunday two days from now you are not going to cut the grass or and by extension the weeds or, or the poa until wednesday and with the plan of doing your pre-scalp on wednesday to prepare for your pre-emergent the following weekend if I got all that correct, then yes, that's, there's no problem with that. Really, you want a couple of days. You want to you want to uh, spray the certainty, use surfactant with it for best results, and let it dry on the on the the weed you're targeting. In this case, poa for a day, couple of days, and then if you want to go out and mow. And here's the thing: if you can mow, if the poa is like in like a big patch, like if it's not just like a, a little clump here and there, if you got like a big patch of poa, if you can try and avoid even mowing that. You know what I mean? Like the poa is already there. Like you cutting it down isn't really gonna is it going to do a lot? Like, I mean, if you can avoid mowing the POA altogether, that would be the best thing. But if it's, if it's like spread throughout different parts of your lawn, giving it a few days after your, um, your post-emergent, your certainty application before you mow is going to be just fine. Keep in mind though, this time of year, herbicides take longer to work. So certainty is going to, it's going to work, but it's going to be a slower process. So just be patient. It is going to work. It is going to kill POA. It's very effective against POA, but you just have to be, uh, be patient. If you want to see what kind of results you can expect to Trilla, if we go here to shop and then to weed killer and then to certainty on here, I think I've got some some shots here of showing what it does against a POA. So this is this is certainty in the summertime against sedges, right? So that's sedges before, and this is sedges just like seven days later. So like a week later, you see it's falling off, and then like another week after that, it's like burnt to a crisp. Um, and then you have um, a POA you know, POA before, and then POA 10 days later, it begins, you can see it's not like fully dead, but it's the colors coming out of it and it's dying off, you know? So it's certainty against POA is a, it's a great option. Um, but just be patient. It, it's, it's like the temperature, temperature does dictate how quickly, not necessarily how well, but it does dictate how quickly, uh, the, the herbicide is going to, uh, to work. But yeah, it's a great, great option. I, um, I like it for, uh, for POA annua. Images are also for POA for for POA too, but it's just it's really slow. And then there's another product that I don't really recommend because for most people it it's the way you're supposed to use it doesn't really work well for residential lawns. So certainty is um is my jam for that. So yeah, I like I like your strategy. By go forth and conquer. Because so I hope uh, happy Friday and I hope everyone is well. All right, next up is Calvin Forty Cal Artist. <laughs> he says, how many times can I put pre-emergent down? Um, well, I, I recommend doing it at least twice in a calendar year, once in the spring, once in the fall, but you can do split applications. So I should say this, you should, there, there are two times or two seasons when you want to do pre-emergent early spring and then early fall, how you do your application in the early spring. There's a couple ways you can do it. You can do what I do, which is one application at 
the heavier end of the um, rate limit for my grass for Bermuda. So in my case, uh, for Bermuda, it's like 0.83, but I apply it at 0 0.80 because the math's easier. So I do that once. Um, but if you wanted to do a split application and say you were gonna do something other than you're gonna apply a different pre-emergent in the fall other than prodiamine, what you could do is you could do a 0 0.40, um, so half rate, like now, and do another half rate in like April, late March, early April time frame. And then you're done as far as your annual allocation for prodiamine for warm season grass, right? So you have to use something like, um, you have to use like something else in the fall. So dithiopere or um, spectacle in the fall. If you're, if you're saying, hey, now I wanna use prodiamine for the entire year. So I wanna use prodiamine in the spring and also wanna use it in the fall and I wanna do split apps. Let's say you wanna be really complicated. What you could do is you could say, you could do a, a 0 0.20 application. We got, remember, we got 0 0.80 total to play with over a 12 month period. So you could take, you could do like a, a an application now at 0 0.20. You could do another application in April. Again, another 0 0.20. So we're at 0 0.40 total. So we're about halfway through our, our annual application. And then in the fall, late August, early September, you could use the remaining 0 0.40 ounces of prodiamine that you have left um, in your annual limit for your fall application. So again, I don't do that, but that's if you wanted to, if you wanted to use do prodiamine and just use that as your one pre-emergent all year long, that is one way you could do it. You know, so it just depends. Um, if you are, um, if you're going to mix it up, if you're going, if you're going to use a different pre-emergent in the fall. I am a fan of using a heavier rate in the springtime, like using up your allocation in the springtime, whether that's in a single application, like how I do, or in split applications, like a lot of people like to do. Um, that I'm a fan of doing that and then doing something different in the fall. So hope that helps answer your question, Calvin. Uh, so the, like most things in life, the answer is it depends. It depends on what your on what your plans are. If you're only going to use prodiamine, you got to use less of it in the spring to save some for the fall. If you're going to use something else, you can use more of it in the spring, and then you can use something else in the fall. So, like most things in life, it depends. It depends. All right. Next up is two Trilla. He says, "Is it okay?" Yeah, I already answered that question. I already got you. And the next up is Lamont Smith. He says, evening, Ron. How soon will I be able to get a soil sample? Will now be a good time to get a sample? I'm in Virginia. Yes, you can get a sample now if you want to. So I guess if you're asking if it rained because of all the rain we've had. So if, you're, if your weather was like how it is in Georgia, where it stopped raining Thursday, if you want to get a sample, go pull cores tomorrow, by all means, go for it, by all means. So the soil, I'm not sure what kind of soil test kit you're using, but the one that I like and love and the one that I recommend, mainly because it's easy and I like easy, uh, is the one from my soil. Uh, these guys are like 30 bucks. They're not that expensive for the soil test kit. And then if you don't have one, I highly also recommend investing in, or this camera, so you can see it better. I recommend investing in the probe tool. This makes it easier for you to get cores. So this and this, you can get these together in a package that includes a soil test kit and a probe. You pull your cores from different areas of your lawn, mix them all up. You know, you can use this box to do it if you want. The, all the samples, I'll show you here. I get the, it's always so hard to get the scoop out. All right, so you go and you collect a bunch of samples. You can either throw them in this now empty box or in a bucket. You'll take this scoop, like this guy right here, right? It's a plastic scoop. And you'll, um, I, I tend to take like two scoops. Um, I take a couple, a couple of scoops of that mixed up, that homogenous mixture that represents my soil for my lawn. And you will amp, you'll put that into this container. It's deionized water, deionized water and then an ion exchange resin. So you see that little bulb that's in there? That's an ion exchange resin. And the idea of what this does is it behaves like a synthetic root. It, it, it absorbs nutrients from the soil that you're putting in here in the same way that your grass would do it. So you take this, drop it in an envelope, mail it out to the nice folks at um, Predictive Nutrient Solutions, uh, my soil, and then within a week, you'll get an email saying, hey, Lamont, we've analyzed your sample and here is what you should be doing as far as, or here's what your levels look like. And as far as um, recommendations, though, you'll also get that as well too. So I'm a really big fan of these because they're easy. It's easy for someone that that is not, um, that you know, that doesn't have a background in, in um, turf grass, the turf industry, to be able to look at the results, you know, low, medium, high, um, you know, and, and be able to, to, to make a, a good and intelligent decision around what kind of fertilizer or other nutrients their, uh, their soil needs. So I'm a big fan of these. We, um, actually, I'll show you here, assuming you don't have one yet. We carry them on the store. If you go to shop and then soil test kits and pH adjustments, you've got the starter pack, 
um, which is the one I just showed you, which is just one soil test kit and a probe. And then you've got the pro pack, which is again, a probe and two and two um, soil test kits. And then if you just want individual ones, so you already have a way to collect your samples, you can just get this guy and you get like a two, a one pack, a two pack and a four pack. And as you, as you can see, as you go up in the number of kits you get, um, the, you get a price break on, on that. So just depends on, on, uh, on what you're trying to do as far as how often, cause you didn't ask this, but I'm going to answer it anyway. As far as how many times should you do a soil test, um, in a year, I'm a fan of doing them twice a year. I'm a fan of doing one around this time of year in the spring. And I'm also a fan of doing one in the fall. Here's why in the spring, your, you get your soil test done now. A week later, you get your sample, your results. And it, it tells you, hey, for Lamont, this is what fertilizer I should be using. Should you be using the complete 14714? Maybe your soil needs some phosphorus. So that's a good option. Maybe you don't need phosphorus, in which case, then like a, um, the, uh, like a, the, the Humic Max, the 1608 or the 12024 is a good option. In some states, I think Maryland is one of them. If you're going to apply a fertilizer that has phosphorus in it, you need to have a soil test to show, hey, listen, I'm applying this fertilizer that has phosphorus because I have a deficiency in my soil. I have a phosphorus deficiency. So if in some places you really do, you really need to get one um, done if you're gonna be using a fertilizer that has phosphorus. If you're not gonna be using one, then not strictly necessary, but for the spring, I like to get one done because it, it lets me know um, what is gonna be the best fit for my lawn for this upcoming growing season. I also like to do a soil test in the fall because it tells me one, how did my nutrient program work throughout the year? So if, if I was if I was doing you know, my biostimulant program, I was doing um, my liquid and granular ferts, like what, like how did that work throughout the season? Like how, like what are my nutrient levels at the end of the season? And in addition to that, I like to do a fall soil test because it, it allows me to see what my soil pH is at. So pH is um, a best way to describe it is it it, it dictates or it drives nutrient availability. So you think about your grass, right? Your, your, your grass has, um, likes or enjoys soil um, with a pH of between six and seven, thereabouts, right? Like 5.8 to 7.2 to be precise, but like six, six to seven is, is like the Goldilocks zone, right? And the reason why you wanna know that is because if say you're putting, you're putting down a product, like a granular fertilizer that has iron in it, but then your soil is very, um, is um is very alkaline. So you have very high, you have high pH, like seven, five, you're, you're, you're more on that end of the spectrum. A lot of the, the 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 micronutrients don't become available. They're not they're not available for your grass to take them up if your soil pH is very alkaline. So and if and conversely, you also have problems if your soil is too acidic. So if your pH is below very much below six, you also have a nutrient availability problems. So the reason why I do a fall one is because in especially around here, what ha what tends to happen is our, the soil tends to be more acidic. What we have here in Georgia, at least in my area, so. By doing a fall soil, soil test, I know whether or not I need to apply um, a calcitic or a dolomitic lime because lime, like pH, unlike your macronutrients, takes a longer time to change than, um, than like your nitrogen, your phosphorus, and your, your uh, potassium levels. Like those levels, you can, you can adjust those relatively quickly compared to pH. Like pH can take a while to adjust. So by knowing one, how your, um, what your pH levels are in the fall, let's say you need a lime application, it gives you plenty of time to get that lime app down and the entire fall and into the early, you know, the entire fall, the winter, into the early spring for that lime to react with the soil, to bring the pH levels up. So whenever you get ready to, this time of year, right? Like we're like six weeks from now, we start fertilizing, you're in good shape and you're gonna get the most out of, you know, the money you're spending on fertilizer. So that's that's my whole um, spiel as far as on soil testing. I like to do it twice a year, spring and fall. And the one that I like is the one from my soil because it's easy. They're easy to understand, easy to read. So hope that helps, sir. If your lawn is dried out from all the rain, then yeah, by all means, pull cores and get your uh, get your soil test on, man. Get it done. All right, next up is Higgy Pop. He says, "Happy Friday, let's go." All right, I agree. I agree. Let's go. It, it is. It is. Uh, it is about that time. Let me check here in the gram. We got Lawn Whisperer in the house. Going on, Justin. Hopefully, you're doing well, sir. Um, Money Swag started following me. Thanks for that. I appreciate it. Got some other folks here. In on the gram saying hi. Hey guys, if you're on Instagram and you want to be want to have your question on the show, I mean I'll answer it here if you have, if you have a question. But if you want to have it up to where everybody can see it, join the YouTube channel. Like you'll go to, go to YouTube, go to search like Ron Henry live stream, and you'll see um you'll see a little show up, and you'll be able to join live and post your question, and everyone can see it. So something to consider. And Shauna says I'm so excited for the season. Yeah, man, you and me both. You and me both, Shauna. I'm I'm ready to get. Uh, 
ready to get going. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to how this year is going to, uh, to turn out. All right, John Rob Will it says, Cold Front is here in Southern Maryland, so all lawn care is a long way off from me. My flood jet sprayer tip arrived, though, so at least I'll be ready for when the time comes. Nice, that's awesome, John. At least you're prepared. So for one of you guys that are wondering what John is talking about, whenever you're spraying pre-emergent, right? When you're spraying a liquid pre-emergent to your lawn, which I guess you wouldn't spray a granule, that wouldn't make sense, right? But when you're spraying pre-emergent to your lawn, you want a, a droplet size that is larger because it's e like a, a larger droplet is easier to get past the grass, get down in the soil where it can begin working. So you've got, let me show you here, we'll go over to the camera. So as far as spray tips, you've got this guy, which is like a foliar tip, right? This is what you would use for spraying liquid fertilizer, spraying herbicides, if you're playing spraying certainty, or Celsius, or you're spraying like uh, um, any product that is designed to, to adhere or to, to stick to the plant leaf, you want a finer, a finer droplet, right? It's almost, you almost like think about it this way. Like whenever you are spraying um, sunblock, right? Sunblock on your skin, like it's not like big, like chunks of sunblock that come out of the spray can, right? It's a fine mist, right? Cause that's easier, does a better job coating your skin and it's just, just a better job coating your skin, right? A finer, a finer droplet size. Conversely, when you're trying to shower, right, you would not want to shower with a really fine droplet because it's just, it's just, it's not as effective for removing dirt. It's not as effective for, for just for washing yourself. So think about for, for pre-immersion, the goal for it is to not stick to the, to the grass. It's for it to get in the soil. So a larger droplet size, which the flood jet tip, this tip, this guy provides is why you want to use one of these when you're applying pre-emergent and then you'd use the regular, like the, the foliar tip for pretty much everything else. So, so any kind of soil based application. So I say pre-emergent, but if you're also doing like, um, you know, if you're using a biosimilant that needs to get in the soil, like RGS or something like that, a larger, a larger tip can work for that as well, uh, as well too. But cool, John, glad that you are all good to go. And if any of you guys want, a f actually, you know what, I'll, I'll make it easy for you. If any of you guys are want a, you're saying, well, where do I get one of those funny, those, one of those fancy um, spray tips? I'll put links in the chat for all of them so you guys are all covered. So you've got the foliar tip, the air induction tip, and then the flood jet tip. And I didn't talk about the air induction tip, but what that is, the air induction tip is like the in-between. So you could use this for foliar apps and you can also use this for pre-emergent applications. It can do, you can do both with it, but really, if you're trying to do the, the best of both worlds, you use the foliar tip for foliar apps and you use the Floodjet tip for soil-based apps. So, but all the links are in the chat there in case you guys are so interested. Next up is No Name. He says, happy Friday, Ron, and fellow lawn enthusiasts. It's dipping below freezing again uh, tonight, uh, right before my pre-emergent plans. Also, if you're in North Georgia and, and get a line on a true cut, <laughs> on a good true cut, let me know. Yeah, man, you know, it's funny. It's like, because I'm really into real mowing, like everybody and their grandmother thinks that I'm the guy to call as far as how to find a, a real mower. And I'm like, listen, if you find a good one, you can send it to I me. Mean, if you find a one that you're thinking about buying, send me a picture, send me a video of it, and I'll tell you what I think about it. But I don't, I don't have a hookup on real mowers. You know, I got, I got to struggle like the rest of you guys to find, uh, to find equipment. You know, so, so yeah. If you are, if you're looking for one, if you think real mowing is something you're going to be doing this year, and you're trying to get a powered real mower, get one or acquire one sooner than later, because it's going to be, you know, the demand is going to go up as when once like March, April rolls around, which you don't want is, you know, someone that is that watches this live stream for the first time, say in March, and like, you know what? I think I might want to try real mowing this year. Now you're competing against those guys. You want to, you know, you're on the inside track. You want to get your equipment all settled, all taken care of before the season starts. That's what you're after. All right, T1000 says, what's up? What's going on, T1000? Thanks for coming to hang out, sir. Appreciate you. And no name leading the charge as always saying, don't forget to smash that like button. Yes, guys, gals, if you guys are having a good time, having fun, please hit the like button. It costs absolutely nothing and it is a free way to support the channel. Tyler M, you're back, man. What's going on, Tyler? It's been a while, man. I haven't seen you since like last year. He says, howdy, been a good while. I still love the good information. Definitely, Tyler, I'm glad to see that you're back. You're doing well. You know, you, you went through uh, you know the new year and that you are, are back in the saddle, back in hanging out. Uh, good, glad to see you're doing okay, sir. And then next up is Patrick Schultz. He says, thanks so much, Ron. You're the best. I added it to my lawn list on Amazon. Very, very cool. Yeah, you won't, you will not be, you're not going to be sad about the Earthway, man. It's a, it's a great spreader. I like mine. The only, here's the thing. Only other thing I, I should have told, I can tell you too, is when you get one now on my first, the one I had before that Alex, I gave to Alex, the wing nuts used to have a, um, they were like nylock. They had like a, like a, they had, they would lock. They wouldn't really back out. 
the new ones that they, the, the new one I got, like the 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 wing nut on it is just there's no locking, there's no um, there's, not, there's no nylon insert in it, so it can it can get loose. So the way you get around that is just get yourself some um, some Loctite, some blue Loctite. Whenever you're whenever you're assembling it, I mean it comes assembled. You just kind of rotate the handles up. Whenever you are, are tightening those down, get some blue Loctite, drop a dab on each one. Of them. There's two of them, one on each side. Tighten it up, let it dry, and then away you go. You won't have to worry about it. But that's the only other, it's the only caveat I'd say. Um, who knows? Maybe they've changed it where they're back to that now. So um, so get some Loctite and put on, on those two nuts. You only need to do it one time, and you're good to go. You will like it, though. It's great. If, if for anything, if for no other reason, that whenever you go to look at a bag of headway or a Celeprin G or, you know, any of the Lebanon uh, turf fertilizers, like there's going to be a calibration on the bag for your spreader. You don't have to do any kind of spreader, any kind of conversions, which is kind of nice. All right. Ben Raham is up next. He says, Hey Ron, thanks for streaming the knowledge as usual. Added a McLean to the fleet yesterday is five too many mowers. We got to clap it up for that. We got to, you got to give you some depth for that. Is five too many mowers i'm not one to judge i mean five seems like a bit i mean i have i have three right so i mean i cannot see a situation where i would need a fourth much less a fifth but um but hey i'm not one to judge i mean i'm i think you you you, you probably have less than um than duane does so you're not you know if we, if we lose duane is the standard of uh bordering on like too much then you're still not there yet. You still got a ways to go. So, I mean, and I guess one way of looking at it is you got you got several backups, right? If one's out for sharpening, you got at least four other mowers that you can cut with, right? But but what you're gonna find, at least I find, is I look at it like I really have, I really have two mowers that I really want to cut with. Like the the true cut, I use it for doing swale the swale area and scalping. If I if I'm, you know, I'm doing that kind of work. But really for cutting and getting the look that I want, really it's the Greens Master or the Allet. So really, even though I have three mowers, I have two that can be used for the purpose of like regular mowing. And then really I only have one that can be used for like for scalping work and like mowing certain areas of the lawn. So if you think about it that way, it's really like, this is like lawn nerd mower math. The three mowers is really two mowers and like a backup sort of, right? If you look at it that way, right? I think you, you, you follow, you're tracking what I'm saying? So it's not really three, it's really like two-ish and change. So, but no, at five, I'm sure you can justify it. <laughs> All right, next up is Kevin D. Jones. He says, spring is around the corner. So smash that like button. Thanks, uh, Kevin, I appreciate you. And then Doug, 350Z Twin Turbo. He says, when you said no game time in Texas, I thought you meant the, <laughs> the Cowboys. Yeah, well, hey, listen, look at the Cowboys. The Cowboys came around. The kicker the kicker made some kicks. I mean, uh, you know, yeah, Dak threw his normal two, at least two picks, right? He he would have had more, but he, he's normally, if you look throughout the season, regular season, he was throwing a lot of picks, and he was consistent, unfortunately. But, um, but they did well. I mean, the Cowboys had a good season. Overall, they had a, they had a good season. And if, you know, if, um, if Dak had a slightly, had a better game, they could have been, they could have, they could have gone all the way, right? They could have, they could have been a contender. Uh, but you know, that's the way football is. All, all it takes is, all it takes is a few bad, a couple, a bad call or a, you know, a bad decision or, you know, in the case of, in the case of Georgia versus Ohio state, a timeout at the right time can make all the difference. Like that, you think about it. That's when Georgia, in my opinion, that's when Georgia won uh, the national championship last year because TCU, we, I mean, I was fairly confident we we're going to beat them, but against Ohio state, when Kirby called that timeout, I think it was like fourth and one and cause Ohio state was going to get that, was going to get that, um, that, that extra year, that, that, uh, that yard. When he called that timeout, that was when the game flipped towards Georgia's uh, favor. So you just never know, man, the ball, the, you know, anything can happen in a, in a game. So, all right. Short grass is up next. He says, is every soil test this time of year, a comeback with NPK very low? No, no, not, not, not all of them come back with very low. Can you do liquid uh, and granular with recommendations from the soil test? Yes, you can. So yeah, so as far as does every soil test this year come back with NPK uh, very low? No, they do not. Um, some some come back with you, maybe with N and K with the nitrogen and the, and the potassium a little bit lower, but the phosphorus fine. Um, some come back with all the levels fine. So it just, it just, it depends. It depends on um, on your soil, on the inputs you did at the latter part of uh, last year, depending on when you, it depends on the last time you fertilized and what's happened in the soil since the last time you fertilized and when you take your next uh, soil sample. So 
the answer to question one is no, they don't all come back the same. And then number two, can you do liquid and granular with the recommendations from the test? Yes, yes you can. I mean, that's actually what I do. I don't do, um, I don't do just only a granular uh, fertilizer and only a liquid fertilizer. So at a, if you're in the Golf Course Lawn Academy, you guys know this, but I can tell you guys really quick what I do and what I'm gonna be doing this year. What I aim for is around seven tenths of a pound of nitrogen um, per month going into my into my lawn, into my soil, right? So you're asking yourself, what does that really mean? So you think Bermuda, Bermuda grass needs or likes about a pound of nitrogen per month whenever the grass is actively growing. If you're using biostimulants, so like Essential G, Release Zero, Biospectrum, if you're using products to help your soil work better to where the nutrients become more available, you meaning you're getting more out of the fertilizer, you can get by with using less fertilizer, which is what I tend to do. So my fertilizer program looks a lot more like this. So for my granular, I use, this year I'll be doing the Stress 12024 to start, this one to start, but then I will be transitioning from that to Humic Max. So this is what I'm gonna be using throughout, throughout the, the most of the year. So if, if, if I had to um, break it out as far as timeline, so like uh, depending on what the temperatures are like, like March, um, the 12 year 24 would go down and then starting April, April, May, June, July, August, and perhaps September, then it would be Humic Max. It'd be this guy, the 1608. So the stress and then the 1608. That's that's how my season starts and ends. So it starts with the stress, then Humic Max throughout the season for the granular, and then it ends with uh, with this one, with the 12, uh, 1208. So it starts with this, this throughout the season, and then it ends with this. Um, now, as far but as far as the rates that I use, right, the rate for Humic Max that I, that I run this at is uh, three pounds per thousand square feet, which doesn't sound like a whole lot. And that three pounds per thousand square feet works out to about a half a pound of nitrogen. So the, so the majority of the nitrogen that I'm putting into my lawn, the heavy lifting comes from this product, comes from the granular, right? But what that does is it leaves me some headroom to be able to use either Turfplex, which is sold out right now, we should have some more next week, but either use something like Turfplex as my, um, to, to help fill in the, the remaining nitrogen that my, my soil needs or release 901C. So last year what I did is I did Humic Max or, and I did um, the carbon kit with the, nine, the 901C kit. So I did, I'll show you here. I did the 901C, which is basically release zero with 9% nitrogen, 1% potassium. Uh, this kelp product, which is, has a bit of everything, 1% um, nitrogen, 1% phosphorus, and then 4% potassium, and then Biospectrum, which is the um, the water-soluble um, uh, microbial package that that I spray. Every time I'm putting liquids on my lawn, like I'm spraying Biospectrum, um, this, this, this goes in the tank. So between, so let me go back here, between um, Humic Max, between that, like the, the half a pound of nitrogen that I'm getting from that, and then the application that I do on the first and the 15th of the liquids, I get to around seven tenths of a pound of nitrogen, which for me works well. And what you find is that um, you're giving the lawn enough nitrogen to where the grass looks great, it grows well, you know, it's not de deficient or anything like that, but you're not giving it so much that the grass grows goes fast, like a, you get like a, a big flush of growth, you avoid disease problems, and frankly, you save money because you're not, you're not putting as much material or as much um, nutrient into the soil. So. Um, the, the, in a nutshell, it is humic max or granular once per month, and then a liquid twice per month on the first. And then again, on the 15th, that is, that is my program. And then if you want to see like at a high level, if you don't want to, um, in the Academy, we have an actual calendar that you can download, but if you go to the blog and then scroll down and go over to page three, the very first post on here is the step-by-step -step guide on how to get a golf course lawn. And at the very, very bottom of that, if you scroll all the way down, there's like a basic application calendar that is, this is, what's in the Academy is based on this, but if you wanna see like what, if you say, if I want to not have to join the Academy and, and get a good plan that, that's gonna create a great result on my lawn, where can I find one? The bottom of this blog has that. Everything from scalping to soil testing to your fungicide applications, your insecticide applications to everything. Like it, it talks about all of that. So if you are so interested, what I will do is I will link that in the chat now for you short grass and uh, then you'll be you'll be good to go you'll have you'll you'll know what I how I recommend doing it it's not the only way to create to create a, to to take care of your lawn but I I like the results that I get with it I'm out there anyway you know for um so going out going out and spraying liquids twice a month is really not a big deal also gives me a chance to 
to spray my uh, my growth regulator because whenever I'm spraying my liquid furt, um, when I'm spraying like um you know 901C, the Nutri Kelp, the Biospectrum, some of this some some uh, some Primo goes in the tank. So it goes in again on the first and the fifteenth at a reduced rate to to help slow down how quickly the grass grows and just you know all the other benefits that you get from um, from growth regulator. So hope that helps. Um, that was a long-winded answer, but I wanted to give you a good answer to your question. So if you have anything else, let me know. All right, let me get down here. Uh, Doug has a question or has a super chat. Let me take that really quick. Thank you so much, Doug. Super chat received. He says, "Ka four mowers. There's one behind you." Okay, okay. This one, this, this does not count. I can't even run. I mean, it's it's, it's technically okay. Fine. You know what? I got four. You're right. You're right, Doug. You're right. I have four mowers. Although I can't. I don't even know this one works. I had never even turned it on. Cause I don't have a battery. I don't even have a battery to run it. So it's a, uh, so yeah, I do, you're right. I do have four, four mowers. You're right. Leave it to you guys to be very pedantic, to be like, you know, technically you got four and there you go. There's the, uh, the, the Alex Sterling uh, mower. So, uh, so yeah. So yeah, but yeah, I, I, I appreciate that. Thanks for the super chat, uh, Doug. And next up, let me see where we dropped off here. Uh, next up, we got Gary Kelly Jr. He says, hey, Ron, I got my flow zone for this Christmas and it's going to be a game changer. Uh, no more combo fertilizer. Yeah, yeah, it's it's nice. Once you get used to using a backpack sprayer, it truly is a game changer. Like, like it opens up products like Primo. It opens up uh, like liquid biosimilants. And frankly, it's a, it's a time saver, right? So if you think about it, can you, there are granular um, growth regulator products. There are granular biosimilant products. There are granular iron products or micronutrient products, but literally when you go to the liquid route, you can mix all of them up and spray them and apply them all at the same time. So as far as being able to play with application rates and also just have a lot more flexibility around what you, you apply, liquids are, uh, are pretty awesome. And, and they're, it's really not hard once you get used to it. It's not, it's not, difficult, uh, not difficult at all. So I highly recommend Flowzone is a great, a great backpack sprayer. We carry the Yard Mastery sprayer. It's a great sprayer, sprayer too, because it can includes all the spray tips you need. That's why I like that one, but um, but yeah, it's a flow zone's a good one, good choice. Next up is Dwayne's world. He says, "Hey Ron, I have not been needing to apply any plant growth regulator to my perennial ryegrass. Must be the cooler temps, and have been able to mow once to twice a week. Cool, very nice. It's amazing how nice perennial ryegrass stripes even in the shade. Yeah, it it does. When you, if stripes are your thing, it's hard to beat ryegrass. Ryegrass stripes like uh, like no other. It's uh, I I totally agree with you on that." If you're, if stripe action is your, um, is the, the, the most important thing to you and you have a cool season lawn or you don't mind overseeding, then, uh, putting some ryegrass into your program makes a whole lot of sense. Gary Freeman is up next. He says, Hey Ron and hashtag stripe action gang. Happy Friday. Glad the rain has dropped, uh, pre-emergent time. It is. Yeah. Sunday for me. That's when I'm doing mine. And then Andrew Phillips says, Hey Ron, I sent you a picture of my lawn with the ice. A lot of water released once it melted. I don't know if I have a picture here. Actually, no, let me go over to this email and see if I can find it. Let us see, let us see. I'm not sure if it showed up. Let me look here. I don't, I'll have to look, I'll have to look between comments, um, uh, Andrew, because I have a lot of, I got one from, um, yeah, actually do, I do have it right here. Good Lord. Goodness gracious, man. You said, you said a little bit of ice. That's not, that's not a little bit of ice, man. Good. Okay. So guys, look, this is what Andrew's working with. Whew. Good Lord. We do not want this. You know, I'm almost afraid to put this up on the live stream because I feel like I'd be drawing it to Georgia. That is goodness gracious. That's, that's not a little bit of ice. That's snow, man. That's like, that's full on. That's a mess is what that is. Goodness gracious, man. Yeah. I, I thought you were talking about like, this is a little bit of ice. You know, you can still see the green through there. That is like snowmageddon. That's oh, that's terrible. Oh, I'm getting chills just even looking at it. That's not. I'm sorry, Andrew. Yeah, yeah. I, I get, I get what you're saying as far as a lot of water getting released into the soil after you, uh, after that, all that melted. Wow, you got it. You got it pretty heavy. All right, Kelby Ruiz says, um, "Long time no talk. I sent you some breathtaking pictures to your email. I'm rebuilding my dad's old McLean." Today, we got it back from the painters. Yeah, so this is some, real cool, some cool pictures here, guys. So this is a Kelby's uh, mower. Let me show you here really quick. This is what it looked like. You can see it's a McLean. And it's it's seen some better days. It's been it's been roughed up a little bit, but it looks, you know, it looks still fairly solid. A little bit of rust on it. And it's getting a hot, it's getting hot rotted here. Take a look here what they're doing. You can see they got the parts all painted up. Looking sweet, the the cogs and everything got a nice green going on. Looks sweet, man. That's gonna look awesome once it's back together. So 
Yeah, you got to send me a picture of it once it's fully reassembled, uh, Kelby. Nice, nice restoration project. I like it. Nice stuff. It look, looks really, it looks coming together really nicely. The painter did a good job. Mike Harvey is up next. He says, uh, hey, Ron, you're in the similar area as me. With all the rain we uh, have been getting, how long do we need to wait for, for the ground to dry before you put down granular prodiamine? You could do it tomorrow if you wanted to. Like it, again, if you are my neighbor, and in my case, it stopped raining in uh, Thursday. Like yesterday, it stopped raining. This morning we woke up, there's no rain, and there, it's been dry all day. It's going to be out dry tomorrow. If you want to be, if you want to wait till Sunday, you can, but you could apply your granular prodiamine tomorrow. There's no, um, there's no problem with doing that uh, at all, Mike. I'm going to be doing my pre-emergent on Sunday. Um, I thought about doing it tomorrow, but Sunday is going to work, I think, a little bit better uh, for that because if I if I decide to live stream it, which I that's the plan, I'm planning to live stream it, um, then Sunday is a better um, a better option because I can do it earlier in the in the day. All right, next up is Robert Rainey. He says, how crazy uh, is it that I already have top dress material on order? I mean, it's I mean, cr crazy, is it? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy. Is uh, I'll have, I'll, I will have to sit tarped up until a few months, but I did get a small discount on it. Cool. No, I mean, it's not crazy. If you have, a way, if you have somewhere to put it, why not save some money? and um and you know get going i mean that that discount that they are running right now is is a fairly nice discount like it's 30 bucks off and if you use my discount code an additional five bucks off so 35 dollars off the regular price um so yeah i mean if you know you're gonna top dress and you have and again you have a place to put it and you know your your wife or significant others are going to kill you for having like you know a bag of product sitting on the driveway where you or wherever you are storing it then yeah then by all means why not save some money and just and the thing is too like you have more control than over when you do it right robert because if you if you wait until april may and you say you know what this weekend would be really good i'm gonna try and get an order in this week they may not be able to get it to you within your time frame but if you get it early you got your stuff you're good to go you know you don't you're not fighting along with everyone else so there's a there's definitely something to be said for getting your your top dressing mix uh early I, I I totally get it, and you, and for if for nothing else, you save some money, right? So there is that. All right, um, uh, Kevin D. Jones at Blaze, um, welcome um, SGM, and I hope we have no snakes uh, lurking at you this year. I don't know the story of that one. He got chased by some snakes, uh, blades of grass. I didn't. Wow, I got I got I got find a look on the channel. I'll have to look at your channel and see if there's a uh, there's a there's a I got chased by snakes episode. I can see it happening. I mean, if you cut lawns long enough, you're eventually going to encounter some some not so friendly uh, some not so friendly wildlife, right? Our Rio the Hitman is up next. He says, "Sup, Ron? Have you ever thought about doing more landscape type stuff like perennials, annual flowers?" Not here's it's too much for me. It's too much work, and I don't enjoy. It's not just too much work. I don't enjoy doing it. That's the big thing, right? I enjoy mowing my grass. I enjoy top dressing. I enjoy like you know edging. I don't really like like doing that that much. But I enjoy the way it looks. But if you have you know like a flower bed or um, other other um, ornamentals, then you got to trim them and shape them, and it's just it's a it's a lot of work, and I I don't enjoy doing that because I'll tell you this: if there were a way to trim ornamentals and not have to spend a bunch of time afterwards cleaning up i mean yeah i know you can put tarps down if you didn't have to do all that then i'd be more inclined to do it but since you have to at least at a minimum put tarps out and then you have to collect all the debris and it's just it's just a kind of a headache and i don't really enjoy it like i don't i don't like the look of that as much as i like the look of like grass you know hence why i have a lawn with no trees and just grass you know so uh maybe one day maybe one day but not this year maybe not this year I can, that that I can say with confidence. This year, I will not plant a bunch of ornamentals in uh, in the lawn. All right. Next is um, who that there says, Ron. Do you see any issue with mixing my pre-emergent with my fire ant granules? Um. So your granular pre-emergent with your fire ant granules. Uh, I don't know that I would do that because the application rate for them is going to be different. Like I, I I highly doubt that the spreader setting for your granule for your ant your um ant bait or your ant poison is going to be the same as it is for your prodiamine and let's say let's just let's just say um hypothetically it was right so let's say you hypothetically they're the exact same spreader setting you're and let's say you have a 50 50 mix you're essentially applying the prodiamine at like half the rate right because if you think about it like for like physics, like that you can't have like the only one granule can pass through, only only one granule can 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 pass through or occupy that space is passing through at one time. So 
Um, if you are assuming that they tick the same spreader settings and you're mixing them in equal amounts, like you would have to make two passes over the lawn to put down the same amount of prodiamine that you would if you did not have this other product and they're competing for output. You know what I mean? So if it were me, because it's also one, it's unlikely that both of them have the same spreader setting. I would just do a pass and do your prodiamine and then do another pass and do your fire ant bait. That's, that is what I would do. I would not try and mix them together. I would do one and then the other. So, uh, so yeah, that is, that is how I would go about it. And you might want to be careful. So you might want to check because some of the granules, like I know Advion, like you don't want that to get wet right after um, applying it. Ideally, if you, for Advion fire ant bait, you want to, you want to apply that and then have a couple of days of dry weather. So the way you really want to do this is you do your prodiamine one day, like say you could do your prodiamine tomorrow, water it in, and then the following day, so say Sunday, then you do your ant bait, assuming if you, I mean, again, I don't know what kind you're using, but if you were using Advion, I would tell you, one, that the, you can't mix them together because the, the, the granule size is very different. But um, but you should do the prodiamine first, water it in, let the next day come when it's a dry day, put your, your ant bait down and let that just sit around and, and you know, um, attract the ants and, and, and kill them off. Because Advion, you're not supposed to water it in right after application. And I think that's, that's, prob that's likely true for a lot of fire ant baits, but yours might be different, so. Read the label for both, um, and uh, and then and apply accordingly. But no, I would not. Um, I would not mix them. So, and hopefully my explanation makes sense as to why you really don't want to. You really don't want to do that. That's a good example of why liquids are cool, right? Because if you had like a fire, let's say you had like a liquid product, a liquid ant product, and um, like actually like uh, where is it? Do I have it here? I think I do. Like the um, yeah, like this, right? So take like the Miramichi Green Pest Control. So this, is a per this is a perfect segue of why, about why liquids are awesome and why you should get a backpack sprayer. So what, whereas this is a liquid and you can mix this along with say liquid prodiamine and you can spray this along with liquid prodiamine. And as far as ensuring application rate, all you have to do is make sure you say, hey, I have a four gallon backpack sprayer. I'm gonna be spraying that four gallons of mix over 4,000 square feet. You simply work out the rate says, okay, so for 4,000 square feet, um, that would be, uh, let's say this is eight ounces. We're doing a maintenance rate. So we say so eight ounces um, per thousand. So um, uh, 32 ounces. So you use 32 ounces of this along with whatever rate you're applying your prodiamine at. You put that all in the tank, mix it all up, and then you go and you spray it, and that will work well together, right? Because now you have two you have two products that can um, that can get that one are both soil based. that can get in the soil to work. And you are you have control over the rates because you're mixing the products independently. The 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 the, the, the dilution rate um, of, the, of each of them is set independently because you're using liquids. So that's that's a that's a perfect example where if you want to do both at the same time, liquids are better than granular. And if you want something to do what you're talking about, like this, the Miramichi Green Pest Control, non toxic by the way, this and um, your pre emergent like prodiamine, you could do that at the same time. So hope that helps. If you have any other questions, let me know. Great, uh, it's a great question. All right, next up we got um, SL Jones saying, greetings, Ron, I live in Chicago. Yesterday it was 39 degrees, now it's 10, <laughs> is it 10? Like one oh, uh, 10, 10 degrees today. With that being said, next week we're expecting low 30s to 40s. When should I do my pre-emergent? It's, it's likely still a little bit early for you, SL Jones. If you wanna give it closer to the to um, the end of February, that's that's likely gonna be just fine. Because what you want is you wanna get the pre-emergent down before average, the average of your soil temperatures are approaching the, the mid 50s, right? So if you, you know, you have, um, you know, there's no like snow in the forecast um, for the immediate future and, you, and you're saying, hey, you know, the next, over the next, the next 10 day forecast, you know, temps are gonna be in the 50s and 60s. And you know, that means your, your soil temps are gonna be in or entering that Goldilocks zone for, for weeds to start germinating. That's when you can go out and put out your pre-emergent. So um, I, I would not do it at the same time that we're doing ours down here in the Southeast. You're gonna be closer towards that end of uh, February timeframe. That's that's what I would I would uh, I would guess. But check the weather. The weather the weather is the uh, the driver as far as um, you know what um, or soil temperatures are the driver as far as when you when you want to get your pre-emergent down. Good stuff. All right. Next up is Anna Laura. Um, it says, "Hi, this is Nancy. Is it a good time to use Spectacle Flow, and also how much per gallon?" I'm in Dallas, Texas. Yeah. So Spectacle Flow, primary, more so in the in the fall, it's a better option, Anna, than the springtime. Spectacle is a great pre-emergent. It's an excellent pre-emergent. 
but um, if you use it this time of year, it can slow down how quickly your grass comes out of dormancy. It's not gonna hurt it, but it'll, it, it can slow down, green up a little bit if you use it this time of year. So that's why in the fall is when you, you tend to see people using spectacle more so because the grass is already going, like it's going, it's trending away from being green towards being dormant. So for, um, if that's all you got and you wanna use it, you can but I would um, lean more towards prodiamine or dithiapir for the springtime and then save your spectacle uh, for the fall. As far as application rate, um, for Bermuda, there are, so what I do is I use, I use an empty one of these bottles and I, I, I don't have the rate off the top of my head. It's, it's like point, like the low end for, the low end for Bermuda, it's like, 0.10 is the low, the lower end of the application rate. And then it's like 0.18 ounces or like closer to 0.2 is the higher end. So if you had an empty Primo bottle and you put spectacle in it, which is what I did last year, like the low end per thousand square feet, if I can get this to focus, if you had one of these empty, right? Like that much 0 0.10 mixed with a gallon of water over a thousand square feet is gonna get you a good result. That's what I did on my lawn last year on Alex's lawn had an excellent result. You guys can you guys can see the pictures of the, the, the video. The lawn's weed free. There's no POA um, in sight whatsoever. You can go a little bit heavier than that. You can go just below 0 0.2 um, and you're still within limits. But again, if you can if you can get a good result, but staying more towards the um, lower end, why not? Right. But yeah, to answer your question, you can, I don't, because it can slow down green up. Prodiamine or dithiapir, in my opinion, are, are a better option for uh, for the springtime. So um, look into uh, into one of those. And those, those are pretty easy to come by. Thanks for the question. And I think you're new to the channel. If you're new to the channel or the live stream, it's the first time I remember seeing your name or recall seeing your name in the chat. So if it's your first time, welcome. I always like to see new people chime in and say uh, hello, which is really cool. So uh, hopefully that was uh, that was helpful for you. And then Rio, the hitman says, hit that like button, bros. Yeah, definitely. If you guys are enjoying the show and getting some value out of this, or at a minimum, it's entertaining, hit that like button. It doesn't cost anything. It's free way to support the channel. Hit the like button. I'm going to drink some of my lemonade here. I'm going to check out, see here. I'll, put some, I'll, put, I'll even put some music on for you guys. How about that? How about that? I'll even I'll put some 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 jams on I while I check and see I if the guys dollars. here and gals in Instagram have any comments. In a few less problems. Get them all into college. Maybe we could travel the world to see stars and comments. Think I want to meet your mama. I don't have a nine to five, but I'm going to find some All right, commas. so Off-Road NV says, lower your mo. Charlie at Char uh, Charlie Farley, great song. Okay. All right. Well, I, uh, I I hear you there. I hear you there. Um, um, Offroad envy. So thanks so much for the uh, for the likes, guys. Appreciate that. And then uh, next up, you got. Um, let's see what else here. Uh, we got sidebar sidebar chats. And then you got uh, next question is Rodney Bradley the second, not the first, but the second. He says. I have a 5,000 square feet of Bermuda on a nice slope in the front yard in Liburn. I have 50 pounds of, of a pre-emergent, 007 um, pre-emergent from Home Depot. Am I making a mistake using this product? No, no, not, you know you're not. I mean, it's, I don't know what the active ingredient in it is, um, but a, a common formulation for pre-emergent Rodney is, um, you'll have like, like, I'll show you, the one that we carry is, uh, is a, it's a 007 in, um, with dithiapir or prodiamine as the uh, active ingredient. So if you go here and you look at pre-emergent, you'll see like dithiapir in a 007 and then prodiamine also in a 007. So yeah, I don't know what the active ingredient is in what you your product is, but look, just look at the label. Look at the label, it'll be, it'll likely be one of those two, prodiamine or dithiapir, it might be something else, but um, but yeah, no, there's no, if you already have it, use it, why not? You already got it, just put it down, just find out, for, be sure you look at what the label calls for as far as application rates, it's like spreader settings, and then uh, yeah, go to town, water it in, and you're good to go. You're not, you're not gonna be making a mistake uh, with using it. Just make sure you apply it at the correct, per the label, at the correct rates. And that's the only mistake you'd really make. All right, uh, next up is C. Hill. He says, uh, pre-emergent and then 12 0 stress blend, check. When you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. <laughs> I like it. I dig it, Sea Hill. I'm glad you're all set. You got your you got your fertilizer to start off the season, which is good. You're good to go. You don't have to worry about you know any kind of mad rush in next month whenever people start um, you know buying your product. You're already you're already good to go on on your lawn. 
All right, next up is Randall Lard. He says, good evening, Ron. Taking soil samples tomorrow and getting mailed out. Coworkers have been asking about where to get soil tests and I've, I've directed to the golf course lawn store. I appreciate that, Randall. Definitely, I appreciate the kind words and support. Uh, you know, nothing nothing like word of mouth to uh, to help out. So yeah, if you guys, that's one thing to, also, guys, um, if you guys enjoy the, um, if you guys like the store, if there's things I could be doing to make it better, let me know that. If you find things that are broken or things that about just the way the you know, products are listed or the way the, the, it, the as far as like finding things or there's, there's suggestions you have, feel free to let me know, man. I mean, again, I want to make it easy for you guys to use and for you to get what you're looking for, um, you know, as, as much as possible. So, but if you're enjoying it and you like, also like the product, also leave a review. It really helps out. Believe it or not, reviews are really, are really, really big on online. So if you can, uh, if you can leave a review, I'd really appreciate that too for anything you've gotten and have gotten good results with. So, uh, so yeah. And tell, tell a friend, tell a friend, tell 10. You know, it, it always word of mouth definitely helps a lot. So, I'm glad that uh, that you're uh, you're you're spreading the uh, the word, Randall. Thank you for the support. I really do appreciate it. All right, next up we got a super chat from Mr. Ben Raham. Let's do this real quick. Super chat received. He says, Ben Raham, me at the grocery store. Uh, 99 cents for green beans. Uh, the 89 store brand is fine. Also me. Uh, the 12 K outlet makes perfect sense, even though I have five mores already. How can you not see the justification? Wife looks at, uh, diesel, the diesel dually. Um, I guess if you look at it that way, it makes sense, right? So if you look, if you, if you look, take the approach of there are more expensive things that I could be buying other than a mower, then in that case, your logic makes sense. And as far as the uh, the you know spending eighty nine cents for green beans versus spending a lot of money on your mower, I that I totally get because not everybody not in other words, what is important to you is not necessarily. I don't know if, I'm trying to say this. I'm trying to think of how the best way to say this. Not not everybody values all things equally, right? Like some people are really into clothing and they'll spend a lot of money on clothes and getting clothes made and they just like, they love the clothing and some people could care less about the clothes, the clothing that they wear. Some people are really into their mowers and you know, as far as beans, like, I mean, why do I need to get like the name brand can of beans for $1.50 when I can get the store brand for like, you know, a dollar for 99 cents? It's probably made in the same place anyway, right? So I get it. You like what you like and I will, um, I, I have no complaints. I see no issue uh, with that at all. It's, it's your money. You should spend it the way you want on what you want and enjoy it. Right. So, so yeah. So yeah, at least you're not, you're not, um, you're not Dwayne, right? You're not on that five more life or you, or well, you're at five. You're not, I think Dwayne is past five. I'm pretty sure Dwayne is past five. I think he still got you beat, but I'm not, I'm not saying you should try to beat him, but I'm just saying you're not, you are not the worst. You're not the worst offender as far as mower itis. Uh, ben, thank you so much for the super chat though. I really do appreciate the support. All right, next up is, let me see here, Willie Robinson. He says, uh, he says, hey, my name is Willie Robinson. I live in Columbia, South Carolina. My Bermuda grass will be a year old in this April. Should I wait to do pre-emergent? No, I would not. I would do pre-emergent, I would do pre-emergent uh, now, actually. No, if it's, especially if it's a year old, I would, uh, I would get your pre-emergent down. Absolutely get your pre-emergent down, uh, Willie. If you don't do pre-emergent, you're going to be dealing with weeds in your lawn throughout the spring and summer months. And pre-emergent is a lot less expensive. I mean, you look at like a bag of um, prodiamine or dithiapyr, it's just like, what, it's like 70 bucks delivered to your door, right? If you go out and you have to, and that was that will prevent a lot of problems with comp, with a, a lot of the weeds you're going to be fighting in your lawn, like crabgrass, spurge, a lot of broadleaves. It's, it's either one of those products is going to do a great job with that. If you don't do that, then you're going to be having to get depending on which weed grows through, different types of post-emergent herbicides, which historically are more expensive than pre-emergent to have to take care of them. So yes, to answer your question, year old Bermuda, you absolutely can put can do pre-emergent on it. When my lawn was three months old, it got pre-emergent. Like my lawn was um, sodded in December and it got pre-emergent the following March. It got pre-emergent like like three months after it was um, it was sodded and it, did, it grew in just fine, it did great. Uh, for cool season grass, I wouldn't, for cool season grass, uh, they, they, you know, the general wisdom is you want to wait an entire year, but for Bermuda, it's, um, you know, six months, three, six, uh, six months is if you're really trying to be conservative a year, you're absolutely fine to go ahead and do pre-emergent. Just make sure you apply it properly at the correct rates, water it in and, and you're good to go. And yes, I, I, I personally would do that. I would get pre-emergent down. So you're not fighting weeds, uh, this spring and summer. All right, Greg, uh, Lion, let us take a sidebar with you and um, you and uh, Eric. So let me find the next comment here. One from Derek uh, Wright. All right, he says, 
Ron, this summer I had to kill my Arden fifth. This past summer, I had to kill my Arden fifteen due to different types of Bermuda coming up, and I killed off on killed it all off on August fifteenth. Uh, by late August, I replanted Yukon, and it grew in almost seventy percent. From I don't see the rest of it. Um, yeah, sorry, and seventy percent. Then it went dormant on August first. Oklahoma, you told me to keep you posted. Um, Yukon lasts longer in the transition zone. Nice, yeah, that's cool. That's yeah, that's awesome, man. So so you so you seeded you seeded um Yukon in when did you say you did it? In August, which is you know, traditionally that's that's late in the season to be seeding Bermuda. You want to do it a little bit earlier. So you did it, you got 70% um growing, which is really nice. It went dormant, and then yeah, so you, now we I want to see how it comes out. Like in the springtime, I want to see when it transitions out of dormancy, how it uh how it does. You're saying August 27th to October in Oklahoma. Yukon does much better in the transition zone. It has good cold tolerance, and we had a cold September. Very cool. Yeah, man. Keep me posted. Keep me posted. That's that's interesting to find out because I know in Bermuda, traditionally, you'd want to seed it earlier in the season. You did yours later, and it looks like you're getting a great result. So, yeah, I want, I'd like to hear about once um, you guys aren't dealing with freezing temperatures and freezing rain, how it wakes up um, this, uh, this spring and how it grows in. Very nice. Very cool, man. Very, very nice stuff. Thanks for letting me know. Uh, Vahid Navi is up next. He says, Hi, Ron. Can I fertilize my lawn in the early spring with a 12-4-N um, NPK liquid instead of granular uh, for nutrients? Uh, yeah, yeah. You could use you can use liquids if you want. If you want to go, you don't have to go, you don't have to go with granular. Um, if you want to go with a liquid like a 12 4 8 Again, assuming that's what your soil needs, yeah, that's, there's no problem with that. I mean, read the label and make sure you're applying it based on the application rates that are specified in the label. But yeah, you could absolutely do that. What you, what you may find though is you're, you may have to do a couple of applica a, a couple of applications per month. It depends on the product. Depends on, on what kind of nitrogen is in it, right? If it's a quick release um, at 12%. You're you're likely going to have to do more than one app a month, like one maybe one on the first, another one on the fifteenth. But it, again, it depends. It depends on on the type of nitrogen that's in the product and what the label label calls for. But like at a, at a high level, no, there's nothing wrong with using that product to to feed your lawn instead of granular, um, if that's what you want to do. So good stuff. Uh, and the other question you said uh, here in Canada, it's not as easy to find the good stuff for lawn. Yeah. It is. You guys, you guys have a lot of a lot of really um, a lot of really strict laws around around that, unfortunately. But I mean, if, yeah, I mean, go, you know, use what you got. If that's what you can get, roll with that. You know, once you are are feeding the lawn, like the appearance is going to come from regular mowing. You know, so if you can get out there and you can mow it twice a week, that's going to make a big. That's going to you know be the the biggest driver as far from an appearance standpoint how it looks once you get your fertilization all worked out. You know what I mean? So good stuff. Um, you know, again, you can only, you can only do what you can only do, right? I mean, if you can't, you can't get the stuff that we get down here, you know, such as life, just go with what you can, uh, you know, make the best out of what you can, what you can do. I mean, look at in the UK, they can't get access to a lot of the products we have and they, they have some pretty nice lawns over there. So, you know, just, just uh, be creative and the stuff that you can do, do as well as you can, as you can, and you'll, you'll have a good result. All right. Next up is, um, that Texas boy says, Hey, Ron and everybody. You probably mentioned it weeks ago, but that merch store is a limited time thing. No, it's not. The, the merch store is a is a common thing. Actually, in the live stream now, there's like a there should be a couple of products available. Like I can put the hat up. You want to see the hat? There's the hat that's available. You guys can check out. Like there's official uh, Ron Henry hat if you want that. Um, but yeah, there's um I'll, I'll put the link to the um to the actual to, to the official merch store here in the chats. Let me see here. I've got that here in my notes, so I can just copy and paste it. Uh, if I can find it, there we go, right here. So this is the this is where you can find all of the official merch at that Texas boy right there. That's the um, that is the merch store. So if you're interested, you can get hoodies, beanies. Um, sweatshirts, t-shirts, um, a bit of everything there. So I'm gonna put the link back here to the store. Um, but, uh, outside of that, yeah, but yeah, no, the store, the, 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 to answer your question, the merch store is not a one-time thing. It is a constant thing. It's always, it's always up. You can always go there and, uh, and get, and get your swag. And then this is the link for the golf course launcher. I'll repin that. So for anyone that's looking for, um, you know, for looking for 
their sole test kits or, and whatnot. So this is going to replace the uh, the hat. All right, so let me remove this pin first. So it's going away, and then the store is back there. Cool. All right, so our next question comment is from Mr. Made in the 80s, says, got me three bags of the new 444. Can't wait to try it out. Yeah, guys, so what he's referring to, Mr. Made in the 80s, is um, Miramichi Green, the Mad Science and Miramichi Green are back at it again. Let me show you what he's talking about. So Miramichi has now um, is offering a organic fertilizer option. So some people want to go straight organic. They want, you know, they want to use an organic, uh, only organic products in their lawn. Um, they, they also want to be able to, to, you know, use it on food, pro on, a, on like a, their gardens and just, you know, where they're going to be eating eating the um, the produce. So if you go to the Golf Horse Lawn Store and go to Miramichi Green Biosimilants, there's now a new option. This is their 444. This is gonna be dropping. It's available for pre-order now. This is, uh, the, the, they told me the, the expected ship date is February 28th, but I expect to get it before then. It's, it's, it's gonna be in stock uh, before the end of this month if uh, if all goes to plan. Kind of like with um, with Humic Max. I told you guys it was gonna be till mid-February and then it was available like a week later. This is gonna be a bit longer. It'll likely be the second to third week of February. Again, if everything goes to plan. But the cool thing about this is you can think of like this, um, the, the, the new organic offering they have is if you take Biospec, if you, if you take um, um, Essential G, and you take a organic fertilizer and also a bit of biospectrum and mix them all together, that's what you get with this. I mean, this, you've got, um, obviously you've got um, some nitrogen, some phosphorus or potassium. It's got a little bit of iron in it. It's got a microbial package in it. Um, it's it's a it's a ver it's got some humate. It's a very good fertilizer for someone that is looking for an organic option. It's slow release, you're not gonna burn your lawn. It's a, it's a, it's a really good option. The, the thing about it I'd say though, um, is it's going to be more expensive for like from a standpoint of um, the primary way you feed your lawn, like it's it, it as far as coverage, it doesn't cover as much as um, like for example, um, Humic Max or the Complete or the Stress. Not it's not even close as far as as far as coverage. But for people that again want an organic product or you want something again for your gardens, your tomatoes, or just stuff you're going to be eating, um, and you want uh, a, again a biostimulant and a fertilizer, and if you're putting on your grass a bit of iron as well, like this is an all-in-one product that's uh, that I think is going to be really well received. So it's available for pre-order now. Um, again, if you go to the store, it's under. Uh, Miramichi Green, and so you get a shop, and then Miramichi Green, and it's going to be like right there. So yeah, again, it'll be shipping the later on this month. But yeah, that's a, that's a new offering that that um that they uh, they have. But here's the thing: you have no idea how hard it was to do that. Like that. Also, in addition, like the the product is truly organic. Like it's got it's OMRI certified. So if any of you guys that are really into organics, you know that means something. They have to go through this really long process of um you, know, you got to pay a bunch of money and go through this big process of it being tested a bunch of different ways before you get this this stamp saying yes this is OMRI certified so the the plan was to bring this and make it available last year but the certification process took longer than we expected and then by the time you, um it, it was finished it was towards the end of the season so it's like eh, just wait till like 2023 uh to launch it and there you are so now if you want a purely organic option there is that um so you guys are Fully covered. You're covered up in fertilizer. You got, you know, the eleven under turf fertilizers, the ones that, I, that primarily I use on my lawn. Again, like the the Humic Max, the Stress, and the Complete. And if you want something pretty organic, you are now covered with uh, with Miramichi Green's new offering. So, good stuff. Fun times, man. Fun times in 2023. I told you it was going to be a good year, guys. Last year I didn't come through in a lot of stuff. I was, I, kept, I was trying to bring this last year, but it didn't work out. But uh, hey, good things come to those who wait. All right. Next up is Michael Carroll. He says, "Hey, Ron, I'm up here in Martha's Vineyard." I real mow my turf type tall fescue with an Allet 20H Kensington up at about an inch and a half. Should I use the Essential G once a month during the growing season? Thanks a bunch. Yes, so the, the rule with Essential G, what he's talking about guys, is this product. This is a granular biosimilant. This is the one that I use on my lawn every month. This is what I use regularly on my lawn. Pretty much every ever since, I'm trying to think when I switched from Carbon Pro G. It was, the, it was July of 2021. So yeah, the summer of 2021, when I started using Essential G, I went to that and I have not, I haven't looked back. So the, the general rule as far as when you can apply this, as long as the ground isn't frozen, you can apply this year round. So even, I got the comment, the, the question often enough that I just, I added it to the bullets here now saying that, you know, you can, you can, um, you can spread it year round as long as the ground isn't frozen and one bag covers 4,000 square feet. You can, again, if you're in a case where you're still mowing, you're mowing, Michael, Absolutely. Get some essential G that um, is being bagged as we speak, um, and I expect it. You know, the ship date for that um, is set for February twenty fourth. But I again anticipate having that back in stock 
uh, before then. Because again, it's literally being bagged. Uh, it's literally being bagged now. So, so yeah, great product. Can't wait to uh, to to be able to start shipping it out to you guys. So yeah, you can use that once a month during the growing season. Yes, but really year round as long as the ground isn't frozen. That's that is the rule when it comes to Essential G. Next up is Charity three ninety two. He says. I've always used Humachar Char and Pre-Emergent. What should I get to the golf course lawn store? So if you, it depends on what you're trying to do. If you want to, if you want to change, go away from Humachar, Char, then Essential G, like this is a good option. Like this replaces Humachar. Like this has got um, what Humachar Char has in it and, and, and more. So if you look, can I pull this up? So where is Humachar Char is, if I recall correctly, it's um, compost and biochar. It's, there's two major ingredients in it, right? This is compost, bi so you can see here, I don't know why I'm pulling up the label. It's uh, compost, coffee grounds, biochar, humate, and silicon. So pretty much everything that's in humachar is in this and then some. So you, again, you can think of like humachar and, um, and Carbon Pro G, like those are two products that I think are, not I think they are more closely matched. It's a better comparison. So Humachar and Carbon Pro G, those two products I think are a better comparison. Essential G is like the next generation. This is the new, this is the new formulation that Miramichi um, Green came out with um, after uh, Carbon Pro G. And in my opinion, it's a more complete solution, a more complete biosimilant um, product than, than Humachar. Uh, if you already have, um, as far as pre-emergent, if you already have that, use it. If you don't have it, we carry that on the golf course lawn store as well. So Essential G, I say, yes, get that. And then as far as pre-emergent, you can get that under the weed killer section. Just go to there and select pre-emergent. So once you go to weed killers, scroll down to the pre-emergent filter. And then all the pre-emergents we carry, dithiopyr, prodiamine in both granulars, and then prodiamine in liquids, depending on the size of the property that you're dealing with. And you're good to go. So we got you... Uh, Got you fully covered on both fronts, depending on, on what you're trying to do. Appreciate the question and support, Charity. Let me check here really quick and see if um, uh, anyone is here in the gram. Petunias, 444. What's going on, Petunias? Say, hey, what's going on? You see, I like the shirt. Yeah, I really like this. It's my uh, it's one of my favorite shirts. It was a gift from a viewer. You guys remember Josh Habib? Josh uh, is who got this shirt. He gifted this shirt to me. So yeah, it's cool. It's a cool shirt. I really like it. It's a uh, it's got the stripe action on it, and it's got the, I can do this for you guys to actually see, it's stripe action, you know, my, my thing, and then the Greens Master uh, 1600 that he had put on there as well for me. So yeah, really like it. Uh, hopefully you are doing well. Yeah, and the 444 ratio is good. You got a bit of, you got a bit of everything, you know, you're fully covered. So you can think of it as a complete organic fertilizer. That's what it is, right? Got a bit of everything. All right, Archie Amos is up next. He says, evening, young man. Great show. Thank you, Archie. I appreciate it. Uh, I purchased a Sun Joe Verticutter slash rake with two four volt batteries. Um, which one should be done first, rake or verticut? Okay, so I would say you're going to be doing the raking more often than you're going to be doing the verticutting. So here's how you could do it, Archie. I believe you're in South Carolina, so let's say you're going to be doing you're going to scalp your lawn this year. Well, after you do your scalp. You can use the turf rake to help with the cleanup. It's going to be really good for getting that debris, a lot of that debris that's left back from scalping out of the lawn. And then verticutting, if you want to further thin out the lawn, let's say you scalp and you say, hey, I want it to be a little bit thinner, you can verticut it. But realistically, you can also save verticutting until the end of May. The first time I'd say when, when, when it's a, like, now this is the time, if you're going to verticut your lawn, this, this would be the time to do it, um, the end of May. Because what, what happens is if you're, if you're feeding your lawn um, properly and you're more importantly you're mowing it regularly right so you're mowing it every every um a couple times a week it's going to start thickening up it's gonna get really thick and get like really dense like a carpet which looks really nice but what can happen is if you don't thin the lawn out and i'm answering this if you have like bermuda or zoysia if you don't thin it out a little bit what will happen is it, you'll start having cutting issues meaning in areas where you did not have scalping in april and through much of may if you go like into like like June time frame, and definitely by the end of June, if you've never verticut it, you're gonna start getting scalping and cutting problems in places you did not before because the lawn is just so thick. You know what I mean? So it, it is it is beneficial to thin it out uh, occasionally. I, now that I have the outlet, I like to do it once a month. So for me, I will verticut in um, the end of May, the end of June, the end of uh, July. So I'll just do it once a month. Uh, you can look at the lawn and see what see it, it'll tell you like what it needs. But once a month for verticutting. Is um is is typically pretty good. Turf raking 
assume again, this is the key word, assuming you don't set it up aggressively, right? I mean, you're not, assuming you're not out there like 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 tearing at the dirt, like it's set up relatively um, non-aggressively to where you're just you're kind of tickling the soil, you can you could turf rake a lot more frequently. You could do it every time before every time you mow if you wanted. I mean that would take a lot of time, but you could at a minimum I'd say a, a weekly, right? So once you've got the lawn cleaned out, you're into the season, the grass is growing, you're loving life, the neighbors are hating on you because your lawn looks so awesome. If you can find the time to turf rake once per week and then just to keep up with your mowing, you're going to have a great looking lawn. You're going to have a really, really awesome looking lawn. And then do your verticutting once a month and you're going to be you're going to be good to go. It's going to be tough to beat that. I mean, it's more work, granted, than just mowing, but it's going to make a huge difference. I mean, again, I, I like to show this over and over, but like if you look at, you guys have been that have been following the channel for a while, you know what my lawn normally looks like when it's dormant. There has never been a time in years past that this time of year, it has looked like that. And it is, it is what you're seeing there, the stripe, the definition in stripe action, that is that is 100% due to um, to turf raking, to turf raking, because what it does is it encourages the, because Bermuda, it's, I mean, in Northern climates, they call it a weed, right? It's like a weed, it wants to grow everywhere. It wants to grow in all different directions. With turf raking, what you're trying to do is you're encouraging the grass to grow in the direction that you want, which produces, like, the stripe action is, in, is insane. It's incredible stripes that it produces, right? So if it looks like that now, imagine once it greens up how it's gonna look, right? So that's, those are the benefits to turf raking in addition to managing thatch levels in your lawn. Um, but yeah, it's a long-winded answer to your question, but pretty much I'd say, uh, to start the season, if I, to recap, you're going to scalp, turf rake to do the cleanup work. You can save the, the verticutting until the end of May and do it monthly until August time frame. And then uh, turf raking throughout the, the primary part of the growing season once per week if you have time. That's, that is what I would do. Congrats. I got to give you a, a dap, man. I got to give, give you congrats on the new equipment. Good stuff. All right, and you're, and by the way, Archie, your the the stuff that you ordered will be shipping out on will ship on Monday, just like we requested. Um, I was able to get that. Um, we were able to hold it, so it's gonna it should be on its way to you by on Monday. So good stuff. All right, next up is Alice Shilby. She says greetings from Arkansas. Uh, can always uh, I always can't wait till the Fridays when you go live. Do you know where I can get Celsius? Do my own is out of stock, and Amazon says I need to change um, uh, your location. Um, yeah, so uh, we carry we carry Celsius. Uh, if you go to the golf course lawn store, you should be able to find it there. Like I'll show you here really quick. Um, let's go here. So, uh, so, uh, Alice Shelby, you go to, let um, me reset the filter. So just go to, um, to shop and then weed killer and then, uh, Celsius right there. So we carry it. You've got it right there. Celsius certainty. We have a kit as well that has all of them. It has, it has Celsius certainty, a marker down surfactant, so you can find it. Uh, you can find it there. So, hope that helps. All right. Uh, next up is Michael Carroll. He says, "Let me see. I've already got that question. Already answered Michael's question around mowing in Martha's Vineyard and Essential G." And he says, um, no name says, another PSA, measure your lawn so you use the right amount of product, get the best results possible. Yeah, that's a, that's another one too. There are tools online. I think there's a website. Um, there's a couple different websites, a couple different app, um, websites and apps you can use for it. But there's like a website, Measure My Lawn. There's also like Google has a, um, like their map, there's a, there's, a, there's a tool that's built using Google Maps that you can use to, to draw waypoints on your lawn. It'll tell you how large your lawn is. That's a good thing to do. Like you, the thing is measuring your lawn, you only have to do it one time. And then it allows you to do a better job planning your applications. Because if you, you know, if you wanna know how much product I need to mix up or I need to use on this particular area, it's, it's kind of difficult to know that you're applying it properly unless you know how big the area is. And then, you know, by extension, how much product should be going on that area. You know what I mean? So, uh, so yeah, that's a good um, PSA uh, no name. Uh, measuring your lawn, again, only have to do it once. And it's a, um, it is a good thing. It is a good thing to do. So saying hi to some other folks here in, uh, in the chat. Next up is Demir. He says, a little late tonight. He says, but what's up, Ron? What's going on, Devin? Looks like you, I see you out there like uh, vacationing and stuff, man, living your best life. He's looking forward to some good turf talk as always. Yeah, I mean, I'll do my best to not disappoint. You have to be the judge of whether it's good or not, but I'm I'm having fun, right? So there is, there is that. Again, you know what's going to happen next. We got to get you back on the show whenever you have some free time. Because here's what's going to happen is you're going to have... You're gonna start working on the greens here soon, and then you know you're gonna be like, "I'm too busy, man. We'll have to wait all the way till like August again to get you, 
to get you on here. So I gotta get you, whenever you have some free time, you have to say the entire show, you can give us an hour of your time to come hang out. We would really appreciate it. Randy Gentry says, is it time already? Uh, it depends, it depends on what you're asking for. Is it time for pre-emergent? If you're in the Southeast United States, yes. In my opinion, yes, it is It is time to get your pre-emergent down. And if you're in the Midwest or further up North, you can wait a few weeks. You can wait till uh, yeah, closer to the end of February to do it. But a bit early is better than a bit late, Randy. But I'm, again, I'm not sure what you're, what the, what you're, which, what you're, what you're talking about. I'm assuming it's pre-emergent. All right, let's see here. Greg Lyons says, doesn't it make you sad to see Bermuda that is four inches or higher? It just looks horrible, but my dog enjoys raking his feet in it as we walk by most of my neighbors, most of the lawns of my neighborhood. Yeah, I mean, four inch Bermuda does not, I don't think looks good because for four, for the for Bermuda to be four inches long, they're not, they're typically not cutting it very often and it just tends to get thin. It looks like uh, like like leggy and just doesn't look, doesn't look good. It doesn't look how Bermuda's supposed to look. It doesn't look like nice and thick and dense, like a nice carpet. It's, uh, I could see Bermuda at two inches, like Bermuda at two inches, even, even two and a half, two and a quarter. It looks pretty good if you're mowing it regularly. But once you get to like much past three and definitely at four, in my opinion, not, uh, not so much, not so, uh, not so great. You know what I mean? So, so yeah, I don't, I'm not loving it, but I mean, Hey, it's normally people that don't really care about their grass that allow it to get that long. All right. Dorian Grace says, love all your professional advice, sir. You're very welcome. Thank you so much for, for taking the time to hang out on Friday evening to talk about uh, lawn care. Oh, no, I, I know what you meant, Greg. He says, uh, lens equals lawns. <laughs> I wish you were to, I, to edit prior posts. I tried deleting them, but you'll see on your side. Sorry, the misspellings. It happens. No worries, man. It's, uh, it's, I, I was able to read through the lines and know what you, uh, know what you meant. All right, Gary Kellett Jr. says, is it bad that my wife knows that Friday nights between six to nine uh, central time it's my lawn care time. She secretly, secretly she loves the domination. Yeah, I mean, put it this way, Gary, there are far worse things you could be doing on a Friday night between six to 9 p.m. than hanging out on the live stream, talking about how you're gonna make your lawn awesome and make the, the neighbors envious, right? There's far worse things you could be doing. And to your point, she likes, I'm sure, like when the lawn looks really nice and the other, you know, ladies or friends in the neighborhood, they walk by and say, oh, your lawn looks so incredible. She's like, yeah, I know, Gary, you know, he's, he's always out there working on that lawn. You know, I can't stop him working on it, but secretly she likes the stripe action. She, she digs it. She digs it. All right. Next up is, um, Greg. He says, uh, for your security day job, do you work at the same desk? If so, during Zoom video sessions, does anyone wonder why you have a mower in the background? Yeah, so it's, it's the same setup. Um, I don't use this camera angle whenever I am uh, when I'm at work. It's normally just this one. And if you look, you can't really. I mean, you guys know there's a mower there, but given the focal length, it just looks like there's a big red thing. Some people, some people have actually asked. I've had someone ask me like, "What is that back there?" And then I'll switch over to this camera and I'll show them like, "Hey, this is like how the, the studio set up and the mower back there is like, oh, you have a lawnmower on your on your shelf." I'm like, "Yep, yeah, I'm weird like that." So, uh, but yeah, it doesn't. This is what normal people see when I'm on Zoom calls or Teams calls or whatever else, right? So, and it doesn't. You don't unless you know what that is. You don't. You know, you don't really know. So, yep, same mower, same camera, same lens, same everything. I dress a little bit better, but outside of that, yeah, it's the uh, it's the same same thing. All right, Jim Carson is up next. He says, "Question: I put down glyphosate. Uh oh, uh oh, this could, this could go bad. I did not get it on my new Tiff Tough. That's good, but I noticed that my footprints are showing up on the lawn. Is this going to be a problem? Okay." So um, I'm, I, I'm not understanding the question. So, so you sprayed an area, you sprayed somewhere with glyphosate. You walk through the area that you sprayed and you're, 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 when you walked, so after you walked through that area that you sprayed the glyphosate, you walked in the lawn and you're seeing your footprint showing up on the lawn. Yeah. So wherever you walked, you likely tracked the glyphosate. So if you were spraying, I don't know, maybe a mulch bed or some area that you're trying to kill off. As you walk through that, if you track some of the glyphosate onto the uh, tiff tough, yeah, you you uh, you got it, you dinged it. I mean, it's it should be a relatively light concentration, so it's going to get ugly for a little while, and then the Bermuda will recover. It should bounce back from that. Um, but yeah, that's that's what it's sounding like. I mean, if you've got like footprints in your lawn and there's not footprints like it, and it's look there's nowhere else looks like that, it's likely that like, you got some glyphosate on the bottom of your shoes and you. You tracked it, uh, you tracked it on the lawn, unfortunately, but it, it should recover. It should be all right, especially since it's it's unlikely that the concentration was very uh, was very heavy, right? Not like you were, you were blasting or spraying the entire lawn with it. 
All right, Mr. Made in the 80s said, why don't you have a battery for the Sterling? Well, because the Sterling is, um, I, don't, I don't mow with it. I'm not gonna cut grass with it. So the thing about this mower, I'm not sure I still have the video here if I can show you guys. The Sterling was actually part of, um, there's a charity, uh, Duke of Edinburgh, that, that, um, that, that it's a charity that, 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 they, that they run that Alet was, um, let me start over. Alet was running an auction. The proceeds of that auction went to a charity in the UK that helped um, underprivileged youth to, you know, to, to get to learn skills and just to, um, it's, it's like a, it's a, it's a good program to help, to help young people, which I'm all about, right? They, didn't, they don't have them mowing grass, but hey, the, it teaches them other life skills. So the mower they created for it, it was a limited one, one of one. I'm not sure if I can actually show it here, but I've got the video for it. it was a one of one version. Yeah, yeah here it is. It was a one of one uh, Sterling. So, you know, you guys know, um, the late Queen Elizabeth, she, you know, she had her platinum jubilee, which was, was that 70 years, 70 years on the, on the throne. So Alec made this one mower that is all like all tricked out. It's got, you see it's chromed out. It's got um, like the livery, it's got the, the Union Jack livery on there. Uh, it has a uh, Union Jack flag. It also has the, the crest uh, associated with her, with her um, 70 years on the throne. And then I think whereas most Sterlings are are green, the metal parts on the back are all painted in black. So it's it's in many ways it's like a it's like a piece of history. So I don't one I don't need to use it to mow my grass. I've got like other mowers that I want to use, and I don't want to mess up or use a you know something that really in in lawn care nerds in, a, in, the, in the world of a lawn care nerd it's priceless you can't really replace that you know what i mean and there's only one of them is that 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 one right there is the only one in existence and i asked i asked um al uh, Alan about it and they said no nope, they're not going to make they're not going to make any more they made they made one and that's it they might do other special edition mowers but as far as the platinum jubilee mower that that is that is the one and only one that that um that will uh, will exist so for that reason I don't have a battery for it because I don't. I didn't intend to mow with it, and if I don't have a battery, I can never be tempted to mow the grass with it. So that's that's why I don't have a battery. So that's the whole story behind uh, behind that mower. All right, JC one hundred and five says, "What different uh, tips you use to spray, to spray different products?" Great question. So uh, we're back to this cam. So the two, if you only have two, the one you'd want to have is this one. This is the Foliar T Jet tip. This is a uh, one hundred and ten degree. Uh, with spray pattern, it's a very, very fine droplet size. This is ideal if you are spraying any any product that needs to get on, that's foliar based, so it, needs, so it needs to get on the plant leaf, right? So it's a very, very fine droplet. So think uh, liquid fertilizer, herbicides, or post market herbicides. Um, if you're doing a fungicide app, it needs to, and it needs to be like, if it's like, a top, if, it's like a, if it's a foliar fungicide app, you could use this for it. But but the but general rule is anything that needs to stick to the plant's leaf, you would want to use this, right? If you're applying a soil-based product, so like pre-emergent or a biosimilant that is soil-based that needs to get down in the soil to work, then you could go with something like this, which is the flood jet tip. This produces a larger droplet size. So the difference between these guys, between this and this, is the size of the droplet that they produce. So um, I've got a video that talks, first of all, I'll do one thing. So that, that's in a nutshell, um, the two major tips that you need. An in-between tip is this guy. This is a, um, an air induction tip, which produces a, a droplet size that is larger than the foliar tip, but not as large as the flood jet tip. So it's kind of an in-between uh, uh, tip. So if you're, if, a good example of where you'd use that is if you were spraying I mean, granted, you really don't want to spray on windy days, but let's say you're spraying on a day when there's a bit of a breeze and a larger droplet is less likely to drift. You know, you, it's more likely to stay where you're, where you're spraying. That is where going to like an air induction tip with a slightly larger droplet size that can still work for foliar apps makes, uh, makes sense. Um, and if you want to see a video that's all about spray tips, um, I will find one. I think I did it. It was it's probably been two years at this point. It wasn't last year. It was the year before year before last year. Um, and I will I will link that here in the chat for you. But as far as the tips go, hang on, let me, uh, foliar. As far as the spray tips, this is all three of them. So if you want to get whichever one you want, all three of them are linked in the chat now, like that. And as far as a video that actually demonstrates this, because I have a video that actually where I show uh, the droplet size and why, like why you actually want to go through this, why it's worth the headache. And, um, this guy, yeah, this one right here, this one. This video is all about uh, spray tips. So 
this guy. If you watch this uh, at JC105, uh, that video will, will, if you look at it, there's gonna be a, a section where I show spraying some shrubs and I spray one with a, I don't, I don't show the, um, the flood jet tip because it's just, it's way larger, but I show like using an air induction tip and I show using a foliar tip and you can see the difference as far as like how much runoff you get and how, how well the finer spray tip, how, how it does a better job coating the leaf versus the air induction tip doesn't do as good a job. So watch that video. You can actually see, you know, me talking about it is one thing, but there's nothing like video to actually drive the point home as far as the differences between uh, the two of them. So hope that helps. Ben Raham is next. He says, mower justification. Oh, here we go. <laughs> mower justification. Uh, one cheap Murray push mower as a bush hog. Two Husqvarna push baggers for cleanup. Uh, three, the Husqvarna tractor for pain days and pulling... Um, pulling and then for the true cut c25 for the dance floor and then the mclean number five uh for no reason so you can't justify that one so uh, so i get it so you've got so really you've got like three mowers is what i'm hearing right you don't you don't have five you've got three ish that's the, that's what i'm that's what that's what I'm, I'm getting from that all right uh, next up is uh is no name he says, when your micronutrients are low, is there something other than or in addition to Nutrizolvi you'd recommend? Not really. So I'll show you here, uh, no name. So what he's talking about is if all your micronutrients are low, you're just trying to give, just trying to, to give them a boost. If you go to shop and go to lawn fertilizer, there's a product from the nice folks at Ecologel called Nutrizolve. And all this is, is a micronutrient. That's the entire idea behind this product. There's no NPK in it. And... As far as what it comes with, what it contains, is you've got your uh, iron, zinc, boron, manganese, uh, what did I miss? There's one more. Uh, magnesium. Um, I can pull up the label here and, and show you, but it's got it's got a bit of, yeah, there you go. So you've got your boron, copper, iron, manganese, molybdenum, a uh, little, little bit of sulfur, and some zinc. So as far as a product that you can mix as well. So that's a, that's a good point. So I actually mentioned this in my fertilizer application when we were talking about it earlier. Um, so whenever I will, if I go with 901C as my liquid fert, I will mix Nutrizolve in with it because 901C doesn't have any micronutrients. If I use Turfplex, I don't have to use Nutrizolve. And if I do in, so not in last year's season, but in the 20, what is this year, 2023? In 2021, when I was using Turfplex, I would use Nutrizol, but I would use it at a, at a very reduced rate. I would use, I think it was like two ounces, two ounces per thousand, I think is what I did. I use a very light rate of Nutrizol because Turfplex already has micronutrients in it. So to answer your question, um, no name, no. I don't find that you need anything else other than Nutriz Nutrizol. It, 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 does a, it does a great job as far as, it has everything. It has everything and has everything in, in, um, in adequate amounts that you really shouldn't have to apply anything else for your micronutrients other than, uh, than this product, so. Great question. All right, Optic Cyclic is up next. He says, it is negative 14C and negative 25C with a wind chill in Canada right now. I am so sorry to hear that. I'm pretty sure that white stuff on the lawn isn't powdery, isn't powdery mildew. Yeah, yes, it's likely snow. Yeah, it, so if you're in Canada, you should not be applying pre-emergent this week. As a matter of fact, I don't think you can even get pre-emergent in Canada. I don't believe so. I don't think. But yeah, you, you, you guys have got a ways to go before you start mowing. All right, next up is Jay Westbrook. He says, mm. I asked a question about burning off your, I think, yeah, burning off your lawn versus scalping a few weeks ago. You said, Ron, you said you should do one burn stripe after your entire lawn in a control situation so we can do a direct comparison to your normal routine. I don't recall, I don't know. I don't recall saying that. I said, if you live somewhere where you can do that, then you want to burn your lawn, you can. I'm pretty sure what I normally, what I, what I, I'm pretty sure what I, what I say is that it's in general a bad idea because most people are not allowed to set their lawn on fire if you live in a subdivision anyway. However, if you live somewhere that allows, where you can do that without having the fire department show up, then yeah, it'd be cool. It'd be cool to do up to burn a, an area and then have, and scalp an area and see. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know. If you have somewhere you can do that, that'd be a cool comparison to uh, to check out. Assuming it's okay for you to do that in your area. So there is that. That's the uh, the caveat, Jay Westbrook. So yeah, take a, make sure you video it and make sure that you 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 know you have like a water barrier. So water an area, like create an area for the, where you don't want the, the the fire to spread to. So make sure you do all your best to 
to keep it just in the spot where you want to uh, to burn off. This is a newbie lawn person. I've learned a lot from you, from Ed uh, Ellington. Awesome, Ed. I'm glad to hear that. Really, really, uh, really, really appreciate it. That's what that's what uh, I am here for. So I'm glad that the content is uh, is useful. He says, uh, let's see, Jay Russell says, are you uh, on the rotary mower? I can't do a good scalp without digging into the ground in some places. I'm probably going to do a control burn this year. Yeah, I mean, if, if your lawn is that uneven to where you don't want to, uh, you know, to where going to where a rotary is going to you know, get in the dirt, you can always just raise it up just a little bit. There's also an option too. You know, you don't have to get down in the dirt or you can cut it really low and then just, you know, replace the mower blade or sharpen the mower blade after you are done. I mean. To, as a as a as a matter of practice, uh, Westbrook, you want to start with a sharp mower blade at the beginning of the season anyway. So if you are scalping, or if you if that mower blade that you've got on right now is the same one you were cutting with last season, and you want to use it to scalp, that's fine. And then you can again get it sharpened or get a replacement one so you're fresh to go for the um you know for when you actually want to maintain the the, the lawn. So it just depends on which on what you want to you know what, what works best for you. I don't I don't know how uneven your lawn is. It might be so uneven that even cutting it. And an inch causes it to scalp, right? If that's the case, then yes, maybe doing a control burn, assuming that where you live, it's allowed to do, could be the best option for you, maybe. But um, but I would not let the fact that the rotary may occasionally hit the hit the dirt keep you from using it to scalp because you can always just sharpen the blade or replace the uh, replace the blade. So good stuff. Great, great, uh, great questions. All right, next up is career choices. It says hi, Ron. I've mixed and applied last week. Prodiamine prints up an image. And a surfactant for my spring pre-emergent. You could have left the you could have left the surfactant out. You didn't really need to use that, but everything else, okay. Uh, would this slow down my green up for my Bermuda, provided I use the right race? It shouldn't. You, sh you should be okay. Uh, career choices. I would not have done the surfactant though, because all three of those, Prodiamine, Princep, and Image, uh, they need to get in the soil to to work. So there's not really any reason to apply a. Um, like a you know a sticking agent to try and get to stick to the grass. You want to get it in the soil, but it's it's fine. I'm sure if you if it got watered in or you you know you ran irrigation, it should still work. Uh, it should still work okay. And yes, provided you use the right rates, you should be just fine. Shouldn't be an issue. That com but that said, that combination is one that uh, is more of a fall is more of a fall uh, combo that 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 um that I like to use. You know what I mean? As far the, the reason for doing that combination is to um, for POA. Is it's a good comment. It's like a poor man's mix for, and really these days not even a poor man's mix. You could buy Spectacle for about the same price as buying all three of those now. But in years past, that was a, a more economical way of getting relatively good control of Poe annua um, in warm season grass and not having to buy Spectacle. But um, but yeah, so that's why it's normally a a fall type application, not necessarily the spring. But if, again, if you applied it, it's already down now, right? And as long as you, you use the right the correct rates. You should be uh, you should be fine. All right, next up here is E B says a new Bermuda sod being installed in a few weeks in Georgia. How long do I need to wait to apply uh, Hume? I'm um, gonna say Humic Max. I guess you're asking uh, Humic Max or, or other fertilizers. Okay, so I would wait until you're mowing till the the the, the lawn is growing in and it's and it's it's you're mowing it. So really in Georgia. I would not do a fertilizer application until mid mid to late March. It just depends on again, it depends on the weather we're having, right? But whenever the lawn begins to green up, meaning it's it's and in your case it's gonna be soft, so it's gonna be green. But even then, I would wait until March time frame. I would not uh, apply um, fertilizer this this early in the season. I would wait until it's uh, it's in, it's established, you're mowing it, and then if you want to, do you want to use something like the uh, the twelve zero twenty four, like the stress that that particular one, that's a great option for your um, to, for, you know for your for your new side. It's got some slow release in there, so that is a good way to uh, to go on on new side. As far as the biostimulants, um, I'm not sure if you're asking for humic max or humic acid um, or any biostimulants. That stuff you can spray, you know, because it's you can spray it whenever the sod's installed. Like there's no issue with that. You can put that down. You know, the sods as soon as it goes in, you can spray it the next day if you wanted to. Because that doesn't really have um, any measurable amounts of NPK of, of macronutrients in it. It's not like it's going to push a lot of growth. And it's all it's going to do is really improve your soil, which is great, right? It's a good thing to do for um, for a new lawn, for new uh, for new soil. So yeah, so fertilizer, wait till March time frame, depending on weather. And then biosimilants, you can do, you can really, you could do essential G prior to being installed. If you're asking me what I would do is if the, um, if the, 
the, the place that's or whoever's doing the work for you will allow you to do it. I can't see why they wouldn't. Like once the prep work is all done for put, put, installing the new sod, I would get like a, a bunch of, of essential G and lay that down nice and heavy um, and then put the sod on, put the sod down on top of that. Another option, let me show you real quick because that's that's actually what is that's one of the, one of the benefits of either one of these products. So essential G easier to apply. You can just use a spreader to to to, to apply it to put it down. If you if they're going to be raking the lawn in, like say they're going to be rake, like they're going to be prepping the area where they're going to be smoothing out using a rake to to get it nice and even before they um they put the sod down, then go with carbonized PN. Like essential G is fine cuz it's easier, but this stuff is like this is the Mac Daddy. This is if you want to use for for um for establishing new sod. Like what you would do is you, I imagine, I imagine your existing lawn's already killed off. So you would get rid of the, your existing grass. And then before the sod goes down, you would take carbonized PN and cover the entire lawn or the area where the sod is going in with that. And you can go relatively heavy with it if, without, without issue. Then put your sod down on top of it and it's gonna help with establishment and, um, and rooting. So that, yeah, if you want something to, to do as part of your prep, carbonized PN, essential G is fine too, but of the two, this one is is what I would go with. Um, if you have an easy way to spread it, you don't mind the work of of you know spreading it manually over the lawn because because carbonized PN um, will not go down in a broadcast spreader. It has to be raked in, or you need like a special like top dressing machine to be able to spread it. Whereas like again, essential G, you can just throw that in your spreader. Like if you're doing it as part of a um, a side installation, I would run the spreader wide open. Like literally, I would buy a, a, a lot of it and you know, fill up the hopper, open it wide open and just lay it down heavy, like, you know, on, over the entire lawn and then lay the sod on top of that and you'll be good to go. Great question, EB. Congrats on the new sod, man. Hopefully you're getting some new cool Bermuda. You didn't say what kind of Bermuda you're getting. Is it like Tifway? You're getting a Tahoma? What are you, what are you working with? Congrats on the new grass. Uh, Jay Westbrook says, uh, I use voice to text and it freaking sucks. Sorry about all the bad grammar. Dude, it doesn't matter. It's fine. It's not, it's not, I, I understand. I, I could read through the lines. I, I get what you're, I get what you're saying. It's no, uh, no biggie. All right. So let me see here. I got some questions here from Instagram. One from May and 152 says, so other than pre-emergent, that's all I need to worry about when it comes to Tiff Top Bermuda. Yeah. So for, um, so this month, pre-emergent, a soil test, and then granular biosimilants. That is what I would be doing. Pre-emergent, soil test, granular biosimilants. The following month, like uh, March, again, assuming you're in Georgia, then uh, that's when you can start looking in your liquid biosimilants and your fertilizer and obviously mowing. That is uh, what I would do. And then next up, we got uh, Yankees, Dolphins. Uh, he says, I'm in South Carolina with Bermuda grass. My plan is to put down pre-emergent this weekend, scalp in two weeks or so, and then put down uh, triple 10. Does that sound like a good plan to get started? Am I missing something? No, not really. What I would say with the triple 10 is uh, I would, you know, when it comes to the fertilizer, if, if you want to put down a, um, I don't know what the formulation of that triple 10 is, but your first fertilization of the season, if you can, if it can be a slower release or a fertilizer with a, a higher amount of potassium in it, that is what I would, I would recommend. Um, the triple 10 is, is probably going to be fine, but if you want to, you know, if, if you can go with something like um like there's the stress the, the the stress that we carry the what is it it's a 12024 like that's a great option for waking the lawn up the triple 10 if you want to wait until you're starting to see a little bit of green in the lawn and then put that down that can work as well too because it doesn't have a lot it doesn't have a ton of um a ton of macros so that that could work that could work just fine if you already have it use it i'll put it to you that way if you already have it use what you got um but it, but for me i would like a fertilizer with a higher amount of um a higher amount of of, of potassium than like a, um, you know, than, 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 than that fertilizer. And then he's back. He says, what should I put down before putting down new dormant Bermuda rolls? Okay. So same thing. Uh, you know what? I can link it here. So there's a product. Okay. So, um, the, the answer to your question made in 152 is if you have a way to spread it, or you don't mind spreading it manually, carbonized PN is what I would use. If you don't have like a machine, like a top dressing machine to spread it and you have a large area, then go with Essential G. So I'll, I'll put links to both of them. I don't think on Instagram, I don't think they're clickable, but um, you'll be able to see, you know what, I'll just do this. I'll put a link to Miramichi Green, the, the, that collection on the store. And then when you ever you, whenever you uh, get around to it, you can, um, you, can, you can look it up. But at this link, you'll find both Essential G and Carbonized PN. And those are 
um, depending on what you, on, on on what you have available for spreading it, either one of those are what I would apply prior to putting saw down. It's, you're going to get a good result. It's going to help. It's going to help the lawn establish faster. All right. All right. Next up, we have great questions, guys, on Instagram. Keep them coming. All right, next up in Instagram, we got No Name. He says, hey, Ron, what happens if you get a granular pre-emergent and don't water it in for over 72 hours? I usually time mine for rain or get manual sprinklers out, but what if someone doesn't do that? It's still gonna work. I mean, eventually you're gonna get rain. Now, if, if you put down your granular pre-emergent and we got no rainfall between now and the end of March, then you're probably gonna have some weeds in your lawn. You're gonna have some breakthroughs. It's not gonna work as well. But, you know, here's the thing. With pre-emergent, the, the the label will tell you, apply it, water it in after application. That is the best thing to do because that gets it in the soil, gets it working, because it needs to get in the soil to be able to work. I will tell you that m the people around here, that like whenever they get their, their lawns sprayed with liquid pre-emergent from the services, they don't run their irrigation. Like they, it gets, the product gets put down and if it doesn't rain, it doesn't get watered in. And it's still, or I should say this, it, the, the, the product goes down and it could be the next day it rains, it could be a week when it rains, but they don't run irrigation specific. They're not like us, they're not like lawn, not lawn nurse like us. They wait for rainfall to water in whatever needs to get watered in and they still get a good result. So if you were going to put down your granular pre-emergent now and it doesn't, um, if it's gonna rain like two days later, you're gonna be fine. If you wanna run, you wanna run your irrigation right after applying it, you can, but if, if I were gonna put down pre-emergent say tomorrow, and it were gonna rain on Monday or even rain on Tuesday, I wouldn't bother with going out and dragging out sprinkler hoses or dragging out hoses and this kind of thing. I mean, just let let it rain and water it in and you'll be, you'll be just fine. It's not like it's not gonna work. It'll be just fine once it gets watered in. All right, next up is, you're very, very welcome, Yankees Dolphin, no problem at all. Uh, next up, you've got Tutrilla. He says, I'm thinking about switching it up this year and using Prodiamine at full rate. Is there any options for the fall next to Spectacle Flow? I, I remember you mentioned the poor man's version last year. Yeah, so it, there are other options. You could use Diphyopair in the fall if you wanted to. You could use Prodiamine in the fall if you wanted to. You could use um, the, the combination that is still not as good as Spectacle Flow, but approaches what Spectacle Flow can do as far as controlling POA is Prodiamine, Princep and image. So amazoquin, princep, uh, so, so it's um so it's prodiamine, simazine, and amazoquin are the active ingredients. But but the products are prodiamine and whatever you, you get it in barricade, um uh princep or simazine, and then am amazoquin or image, those three mixed together will um will do a pretty good job of controlling POA. If you already have spectacle flow, I would just use that because spectacle flow on warm season grass is pretty difficult to beat. It's 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 Really, it's probably the best product for POA on warm season grass in the falls. I would I would just use that. If you already got it, I wouldn't just, just use just use spectacle. It's less work too, right? It's like one product. You just gotta mix that. Just one thing goes in the tank and you apply it and you're you're good to go. Versus having to, you know, mix prodiamine, mix all this stuff up and shake it and keep it suspended and spray it. It's just a lot it's more work. If you got spectacle, just go with that. All right, uh, Ben Rayham is up next. He says, if a person has mower's storage problem, the flexibility of one outlet starts to make sense. Why rolls eyes again? That is true. If you only have, if you can only have one mower, the outlet is a great option because in addition to cutting grass, which is the thing that most people primarily use it for, you also get the ability to turf rake, you get the ability to verticut, you get the ability to, um, you also have a dethatcher, like a more aggressive tool you can put on one of those too. So as far as like the Swiss army knife of mowers that also lays really good stripes, it's tough to beat an outlet. They are more expensive, but it's if you look at it from the standpoint of you're getting multiple tools in one, it's uh, it's hard to pass up. It's gonna, it's gonna allow you to get a better result in your lawn than you can with just only a mower because of the other the other cultural practices you're able to do like turf raking like verta cutting so i agree with you ben uh, here's the thing though do not replay this clip to your wife and say see ron said i should go get an outlet because i did not say that uh, what i said was if you don't have a mower which you are already past the not having a mower thing we are we are we are well past that and you can only have one the outlet is a good option so do not take don't like cut take this and edit and cut it up and be like Ron, we're, we're all, we're, all I say is Ron said Alan is awesome. See, done, full stop. Don't do that. All right, next up is um, Job Ron, John Rob Will says, does prodiamine delay spring, uh, spring green up? Not real, I have not found that to be the case as long as you apply it at the correct rates. It's not, so the answer is, uh, is no. No, not really, uh, John. I've not, I've not particularly seen that. All right, let's see here. Uh, JC105 says, 
Earlier you touched on spreaders. Do you have any experience with the Echo RB60? It uses the same settings as Scott's broadcast spreaders. I have not used one myself, but if you but the the one of the big reasons why I prefer the Earthway um, would disqualify the Echo for that very reason, right? Because you think about it, like the the one of the big benefits of the Earthway is that if you go out and you buy, like you go to, go to site one, you buy a product from there, or you look you use like the Lebanon um, fertilizers that we carry, or the fungicides or insecticides from um, from Syngenta. The labels that they are, they're going to have, they're going to have a setting for Earthways. They are not going to have a spreading setting for Scotts. So if the RB60 uses the same thing as the Scotts. Um, then you're kind of in the same the same spot. They might have they might have a setting for that. I don't recall seeing the RB60 on the bag for like Syngenta products, and I don't believe it's on the bag for for the. Um, we can look really quick. Why not? We can do this. Let's do it live. So we go to Scott. It's a shop lawn fertilizer. Let's go to Humic Max, and we can look at the label. I'll tell you real quick. Let me look here. Uh uh no see so there you go so you've got so as far as spreaders you've got lebanon you got the anderson's acupro the earthway rotary this is the one that i use the 2050 gandhi lely let's go pen mulch proscape biker and vicon uh, or spiker and vicon yeah so so this so, and this is what you're gonna find like these like the um the 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 spiker you you commonly see the lesco you'll commonly see and the Andersons and Earthways, you'll the Earthway rotors you'll, you'll commonly see. But but again, so the RB, I'm sure it's a great spreader. But if you if it's the same thing as the Scots, you're in the same, you're pretty much in the same boat, right? So for for me, for that reason, I would not get one. I would not get one. I don't know what the price difference is if they're comparable from a price standpoint. Um, but for that reason, I would not. I, for 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 the products that I like to use, the Earthway is a better fit. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the RB. I'm sure it's a great spreader, uh, but it just make, means it's just one more thing I have to do when I ever have to go and figure out like the correct calibration for applying products. So hope that helps, uh, JC. And, uh, and yeah, so now we both know, right? There's the RB is not on the, uh, the bag, but here's the thing. If, if you guys, you know, get one of those, um, if you guys are getting like the, the humic max or any of these, I'll show you that as well too, because even though I don't have the RB listed here, it's not on the bag. What you guys will notice is I have spreader settings because I know all you guys have Scott spreaders for the Scott for them here, so these would be the same. Uh, so I think it'd be for the Edge Guard. So for the Edge Guard, the Elite, the Mini, these would be the same as the ones for an RB, the RB60. So what I could do is I can just go and add RB60 here, so it's listed as well. Something for me to work on. But uh, but yeah. So if you have an RB, I've got Scott settings there. You can use that. But if you just have just the bag, like you just got the product, you buy it somewhere else, and they don't they didn't go through the trouble of putting that in the product description for you then you got to figure it out yourself. So there you go. All right, then next up we got David Grant. David Grant is up next. He says, um, hey, Ron and Golf Course Lawn Fam. Happy Friday. Does it matter, uh, does the method of silica application foliar or does the method of uh, silica application matter? Foliar or granular, does it matter what type of silica is used? I, I'm not sure what you're what you're asking. The products that I use that have silica in them, David, are it's their 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 uh, granular products. So it's Essential G, um, yeah, Essential G. So I don't. I guess I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer to your question. I'm not sure what you're asking. Um, but if there's, I'll put it this way: if there's a product that is foliar, foliar products have a fat. But here's the thing: it's universal. Foliar products have the advantage of faster uptake. So if there is a silica product then you can expect it to be taken up by the plant faster in as a liquid than it would be as a granular. I don't have any products that are, or, or I don't, I've never used any products that, that I can think about at least off the top of my head that have silica in them that are liquids. Everything that I have is granular, but hope that makes sense. I mean, just the, as far as what you can expect, you can expect the uptake to be faster if you use a liquid than if you use a granular. That's, that's what I can say. As far as different types of silica used, I can't, uh, I can't help you on that one, man. I do not know. That is, that is beyond my pay grade. All right, next up is Will Dog Hail State. He says, I sent the Swerman off to be sharpened. $205. Good Lord. Uh, the same service uh, cost $140 just two years ago. That inflation thing, right? He says, inflation sucks. I got to find another option. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not good. I mean, I know it, locally here... I tell you the um, like Atlanta real mower. What's his name? Uh, Michael. 
from Atlanta Real Sharpening. The guy that did the sharpening on the Allet did an awesome job, by the way. It was like just over a hundred bucks for him to sharpen it. So, I mean, his prices may have gone up a little bit, but it certainly wasn't $200 just for the sharpen. Now, so, uh, you know, if it, now here's the thing, Will, you have to keep in mind. If it's $205 and that includes the shipping, so it includes you shipping it to them, them sharpening it and shipping it back, that's not bad. But if it's, you still paid to ship it on top of that, that's, that's kind of steep. You know what I mean? That's, uh, that's not great. But yeah, inflation, there's not a whole lot you can, uh, you can do about it. Like shipping costs are, are a lot more higher, are a lot higher than, uh, than they used to be. So I'll put it this way. If that price includes shipping, I could see it going from 140 to 205 just based on the cost of shipping stuff now. Like that, every, like shipping everything is just more expensive. So that could be the reason why for the price increase. All right, next up is uh, No Name. He says, I know I asked this a lot in this stream. Yeah, you did. You, you, I mean, here's the thing. You're, you're about you you're about to, you know, you have to take take the the mic away from you, no name. You are you are kind of hogging the the chat a little bit, you know, but it's okay because I know you in real life, so it's cool. He said, "I know I've asked a lot in this stream, but what what Miramichi? What about the Miramichi Greens sixteen six eight C? Sounds too good to be true. Yeah, I know the product you're talking about. That product um, is not available to us. It was it was a and I'm, it, it I'm not sure if it's even still listed on the website. It used to be. I, have to check, I haven't checked in a while to see if it's still there." That is a product that Miramichi Green made for, I'm just gonna say, they made for someone, for made, made for, um, it was commissioned, it was a commissioned product. So it's not something that's gonna be um, available for sale outside of to this, this particular entity that requested it. Kind of like Carbon Pro G. Carbon Pro G is a, like it's a product that Miramichi Green makes for um, site one. So the only place you can get it is really is at site one for the most part, right? This, that, that product is the, uh, is the same thing, so. It's not, and it's not along the lines of um, of the organic product. That product is not a, is not an organic product. So it's it's pretty much to take a they took a fertilizer, they 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 added their bi their biology and and um and other other nutrient packages to to that fertilizer. And again, it's it's not available. So no reason even really talking about it. You can't get it. All right. Next up is John Williams. He says, "Hey Ron, thanks for the show. Is it too late for me to put some pre-emergent down? No, it is not. It's it's great time to do it." It's not too late at all. Love. If you if we were having this conversation in April or May, I'd say yeah, it's it's still not too late. But as far as the benefits, they're going to be you know limited. You're not going to get as good a result you would, as if you'd have gotten if had you done it uh, like this time of year. So yeah, early is is better when it comes to pre-emergent, John. I would get it down. I'm doing mine this weekend. So no, it's not too late. Uh, Adrian Fraser says I have hard clay soil. Thinking about aerating. And preened, I'm not sure you said. Um, yeah, I'm, I have hard clay soil. I'm thinking about um, aerating, then pre-emergent, and then aerating again in the spring. Too much? Uh, no, I mean, but I would say if you could do your do your aeration. Well, here's the thing. I don't know that I would aerate now just for pre-emergent. I would just apply your pre-emergent, and then if you plan to aerate in the April May time frame, just do it then. You know what I mean? I don't know that I would go out and do a pre-emergent app or do an aeration just for your pre-emergent app. I would not I would not do that, especially if you're doing it now. I would I would just spray your pre-emergent and then aerate later on in the season. Again, April May uh time frame. I certainly I certainly would do it twice. So uh so no, I would not I would not do that. Adrian. All right, we got a super chat. I, I was wondering where he was. You're there. LG, we missed you, man. You're here. Super chat received. He says, LG, JG, thanks you for the Friday night entertainment. And I believe that makes you, yeah, you are now the show sponsor, LG. Uh, so yeah, because you're, Lewis did 25 to 20 and you did 25. And of course, now I got to go find, you got to be special. So I got to go find your, your star emoji or your sun emoji. I think I've, I always got to search for it because I don't really have that one in my recents. All right, there we go. So got that. And make sure it's just right. Make sure the spacing is just right. Just right. So it can be just how you like it. And there you go. Your name in lights for whatever that means to you. Thank you so much for the super chat, sir. I am glad that I am um, you and JG's entertainment tonight. I appreciate you guys watching as always. As always. Now the hard part. Finding out where I left off. All right, next up is John Williams. He says, hey, Ron, thanks for the show. I'm in Savannah, Georgia with centipede grass. When do you think is the danger zone of putting my pre-emergent down? What do you mean? I'm not sure what you mean by danger zone. Again, if I would, before soil temps reach 55, the average soil temps reach 55 degrees when you want to apply your pre-emergent. So if you're in Savannah, you're near the coast, so you and you're south of where I am. So you could, 
I, I don't see any reason why you could not do it now, um, uh, John. Make sure you pay attention to the label, check the label, and make sure you're using the correct rates for centipede. I don't know if centipede rates are the same thing as what Bermuda rates are, so you know, check that. That's the, that's the only that's the only danger really there, the danger zone aspect of it. So read the label, find out what the what the rate is that's correct for centipede grass, and then uh, you can apply it. It should be just fine. All right, Bill Stewart is up next. He says, uh, hey, Ron, I love the content. Thanks, I appreciate it, Bill. He says, uh, uh, my SoCal Bermuda, let me see, my SoCal Bermuda, uh, I can't read this, it's blocked. You guys can't see it, but my screen is blocked right now. Uh, he says, my SoCal Bermuda um, has KBG in spots. What herbicide would you recommend? Also, with 60s and 40s overnight, is it too cold for herbicides? It's not too cold, it's just gonna take longer for them to work. It's just gonna be slower to work. Now, so if you have um, Kentucky bluegrass and you're trying to get rid of the Kentucky bluegrass in Bermuda, you could use um, you could use Katana, you could use uh, Celsius. I'm pretty sure Celsius will do it as well too. Just apply it at the higher rates. So Celsius would work. Um, Celsius would work. Katana could work. I'm trying to think of any other products, other herbicides. So look into either of those. We carry Celsius on the golf course lawn store. So just go to the, the store, go to the weed killer section and we carry Celsius. Um, yeah, off, off the top of my head, I can't think of anything else, but herbicides that are safe for warm season grass or safe for Bermuda will likely injure, are gonna injure or kill, um, uh, you know, cool season grass like like uh, KBG. So unless you use something like Blindside, which is which can be used on both cool and warm season grass, if you use like a, a, herb, a post emergent herbicide that is specific for warm season grass that is safe for Bermuda, um, it should do the trick as far as uh, getting rid of the Kentucky bluegrass, especially if you apply it at, uh, at slightly heavier rates. All right, so hope that helps, Bill. And we got another super chat here. This one from Scott uh, Scott Watillet. I think so. I think that's right. He says it is a. Let me get you back up here, Scott. Super chat. He says a video game controller throws a face down tantrum in between the words "rage quit." <laughs> He said, thanks again for keeping the turf real cool. I appreciate it, uh, Scott. Uh, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I'm just trying to make it fun, man. I'm trying to keep it fun, have fun, answer questions, keep it drama free. I'm a drama free kind of guy. So yeah, I like, I, like, I like to have fun. So yeah, I appreciate the super chat. Thank you so much for the support. Thanks so much for the support. Let's see, uh, let's see. And he says, look, uh, John says, looking to oversee my centipede. Okay, now, no, okay, here we go. Now, this is the real answer. I'm looking to oversee my centipede grass for the front yard. How long should I wait before seeding um, after I apply, I put down pre-emergent? Okay, so if you're going to seed, John, you want to give yourself at least, at least a four-month buffer if you're using prodiamine. Minimum, four months minimum. If you don't do that, you are going to get less than stellar results as far as germination if you use pre-emergent. So kind of like what I told the viewer earlier, you got you have to kind of pick what's important to you. If your your goal is to seed this lawn and to get this and have your seeding project work and get the best possible result, you're gonna to want to refrain from using pre-emergent. If your goal is to keep weeds out of your lawn, then you're going to want to use pre-emergence. You have to, you have to kind of pick, you know what I mean? It's, there's like a, there's a, um, a four month period between when you apply pre-emergent minimum, again, if you're using prodiamine, if it's like spectacle, even longer, but if you're using like pr um, prodiamine four months between the time you apply it before you really should be doing any kind of seeding if you want to get the best, uh, best possible result. And then your last question you have here is how much is a good guess for a sp uh, sprinkler system for a 5,000 square foot lawn? Just looking for some good guesses in your opinion. It depends. It depends on, on how they're doing it. If they're using like a ditch witch, like a like a, the vibratory trenching system, that tends to be a bit cheaper. If they're actually trenching the lawn, that is a bit more expensive. Depends on the controller you pick. Figure anywhere between $2,500 to $5,000. That's that's what I would say. It's a pretty broad, broad range, but somewhere in that range, is what I would say expect to pay for a 5,000 square foot lawn. Again, depending on how many zones and what kind of um, irrigation system controller and, and setup you go with. So that's that's a good ballpark. All right, we got another super chat here um, from Mr. Ben Raham. Super chat received. <laughs> this is hi LG and JG. I'm wishing much success to everyone here in the 2023 lawn season. Uh, for all of those on the fence, yes, better products, practices combined with uh, uh, better products and practices combined get better results. 
Thanks, Ron, for the great advice and the access to the enthusiast grade products. You are very, very welcome, Ben Raham. And because you have um, put up the larger super chat, you are now the show sponsor. You know what we need? We need like an LG cam. Whenever this happens, I can only imagine what is going on in that house right now. He's like, oh no, he didn't. He doesn't know. He doesn't, does he not know my name? And then, you know, I, I'm sure it's, it's, it's something along those lines is what's going on with, with uh, LG right now. But there you go, Ben. Thank you so much for the super chat for the generous support. And there, and now your name in lights for whatever that means to you. And yes, LG, before you ask, the, we are doing a running total. So if you do more than whatever it is, I think you do 25. So if you do like 26, then you're the show sponsor again. So before, just to, to head that off. So I know, the, I know you're, you're already like, um, probably gonna be texting me or, or asking the questions. So I'm just gonna put it out there for you. All right, John Williams is up next with another super chat. Thank you so much, uh, John. Super chat received. He says, you the man, Ron. I appreciate it. Thank you for all the love and support. Hopefully that makes sense as far as, um, you know, with your centipede, you, you have to kind of pick what's important to you. Pick which, pick which one you want, which is more important as far as your goal for this, the first part of the season, and then make your applications based on that. Here's the thing. If you decide that, you know, you want to seed the lawn, that's the thing you really want. You can do that and just realize that, hey, I'm going to have to use post-emergent herbic herbicides like um, centipede grass. You're going to have to use like uh, like atrazine. I think atrazine is safer for um, for centipede. Um, atrazine, Celsius will also work on centipede. So uh, so yeah, so you, have to, you have to, no, let me think about it. Yeah, Celsius will work on centipede. I think tenacity is also safe for centipede. Check the labels, but I mean, just you'll, you'll, using, you'll use post-emergent herbicides to control weeds if you don't do pre-emergent as a way to, you know, because you want to get to the best result with your um, with your seeding project. But again, check the label, make sure that whatever you use is correct and safe for your particular uh, grass type. Got some more guys here and gals in the in the gram. Just waving to you guys. Alex Soto, Dad Who Mows Best joined. Thanks for coming to hang out, my dad, dad Mows Best. What's going on? Appreciate you as always for coming to hang out. All right, next up is John Williams. He says, can I put down some humic max when I lay sod or seeding project or what other options should I do? You can. What I would say, John, if you're going to do, um, let's go here, we'll go back to the store. If you're gonna do a seeding project, uh, what I would say is do like Essential G or Carbonized PN, either one of those, like that's very good for, for a seed or sodding project but as far as getting it established. And then, if you're looking for a starter type fertilizer, then this one, the complete, the, uh, the, the 14714 is a great option. Like you've got your nitrogen, your phosphorus, your potassium, uh, the little bit of phosphorus, the phosphorus that's in there is good for promoting root development. So, which is good for, you know, new sod or new seed. Um, you also have a bit of kelp in there, a bit of humic acid. Um, yeah. And so some micronutrient as well. So this is a great option. Humic Max is good too, but as far as an option that that is, you know, has more going for you for a um, for a lawn establishment or seeding project, then the Complete is is a is a good option. But again, either either one, Humic Max or the Complete, either one of those will work well. Um, I would do a I would do a granular biosimilant like um, Carbonized PN or or uh, Essential G along with whichever fertilizer you choose. If you don't choose either of those, I would still go. I would still definitely do Essential G or um, or Carbonized PN. Hope that helps, sir. All right, next up, let me look here and see what we have. Uh, Michael Anger says, "Good Friday, Ron. Where is uh, LC? Um, oh, LG. Oh, yeah, he he just popped in. I guess you put that down before he uh, he was in here. But yes, he is. He he showed up." He showed up. He was lurking for a while, and he just waited his time to to to, to make his presence uh, presence known. All right. Next up is Ben Raham. He says, "I appreciate the fact you make products available to us enthusiasts without overselling. However, please do continue to extol the benefits of a celeprin. Kill prevents pests um, without with while sparing the pollinators." Yeah, I try to not be too salesy, uh, Ben. I mean, in many ways, the the products sell themselves. They're really they they are very good products. I mean, a celeprin you don't really have to sell it because as far as an insecticide, like what he's talking about here, I'll show you guys real quick. We'll go to the store, if you go to shop, and then you go to fungicide insecticide. What he's referring to is this, which is a celeprin. It is, it is a straight insecticide product, it's not a combination product. The beautiful thing about a celeprin is that it kills a whole lot of stuff, right? It kills armyworms, grubs, turf caterpillars, bill bugs, annual bluegrass weevils, chinch bugs. So as far as a very as a very broad spectrum insecticide that, that kills the stuff that will damage our lawns, a celeprin is about as good as you can get. 
Um, and the, the, the thing about it, the active ingredient that's in a celeprin, while it's very effective against turf caterpillars like, you know, your um, like army worms and grubs and, 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 and those types of insects, it doesn't target uh, invertebrates like earthworms or pollinators like bees, right? So that's a nice thing about it. So you, it kills the stuff that we don't want in our, in our lawn or in our, around our, our, our yard, but it lets the stuff that's beneficial, like earthworms are very beneficial. That's like naturally, like nature's aeration tool, right? So you don't want to go out and nuke all the earthworms in your lawn and you don't want to destroy pollinators because that's part of just, you know, a healthy ecosystem. So a celeprin, as far as um, insecticides go, this is um, this is what I, I use. So um, we I mean, we carry other insecticides as well too, but uh, like in in uh, in Caravan, there's a there's an insecticide um, in that product as well. It's a combination insecticide fungicide product. But I for me, I I like to use a celeprin for my insecticide and then headway for my fungicide. So that that's the combination that I use. And whether you do go with liquid or or granular, it's really your call. The liquid is kind of cool from the standpoint that it is um, it gives you more control over application rates. So a good example, say if all you care about is our army worms, you can apply this at a much lower rate and you get like an acres worth of coverage out of this. If all you're treating is like an active army worm infestation. But if you're doing a, a, um, a preventative to where you're trying to treat or have coverage for army worms, for grubs, for bluegrass weevils, for bill bugs, like pretty much a broad spectrum, you could apply this at the 0 0.20 rate. So like the second one there on the bottle, over a thousand square feet, that's a good catch all rate. And, uh, and, and when you apply it at that rate, this four ounce bottle covers the same amount of square footage as the 25 pound uh, bag, the granular bag. So really it becomes a choice of which one do you like better? Do you like a liquid or do you like granular? So you get you, the same coverage out of them when you're applying them as a broad spectrum preventative um, at that rate. So hope that helps. Yeah, you're right, you're right, Ben. It's a great product. Love a celeprint. And also, if anyone's looking to get some and, and wants, it, wants uh, a way to be able to get one of the cool stickers, like you said, these are limited edition. You really can't get these any other way. If you're in the academy, you could have gotten one. Um, but yeah, uh, throughout the weekend, if you order a celeprint or Primo, either one of these, um, I will ensure that one of these goes into your order if you care about stickers. You know what I mean? Because they're kind of cool. I like, I like cool stickers. All right. Uh, next up is Tom G. He says, a celeprin, I'm pretty sure, is pollinator friendly. You are right, Tom G. Yeah, the active ingredient in a celeprin is, is, um, is chlorent, it's a mouthful, it's chlorentranolaprole. Try saying that like 17 times over. Chlorentranolaprole, that is the active ingredient in a celeprin. And uh, yes, it is, it is it's a whole, it, actually in the product description, or actually, that's not in the description, in the video that I did for this, when I did a celeprin G, couple years ago, the video for that. And also I think for the Acceleprint video I did as well too. In the, the video description, there is a link to a paper that talks about souls, all the benefits of Acceleprint, like why it's super awesome for uh, killing stuff that you want gone, but also doesn't, is, is as far as being um, friendly towards the environment, it's a, good, it's a great insecticide choice. All right, No Name says, if everyone who hasn't hit the like button could do so, maybe Ron could play that Tango Bolero. I can do that. Yeah, if you guys haven't hit the like button, definitely do that, guys. We got, you know, we've had well over 130 people in the live stream here tonight. So at some point, if you guys would hit the Tango Bolero, I'd really appreciate it. This is also for LG as well, too. It gives me a chance to take a sip of my, um, what is this tonight? This is uh, um, Arl Palmer. Yep. And then No Name says, also, um, just for what it's worth, um, new sod in most places has fertilizer already for four to six weeks. So there you go. So it's not strictly necessary to fertilize right off the uh, off the get go. Uh, very cool. Let's see here. Uh, no name says thoughts on spectacle G. Um, chat has slowed down. I swear there are minutes in between my questions. Uh, yeah. So spectacle G. I've never used it. Um, for I understand, it is the granular version of if, if it's the product that I'm thinking you're talking about, it's the granular version of Spectacle Flow, um, I, if that's correct. And uh, I've just never used it. I imagine it's gonna be great. I imagine it's gonna be a fine product. So uh, if that's what you're talking about, never use it, should be fine if you want a granular, uh, a granular option. All right, so Luis is throwing his name into the hat. So Luis did what? He did 20 earlier, 25 earlier, whatever. And now Super Chat, so I think he wins. Super Chat received. He says, I stepped away 
Uh, something away, no way, Ron. I used other kelp products in the past. Can you share some thoughts on Cytogrill? I read the label on your site, went to water it in. I've never actually used Cytogrill. So I carry it because there are a few, like kind of like viewers like yourself, a few viewers have, have wanted it, have used it in the past and have liked it. Um, but I've never used it. So instead of Cytogrill, what I use is, I use Nutra Kelp. I use this as, um, I use this instead of, of Cytogrill. So I'm, I'm like on that, on that Miramichi train. Um, and this is, this is, this is what I use as for my, for my, you know, my kelp, um, and biostimulant product. So, uh, so yeah, I, I'm sure it's a fine product. I mean, it, collagen doesn't make bad, it doesn't make bad products. So if, if you, if you've used it in the past and you like it, by all means roll with it. I just can't personally speak to it cause I've not, uh, I've not, um, I've not used it myself. I'm, this is what I, I roll with the, with the, with the Nutri kelp. And, uh, thank you so much, sir. So with, so for that, you are now the show sponsor again, Luis, I, uh, uh, you know, and there you go. Your name in lights for whatever that means to you. So I can't speak on it. I'm sure it's fine. Um, but Nutri kelp I know is great products. So that's what I've, I've been using and love the results I get with it. So, um, if you, you try it out, let me know, let me know how, how it does for you. Let me know how it does for you. Um, uh, Luis. But on the label or on the site, it should have instructions about when um, when to water it in, if you have to water it in at all. I'm not sure if it, let me look here. Uh, let, me, let me just use the, the search function because that makes it easier to find. Yeah, Cytogro Excel. Um, da, 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 initial applications, one, yeah, it, it sounds like it uh, no you don't you don't know you don't, you don't need to water it in so here we go um, here we go so I'm looking at the product the label or sorry, not the label the uh, the the description so um, it's best applied as a foliar spray late in the afternoon or early morning and being allowed to dry so you do not water it in you do not water this product in so let me zoom in there a little bit so you can see there you go so don't don't water it in uh, Luis if you decide to go with that uh, you don't need to you do not need to run irrigation once you are um, are through applying it, kind of like with uh, with the Nutri Kelp, uh, the the Nutri Kelp product. Actually, none of Miramichi's products require being watered in as as um, to work. It's part of their whole their whole sustainable their whole sustainable thing. Um, I didn't even ask myself nothing. Not even like the not even like your granular said. Nope. It says just put it down and you know do you know you get your your lawn gets due every every day every, every morning. It'll work its way down in the soil. If you want to water it in, fine, but you don't have to. So, uh, so there you go. So, um, so yeah, so Luis spray it, do not water it in. If you decide to go with Cytogro, same is true for nutri -Kelp. You do not need to run, run irrigation after you apply it. Okay. Next is, uh, next part is finding out where I left off, which is Ben. He says, I'm just totally throwing you under the bus here to justify the outlet. <laughs> Watch out ladies walking at you really fast at the next turf party. LOL. <laughs> All right, that's cool, Ben. No, no, no worries there. All right, Jim Carson is up next. He says, I'm doing my rear yard renovation. You are correct. I walked through it. My 200 square feet Tiff Tuff is um, is getting ready to do the rest of the 800 square feet pre-emergent this Sunday. Yeah, yeah, it'll recover, Jim. It, I, I'm given the fact that you didn't directly spray it and you know what we have is basically a bit of overspray that got on the bottom of your shoes and you walked the lawn. I mean, it's going to look ugly. It's going to hurt your pride and more than anything else, but, but, uh, Bermuda will recover from it. You didn't, you didn't kill it. You didn't kill it. I mean, I'll put you this way. The, the concoction that I found that will kill Bermuda in one go is, um, is like a, is a 40, a 40%, is it 40%? It's a racer, but it's like a 40, it's a high concentration glyphosate product, like 40, I think it's 47%. Uh, let me tell you, I don't want to tell you wrong here. But it's a yeah, it's a higher concentration of glyphosate, and then mixed with fusilade two, that combination like that in one go will nuke Bermuda. But it's going to bug me to not know what the concentration. Yeah, forty one percent. So forty one percent glyphosate mixed with um, with fusilade two, like that will take out Bermuda. And you likely did not do that. You were not spraying at um, at that concentration. So uh, so yeah. So no. So yeah, you, you'll be fine. It, it'll look ugly for a while, but it will it will come back. We got another super chat. This one from Ben Rayham. Uh, super chat for C. He's I'm just stoking the flames. Don't commit. Forget the cumulative. So I, are you the top now, Ben? Because let me see. You got two dollars, and then fifty, and then uh, what? This is hard. I'm not sure because I don't remember if you did another one. Because because I know I know Luis 
did 25 and then 50. So he's at 70, I believe. So unless you did another one, which you did, you did, uh, uh, I don't know. So 50, what did you do? 20, 71, I think I, here's what we're going to do. Cause I don't, I don't, I don't know. And I don't want to mess this up. And I'm sure I'm going to irritate people if I spend a bunch of time trying to figure this out. So you guys are going to have to share it. Um, ben Ray Ham. That's something um, I don't have a I don't have a um, a an app or a thing to be able to, 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 to track the running total. So if you guys don't mind, both your names in lights for what it's worth. And Ben, your name will be first. I'll leave you first because you gave the last super chat. How's that? So your your game gets mentioned first when someone reads it. Say like Ben and Luis. How's that? So hopefully that works for both of you guys because I don't I don't um, recall. I don't have the running total in my in my my head, unfortunately. All right, now next up is uh, let's see. Next up is um, Frankie. Frank and Lon says the RB sixty has Scott's Vigoro and Earthquake settings. Okay, that's cool. So yeah, so if the RB has like the settings on it for all three, so you can pick I guess one set of settings for Scott's and another set of settings for Earthway, then that's cool. Then you then that would be a great spreader to get because it has uh, everything. If you like the RB sixty. I did not know that, Frank and Lon. All right, next up is Scott uh, Watelet. He says, uh, great show. I'm a 30-year golf superintendent here in Vermont. Uh, 30, uh, 30 below zero here. Wish I could mow my turf now. Well, I appreciate that, Scott. Coming from someone that's worked in the industry professionally for 30 years, that, that really means a lot, that you would want to take time out to come hang out and that you are enjoying it. And I am sorry that it is 30 below in Vermont right now. That sounds like not a lot of fun. And it says, uh, love your knowledge. You're doing amazing tips. Bravo. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the kind words and, uh, and support. All right. Next up is Jason Sewell. He says, what takes my brand new California trimmer from awesome to showstopper? The golf course lawn sticker I just got. Thanks, Ron. I'll send you a pic. Awesome. Sweet. Nice, Jason. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta decorate it up, man. Show, and you guys definitely, when you guys get any sticker, because if you buy the fertilizer, those should be including, sticker should be included in the box with those two. Um, pretty much most products, the, the, the fer, some of the, the fertilizers, um, or at least the Lebanon fertilizers will have a, a golf course lawn sticker within in them. And like the, um, Celsius certainty, the, and, and a few other products will have them. But I mean like Primo, Acelaprin and the Lebanon turf fertilizers will come with a, um, with a sticker, but only as, again, make sure I'm saying this correctly, only a Acelaprin and Primo throughout the weekend, because it's not gonna be a thing I'm doing all the time, because one, I don't have enough of them, only throughout this weekend or during the weekend is when you can get one of these. These are not gonna be included in the box for other stuff because they are expensive and I don't have that many of them, so. So there you go. That's very cool, Jason. I'm glad that you you got the mower looking all sweet and and, uh, and prettied up. All right, next up is No Name. He says, do you know any places that, do, that repair spreaders? My Scott's Deluxe has failed me after a year. I've been eyeing an Earthway, but this year I'm spending money on a real mower. The wife will kill me. I don't know. You know what? Check with Scott's. Check with Scott's. I mean, I don't know what kind of warranty they have. You say, hey, listen, man, I really, you know, because you got the Deluxe. The Deluxe is one of their nicer spreaders. It's the bigger one. So tell them, hey, listen, I got the Deluxe. I've had it a year. I really, I mean, is there anything you can do for me? Can I, can I send it to you? Can you guys fix it? Can, you know, I, I would call them and see. I, all they can say is no. And then you're no worse off than you are right now, right? But um, I, I would give them a ring and see what they uh, what they come back with. I, and it depends on what's broken. I don't know what's broken on it. You know, if it's the if it's the gear mechanism, like the gearbox, I think you're, you're going to be replacing it. You know, you can I would say this: call Scotts, call Scotts, and, and talk to them and ask them and tell them, hey, I'm a big fan. You know, I've I, I've got your spreader. I've only had it a year. I want to continue using your spreader. If I go away from this, I'm going to buy like an Earthway. I'm never buying another Scotts again then they might say, okay, we'll send you another one or we'll repair it for you or whatever. So I, I would call them and see if they'll be willing to do something do something for you. All right, Ignacio Paez says, uh, hi, Ron, winter storm just slammed us this week in Texas. I seeded Arden 15 early last year, but it's just not that nice as my 419. Should I give it another season or kill it and resod? Both different plots. If you don't like the way it looks, kill it and resod. I mean, it's not, there's nothing to, uh, there's no there's no shame in doing that. If you don't like the way it looks, then you can burn it down and and put in, you can put in Tipway 419, you can put in Tahoma 31. It depends on what you're trying to do. Yeah, if you don't like the way it looks, get uh, get rid of it. Uh, next up, Scott says, thanks for keeping the, <laughs> thanks again for keeping the turf roll cool. It is cool, man. 
Turf World is cool. I mean, here's the thing. If there's like, I'm sure there's YouTube channels for like basket weaving or like curling, like, you know, Olympic sports, you only with the, on the ice with a little broom thingy. I'm sure there's YouTube channels for that. So if there's YouTube channels for that stuff, we're, we are definitely cooler than those people. So we should have like a cool live stream talking about like turf stuff, right? I think so. And uh, that's, that is what I aim to be. So I'm glad that you guys come and hang out because otherwise I'd be talking to myself, which would not be fun. Okay, Garrett says, I'm looking at the Lesco fertilizer for this upcoming year from site one, which has the bigger prill size. I've noticed Anderson and Lebanon have smaller prill size. Does it really matter? It does if you have, yeah, it does. I mean, if you if if you have like fescue or St. Augustine lawn, maybe not as much because those don't get as, ten, as dense or tight as um, Bermuda, especially as you cut it lower. But if you just think about it, right, like this, this has to get in the soil. This does not, sitting on top of the grass, this does you no good. So just from a purely physics standpoint, forget the ingredients, forget the makeup, forget like the, 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 the combos. Looking at these two, if which of these is gonna get past the grass and get into the soil? Which one is gonna, is gonna do that easier? The small one, right? And this is, this is the medium one. And the really, the really small one, this guy is gonna do an even better job of getting, getting past the grass and getting into the soil. So, um, if you have if you have like a like taller grass, then you can um, then it probably doesn't matter as much. It's still better to use a smaller a smaller pearl size. The reason there's a reason why Andersons and Lebanon does it. They don't just do it so they can make their fertilizer more expensive. They do it because there's advantages to it. Like as far as um, you getting the most out of what you apply, because you think about it, like with the with an with an 80 SGN product, you're not really losing a whole lot of this. A whole lot of this isn't getting isn't getting caught in the grass. It's getting it's going to go down in the soil. It's going to get in the soil where you can get get the the advantages of it. Um, so and also from a standpoint of like just tighter cut turf, so like sports fields, um, really the market that uh, that Lebanon is targeting and Anderson's to an extent as well too, a a finer prill is an advantage. So does it matter? Yes. Does it matter that much? It, I, mean, I guess it depends on you. It depends. Like I, I ever since I should switch to these, I haven't, I haven't really gone back. You know what I mean? Like I, I first started out with the ProScape line from Lebanon, which is along the lines of this. It's maybe a little bit smaller, but it's kind of like, it's kind of like this. But then once I got Humic Max and then even the, um, if you guys look back at my channel um, far enough, you'll see a video that I did where I was comparing ProScape to a 22016 from Lebanon Turf in their country club line. And it it's the same thing. It's an ADSGN. And that once I got on that, I haven't uh I haven't really gone back as far as um you know my fertilizer of choice. So hope that helps, Gary. Uh it does make a difference, otherwise they wouldn't they wouldn't do it. All right, next up is uh, Optic Cyclic. He says, Oh, I did, did I miss your question? I'm sorry. He says, You missed my question about whether you pull a self-propelled backwards for turning, etc. My wife is calling. I'll rewatch the stream later for the answer. I miss your question about whether you uh, whether you pull a self-propelled backwards for turning. I don't know what the question is. I'm trying to I'm gonna go up here so I can find it really quick. Optic cyclic. Oh here it is. Yeah. Yeah. I have a light push mower and move it back and forth to get it in and around small sections as a way of turning around. The new ego is uh, is self-propelled. Can you pull a self-propelled mower backwards? Can you pull a self-propelled mower backwards? I I don't think. So. I mean, can you pull? I guess I'm not sure what you're asking. If you if you pull a self-propelled mower backwards, I don't. The self-propelled typically only works going forwards. I guess if you're asking me, does the self-propelled have a reverse? And, on most mowers, not that I'm aware of. I mean, zero turns, yes, but I mean, like, if you're talking about a push mower, uh, usually no. Um, you move it back and you have a light push mower and you move it back and forth to cut around small sections of the lawn. Okay, I get it, as a way of turning around. The new Ego self propel can you push, pull a self propel mower backwards? You can just move it backwards. So, you, so in other words, if you're cutting, let's say, it's, I think it's a rotary, if it's a rotary that you're cutting with, you can just, yeah, you can, you can, yes, you can pull it backwards. In other words, what you're asking, I think I get what you're saying now. Can you move the mower independent of the self-propel function? Yes. So if you, if it's, if it's running, if you want to pull it backwards, you can do that. I would just, I would just wouldn't have the self-propelled running while you are pulling it backwards. I think that's what you're asking. If it is, yes, you can. If it is not, then I am sorry. And I apologize ahead of time for misunderstanding your question. But I think that's what you're asking me. 
All right. Uh, no name uh, says uh, at Adrian. No need to aerate clay soil before pre-emergent, but do a soil test to make sure you don't have acidic soil and need lime. So that's good advice. No name. I dig that. I think that's good. That's good. Solid, clean advice there. He says, I thought I did a heavy lime application last year, but my soil test in December, I had lower pH because I upped my game and now I need to do more lime to get my pH in the right zone. My grass ate all the nutrients. Well, it, not necessarily that. I mean, it's I would say that your grass did that, but I mean, it, depending on where um, where the pH for your soil natu like naturally likes to be, you may have to apply more lime to bring the levels up. It might be because literally around here, it's something that we do every year. You know, some years you need more, some years you need less, but it's not, it's not typically a one and done, uh, one and done type thing. Uh, no name. All right. And he says, Ron, please repeat it. My, my PSA measure your lawn. There are good online options out there to make it easier to do. That is true. Measure your lawn. So you can make sure you hit, you are applying the right amount of product over the right amount of square footage. You will get a better result. Uh, Michael Anger says, I hit the like button. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Doesn't cost anything to do that. And it's a great way to support the channel. Career Choices says fire. All right. Very cool. Uh, and let me see if there are any other questions we have here. Ben says, I hope you all know this is in love because I appreciate all the, uh, all the questions that don't have to ask, but I learned from. Love every one of y'all in here trying to make the grass greener. And I love LG. All right, and uh, let's see here. JC says, uh, I received my two bags of humic backs yesterday. I'm trusting you, Ron. Cool. Yeah, I'm glad. You will like it. It's a great product. You will, you will like the results you, uh, you, you get with it. And yeah, so, so Jiz, um, um, uh, uh, Boss is saying, he's saying that, uh, yeah, you count on the ego. Just let off the trigger right here early and let it roll a few feet. Then you can pull it backwards. Okay, so that, that makes sense. All right, uh, and then Luis says, I always look forward to Friday since finding the channel for great talk and competition. Thanks, Ben and LG. <laughs> yeah, you guys you guys have way, way, way too uh, much fun. And then finally, Ryan Wolfel. I think this will be our last question of the evening, unless someone from the Gram chimes in or anyone has a question. He says, Ron, how often do you dethatch your Bermuda? So I do not dethatch my Bermuda very often at all. Like I, I've because technically you say I've never dethatched Bermuda because dethatching is actually pretty aggressive. What I what I do do is I scalp it in the spring, um, and I will starting last year I I've been turf raking it regularly. So this spring because the lawn is largely clean, there's not like a whole lot of debris or thatch buildup in it. I will do a light scalp and a um, and likely just turf rake it because again there's not a whole lot that the um, that, that 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 my line needs as far as cleanup uh, this year based on the stuff I've been doing last year and also in the off season uh, now if you're say if you're asking as far as how often to thin out Bermuda then I would I once it be in the spring makes a lot of sense like as far as to start the season off and then if you have access to a verticutter it is good to do that um, during the growing season like really the end of May, if you can do it once a month, um, starting the end of May, June, July, then you're, you're, you're going to really like the way your lawn looks if you're able to do that. If you can only do it once, I would say June, like end, like June time frame. end of June is, if you can only get vertical your lawn one time, um, end of June would be the time that I would say to do it. And, and that's, that's pretty much it. So yeah, you can thin it out with, um, you started out in the, in the beginning with a scalp. And then at some point, if you're real mowing or you're just cutting it a lot to where it's going to start thickening up, uh, uh, thinning it out mid-season with a scalp or with a verticut is also a good i uh, is a good idea. Is a great uh, is a great idea. Okay, no name is the last one. He says, uh, "Humic Max is an amazing product. Look at my review. My parents' lawn showed what the what the difference is versus a service. So I think do we have a review for you on there um, on the on the channel? I think so. Let me see if I can find it here. We can show everybody because this is these are from." You, I think Lamont, I think you're on here. Let me see. Yep, you are here. So yes, yeah, so as far as reviews, these are reviews from people that have tried out Humic Max. So if you're wondering, does it work? Uh, if you scroll down to the very bottom, there are reviews, uh, one from, from Craig, Alex Lee next door, uh, um, enjoy, likes it. And then uh, Daryl Tunstall, he's, um, I think Daryl's in Mississippi. He loved it. And this is Lamont. This is no name. He says, probably the game changer. So these are, you know, all the reviews from various, from various people that have used it. Joe Roberts, L, uh, you know, um, someone, 
someone in I, you know, Lawrence in Iowa, there's just lots of people that have, that have used it and, and like the product. So it's, it's a great product. Again, I don't, I don't sell, I don't sell, I don't sell garbage. I would, I would not like literally the stuff that I carry in the store is the stuff that I would use on my own lawn. I don't use all of it because some of it I have, there's different products that one serves a certain purpose, but there's nothing on there that I carry that I would not, I would not use on my lawn. So I'm glad that you, uh, you like the, uh, Humic Max, um, uh, no name. It's an awesome product. So good, uh, good call. I appreciate that. All right, and then KD says core aeration in Bermuda is okay. Yeah, I mean it's not going to hurt anything. You you are right, KD. It's the reason why I say it's not necessary is because it the lawn's going to look ugly for a lot longer, right? Like I I did I've aerated my Bermuda as early as um, March, like the beginning part of March. It didn't hurt the grass; it still greened up nicely, but it just it looked it looked like it you know like a porcupine sat on my lawn for most of the month of March until the lawn started greening up. So if that bothers you, don't don't do it then wait until um wait until like april april time frame whenever, whenever it's growing so it'll, it'll bounce back sooner all right guys gals everyone i think that is um i think that is all we have for this weekend great questions great comments um only other thing i got for you guys is there's a new blog post on mowing so if you want to know if you're interested if you have a question about when should i start mowing my lawn in the springtime there's a new blog post on that, so feel free to check that out. It's very well written, very proud of it. I like it, so um, if you guys are interested, this will also be in the show notes as well for any of you guys that um, watch this after the fact. Um, you know, if you wonder when you should start mowing your, mowing your lawn in the spring, what are some good signs to look for? There's a short blog post, a short read that uh, covers that topic. Again, Cubic Max, the other Lebanon fertilizers, the Complete and the Stress are in stock. And uh, guys, thank you guys so much for coming to hang out. I really had a lot of fun tonight. If you guys also Sunday uh, morning, I'm thinking between 10 and 11, I will get it um, scheduled is when I'm gonna be doing pre-emergence. If you wanna tune in for that and ask some questions and make fun of me trying to shake, you know, a bunch of pre-emergent, you can do that. So thanks again. Have a great weekend. Take care.